Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to your favorite show on the internet, Raw Law Unfiltered, hashtag buckle up, it's the law, with your host, the DUI Guy Plus. Uh, today, we're going to be doing something very, very special. Uh, we're going to be streaming once again. I think it's been about, what, three weeks since we last done it? Um Megan and I streamed the, I think it was the first or second hearing. I can't remember. It's on my channel. It's on this uh, uh, playlist, uh, What the Hell Saga. I think it's up to like almost 20 videos, you guys. Wow. Like, it's amazing. Like, this is the, the gift that keeps on giving. The content that keeps on contenting and stuffs. Anyway, um... So yeah, I am very, very, very excited. Very excited. Um, let me make sure Megan has a link uh, to join us. Here we go. Make sure that she's got it. And uh, she's going to be joining us in just a few seconds here. Oh, there she is. How you doing? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I cannot hear you. Mm. I cannot hear you. Huh. Is it me or you? Oh, okay. She'll be right back. Hashtag buckle up. Hashtag it's the law. If you missed the latest. If you missed the latest. I'm just going to play this real quick because I'm sure people are curious. Like, that's new. I was here yesterday, and there was no It's the Law. Last night, we had a live, and a gentleman by the name of Jim donated two bucks. Two innocuous dollaroos, two innocuous dollarooskies, um, and uh, watch what happened last night. Let's see. Let's see. Here we go. Um, <laughs> he broke Larry for a solid 15 or so minutes. <laughs> Internet killed the TV. Can you cover 18 USC 31? Maybe November 29th. I if it were a couple of a lot says right here. It does right here. Unfortunately. Buckle up, it's the law, says Jim Dara. Did you just come up with my new slogan? Watch. Watch my face. It, this is an evolution. Just watch. I need to send a message. This is in real, real time. My brain just froze for a second because I realized I accidentally, in the super chat, Jim opened up a gold mine. Jim Dara literally opened up a gold mine. Oh, come on. Oops. And I needed to to message my uh holy crap, you guys are geniuses. Somebody sent me, by the way, I, real quick, because I people were saying, like, oh Larry, you need to copyright that. You need like I don't think you can copyright buckle up, it's the law, because it's it's too much of common parlance. It's it's a government used uh, thing. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about anybody stealing it because everybody knows where it came from. And I'll have thousands of people fight <laughs> if anybody tries to steal that shit. So I'm not worried. I mean, people are still going to, like, put it up. You know what happened? You guys during, are, you, do, you, do you guys know what happened during the Johnny Depp trial, by the way? Do you guys know what happened during the Johnny Depp trial? When I created the T-shirt, the um, What If Anything with LawTube on the back, I would be getting, like, 10 emails a day because i have like i had like um alerts set up or whatever and for law tube at the time there were dozens and dozens of like chinese corporations i don't know other corporations filipino like everywhere across the world who are mass producing what if anything shirts all of a sudden with the same hashtag with the same like on the thing on the back law tube it was so they just copy it. They copy it because they're like, oh, this is popular. People want it, so we're going to create it, and we're going to make money off of this shit. They steal that shit, which is fine, which is fine. Um, but 
you know, I don't care. There's, I can't stop them. I'm not going to sue like every every imposter in the world. Do you think Louis Vuitton cares about the fakes? Do you think they really sue them? Probably not. Like, it's actually more publicity for them. I feel like my camera is a little too high. Let me lower it a little bit. There we go. That, that seemed to be more centered. Hey, Megan. Hey, how about now? Yes, I can hear you now. All right. I just needed to reboot my computer. How you doing? I am doing fantastic. Drinking. See, Tug is with us in spirit. <laughs> tugs, thugs. Tugs, thugs. I tug gotta get camp. some tug merch. I don't have any tug merch. You gotta. I, I'm about to get me another mug. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do it right now. What is his store? What is Tug's store? I'm gonna do it live I, on stream. I don't know, but it's probably set up on his YouTube. He's so funny. Yeah, he is. Uh, the umbrella guy merch store. There he is. He's, so funny. He's probably going to be making a hat rack, uh, some hat rack merch. Because he got that funny email about, I'm going to put you in a hat rack, Mr. Umbrella Man. It was funny. <laughs> that is so funny. Mr. Umbrella Man. <laughs> <laughs> nay, nay, nay. <laughs> which one? Which one should I get, fam? Which one should I get? Oh, there's so many good ones. Pickle University, Tug's Pickle, 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 Pickle University. I like the Santa one, Tug Claws. Oh man, he's Tug's got it jugs. all. Oh, Tug's, Tug's jugs. Full. Tug's Where? Jugs and Tug's Sexy Waffle. Sexy Waffle? <laughs> Maybe I should I should wait for the hat. Actually, no. I should get one now, and then I'll get the Hat Rack merch when it's when it's uh, Mega Pint. I already have a Mega Pint one. Uh, oh, there's more. Oh, my God. Everyone loves back rubs. <laughs> I love Amica Cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it takes me back to the Johnny Depp days. Miracle Amica cream. Cry harder. Is that is that when we learned that uh, the Filipino man at the end or the the islander was uh like we all related to? I was like I, I he was my adoptive father or whatever I said during the Johnny Depp trial. We were all I don't juror remember 15. juror 15. I don't remember that. He was I the don't one remember that lore that when 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 Amber was testifying, he was just kind of like, he was like giving her the side eye, if you remember. And you froze, Megan. Like I've I've screwed around with my camera. All right. Oh, there you go. You're back. Okay. I shouldn't have touched the camera. Stop touching things, Megan. <laughs> Stop touching things. There's that's the mug that I have. This is the mug that I have. Right here, the the pimp, pimp black tug. tugs jugs. People are saying I should get tugs jugs. Okay, I'll I get mean, tugs, tugs jugs. Jugs is pretty funny. Tugs jugs is definitely funny. All right, let's do that. White or black? White or black? Chat. Let's see. I like the black one. The black one because it pops. It makes the yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> All right, I'm getting it. Let me let me remove it from the stream because uh, my credit card information. Now your credit card information. Is in the second, so I don't want to... Oh man. Oh, funny. Add to cart. Product description. All right. So while I'm ordering it, Megan, I have to show you what happened last night. I have to show you. Okay. Uh, let me. So uh, for the first time in my entire life, I believe. I, I I honestly I don't believe this has ever happened before. Not only did I have a complete mental break, mental, no, brain meltdown, not mental breakdown. It was not a mental breakdown. It was a complete brain meltdown live on stream. I broke for about 15 minutes while I was processing <laughs> Jim Dara's $2 super chat. I told him this is a $20 billion super chat. It's not a $2 super chat. <laughs> You, you're about to find out why here. I'll play it from the beginning. We only got through a few seconds of it. Watch my face, okay? Watch my face. Okay. Yes. Yes, it does. Unfortunately. Buckle up, it's the law, says Jim Dara. Did you just come up with my new slogan? Yeah. <laughs> 
I need to send a message. Real quick. <laughs> like, I'm like, holy shit, gears are grinding. And I'm like, I need, I need to yes. message. Hold, please. You need my hold music. Right. Yes, I do. Oh, come on. Oops. <laughs> holy Oops. crap. You guys I are I hate geniuses. it when I have to write an email in the middle of a stream. And I'm like, okay, everyone be quiet for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Play amongst yourselves. You guys are, you are a genius, Jim Dara. Holy crap. You just broke my brain. Buckle up. It's the law is a double entendre. It's almost a triple entendre. Buckle up. It's the law. All those slogans that we see on the, on the highway. Buckle up. It's the law. Right? Buckle up. You have to have your seatbelt. Buckle up. It's the law. Hashtag buckle up. It's the law. Like you have to follow the law. It's also hashtag buckle up because the law is coming for you. That's a double entendre. This is a triple entendre. It's a hashtag buckle up. It's the law. DUI guy is coming for you. Holy crap. My head just exploded, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You just single-handedly in a $2 super chat created a triple entendre. Do you realize what you've done? And I'm not done, by the way. There's you more. You broke Larry. You officially broke Larry. Congre like <laughs> Wow. Hashtag buckle up. Hashtag it's the law. Wow. That, I'm sorry. I can't get over it. This is my brain is still processing. <laughs> still going. Poor, unadulterated <laughs> genius in a, it just a, 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 an, a random unintended $2 super chat. My, this might as well be a $2 million super chat. Bro, this is this is a $2 million super chat. I'm not joking. You just gave me an idea. <laughs> you just gave me an idea and I'm going to run with it. So thank you, honestly, from the bottom of my heart. That's a two. That's not a $2 super chat, folks. That is a $2 billion super chat. Billion with a B. I've never seen that before in my life. That's going on merch, just so you know, Jim. Dara. <laughs> Buckle up! It's the law. <laughs> is a triple. Oh, speaking of you know merch, by the way, I, I made this announcement on X. I know not everybody has an X account, um, but the Sunavi <laughs> Miko says Larry just exited the Matrix. <laughs> 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 um, that's funny. Um. It's it, it, my merch store, by the way, which is now under construction. I'm building a brand new one as of yesterday. Um, literally, be, kind of because of this. I mean, I already was, but like now, it's definitely uh, my my uh, director of business development, Logan. He's on top of it. A hundred percent, not ninety nine, not ninety eight, not ninety seven. One hundred percent of the proceeds that we make on our merch will be donated to the Institute for Justice. So keep that in mind, folks. Air triple entendres are, we've all heard of double <laughs> entendres and they're still pretty rare, but a triple entendre in the middle of a live, man, my brain is still processing, bro. And at this moment, I didn't know why it was still processing. You're about to find out why. Cause I'm like, I don't understand. Why am I still thinking about it? <laughs> that is so much information in this. It's amazing. You know, I love language. I'm a philosophy major. I'm a lawyer. To me, language is everything. We, Life is language. Uh, we, we create things using language. We say we love, I love you with language. We say I hate you with language. We say, you know, I want to marry you. We say I want to kill you. We use all these beautiful words. And look at that. Five words. Hashtag buckle up. Hashtag it's the law apostrophe s so it's it's basically three other words, 
five words encapsulate probably my future multi-billion dollar industry. You've just <laughs> single-handedly created it. And I was, I was waiting to create, I was like, what is it going to be? Like I was working on it. Cause I'm like, buckle up by itself is, is too, you know, is too loose. We needed something else. And I couldn't think of it. And I was literally with a seatbelt sign slogan. Exactly. Right. Cheer diver. That's I was leaving prison today. I went to visit a client in prison. It's so fun to say like, yeah, I went to prison today. How, what did you do today? I went to prison. I mean, I got out an hour and a half later, but I went to prison folks, <laughs> you know, um, only lawyers can say that with a smile, with a smug smile on their faces. But anyway, um, and I was driving and I saw the seatbelt sign. It just didn't even cross my mind. It didn't say that it's the law on, on there. But it, 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 it was like, and I kind of just, I was driving and I'm minding my own business. And I kind of looked at it and I was, of course, buckled up. And I was just kind of looking at it and I'm like, yeah, that's right. That's that slogan. And it completely just, my mind went somewhere else on my next adventure. Buckle up, it's the law is a triple entendre. Wait for it. <laughs> and not only, it's actually, it is almost, almost a quadruple entendre. It just hit me. I told you I'm still processing. It's almost a quadruple entendre because everybody's going to recognize it. So maybe it's, it's the underlying recognition underneath it that gives it credence. It's amazing to watch this thing evolve in real time, you guys. That's it. I found my merch. I found my merch. I think it is it, now a national motto. I think it's that's <laughs> pretty much the gist of it. But yeah, how <laughs> it went from like, oh, it's a double entendre. That's cool. It's a wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Take triple. Wait, quadruple. Quadruple. <laughs> funny. Oh, man. All right. Here we go. Uh, Tug's mug has been ordered. Jug Tug's <laughs> jugs. Tug's jugs on a mug. Can't wait to get it. Um, Perfect. Megan, do you want, do you have the link to the, or do you want to play yeah, the, uh, the hearing? I do. Yeah. All right. So. Let's get to our main event. I'm sure people are waiting. While you're doing that, I'm going to call out some super chats. Deborah Barber, thank you for joining on as a member. Same for Phoenix and Tommy Merritt, as well as Richard Manzo. And uh, Jill M says, look at the What the Hell's community tab. Looks promising. Ooh, let's check it out real quick. Community tab. Present, share screen. What do we got? <laughs> oh, team liabilities. You can't do this to me this early in the morning, chat. Come on. It is so early. My eyes are watering. I know. What is this? This is hilarious. I don't usually get on stream at 9 a.m. <sighs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I have I have such a busy day, Megan. This is the only time I could squeeze it in. I didn't want to wait too long. No, no, no. I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I know. I know. I'm not. I'm not like hating or nothing. I'm just saying. Uh... Team Liabetes. Oh man, you can tell it was made by AI because the A is a little. Uh, <laughs> it's like what is? It's a Team Li Liabetes. AI is so ridiculous. AI. You can tell it to put words on something and it will still misspell it, even if you spell it correctly. I was doing it yesterday. I was uh, playing around with it for a Maricopa County court uh, photograph. Like I mm -hmm. wanted journalists outside waiting at the outside the Maricopa County court. And I typed that in very specifically and it still misspelled Maricopa County like eight times. <laughs> I, I don't understand. Like, why does it maybe it know. wants to know? Maybe it wants to know. Um, oh, I just got your message. Um, let me check real quick. Yes, here we go. That should fix it. Okay. Ah, cool. Yeah. Let me know if that works or not. Um, okay. 
liabilities. It's like this one. Here, check this one out. Uh, stop screen, present, share screen. Like somebody created, this is one of my favorite memes of all time that somebody made. And look at the, look at his forehead. Cheery picker. And the Y looks like a little, <laughs> like a, like pitchfork or something, which I don't know. Is it an, is it an allegory? Like the people are coming for you? Like well, you can go so many ways. Not an E. Will, will AI please explain to me? And why are the S's kind of like merged together? Why is there like a double entendre S randomly? Oh, that's it's so perfect. It's so perfect. It's so AI. I love it. Excuse, yeah. ex excuse myself. Ex oh, <laughs> ex that, I, I almost missed that. You're right. Excuse myself. Yeah. And turtle juice. Uh, did it come up with that on its own? Turtle juice? I don't know. I didn't make it. I wish what I does it say it. on the hammer? What does it say on the gavel? Turtle, turtle, piece, piece, pieces, turtle pieces. Maybe. Turtle oh, pieces. it's so funny though. Because it's got to be right. Because he's about to smash a turtle, uh, the poor little turtle. <laughs> but wait, it, it also doesn't make sense. Because isn't he like on Lynette's side and she's the turtle? I don't know, but it's funny. Yeah, it is. Fraud at Wrangler's Game YouTube member. There's a story there. We won't get into it right now. How you doing, brother? Volpe Fox says, guess you get the ramen money today. Love you both. Uh, <laughs> the ramen. Oh, the ramen. Oh. I keep telling you not to send the ramen money. <laughs> Read it, Larry. Read it. I, I don't know what I'm reading. Um, oh, the oh, so the, the hails are going to be live today at 530. Yes, and uh, th they're getting arrested finally. But listen, I, I love Jeremy. Court docket uh, is Preston. And oh, whoops, here. Uh, okay, got it. I got it. I paused it. Yep, he is a good, solid homie. But sometimes, sometimes he's like uh, he likes to <laughs> to uh, what is it called? Uh, clickbait. Clickbait. A little bit. And, so. and by the way, there's nothing wrong with clickbait. It's exactly. It's the way make get people to click on their stuff and like yeah. but that doesn't necessarily just because you see a title on something does not necessarily mean that what's in the content reflects what's in the title exactly but i hope he's right i hope he's right i don't know i don't know the the doings i hope it happens it's building up anticipation hashtag buckle up hashtag it's the law the law is for you lynette the law is here all right um are you guys ready to get started? Let's get started. I this am. is hearing number five, right, uh, Megan? Hearing number five. This would be the most recent hearing that we've seen. Um, so, yeah. Let's go. This is February 28th, two weeks ago. Yeah. Hales 38, 2023, DR 416. Mr. Silverman, if you and your client could take the table to my left your right shock it the other one you shall build a turtle fence do you remember that <laughs> Auto tune the news. All right, let me set the record. We're here in the matter of Lynette Preston and Jeremy Brian Hales. This is case 38 2023 DR416. Okay, wait, Larry. The... I got I gotta I, I gotta um we gotta make a bet going forward. Let's see. We have to bet on how many minutes it's gonna take Judge De Thomas's to recite the entire record of this case. <laughs> I'm going with I'm going with I'm going with 45. We're going to spend 45. Oh, wait, 45. how long is the whole video? I don't know. Uh, <coughs> how long is the whole video? I can't tell on this thing. No, I can't but either. All of these all of these are an hour and a half at least. So I'm going to go. And this is just part one, by the way. There are two parts to this. It's it's 49 minutes long. Do you want to change it? Do you want to change Oh, I bet? may have to change my bet. If, if this, well, maybe not, though, because this is only part one. Oh, how many parts are there? Two. Two. Oh, so, and how long is the other part? Do we know? Uh, Probably the about other, the same, I imagine. The other part is, is, let me see if I can tell from the file. 
part two. Uh, I can't tell from the file. It doesn't tell me. But let's see. I'll open it in media player and see if it can tell me. All right. The Oh, no. The second part is only two minutes and 44 seconds. All right. So part one is really all of it. All right. So I may have to change my my change my bet. Let's see. I will go with 16 minutes. 16 okay. minutes of recitation of the record. Check the private chat real quick. All right. 16 minutes. Okay. I, I'm just going to say, um, I, I'm going to match you. I, I think it's about the same. Just a gentleman's bet. All right, let me set the record. We're here in the matter of Lynette Preston and Jeremy Brian Hales. This is case 38-2023-DR416. The matters for which are on the court docket include an amended order scheduling hearing, um, motion for sanctions from January 19, motion in limine January 24, Motion to terminate deposition, February 9. Motion for protective order, February 16. Motion to dismiss, February 18. Motion for sanctions, February 18 as well. Each of those are in the amended order scheduling hearing. There was a prior order scheduling hearing from February 20th that included all but one of those motions. The additional one was added um, so we can resolve it. The case is otherwise scheduled for final hearing on Friday, March 1, intervening and needing to be addressed also is a motion for stay of the trial court proceedings filed today's date, February 28 at 9. So just to recap for the people who may not remember what happened since it's been a couple of weeks, uh, Randy and Doreen filed a third motion to disqualify Judge De Thomas's just a few days prior, like a week uh, and a half, because he denied the second motion to disqualify February 14th, Valentine's Day. And then they filed another one shortly thereafter, after another hearing. Uh, or maybe there wasn't even a hearing in between, I can't remember. But anyway, they were waiting for the judge to rule. And the judge, Sua Sponte, said, all parties must appear in court in person on February 28th. And there is, uh, because the trial was rescheduled from March the 1st, which was a Friday. This is on a Wednesday because this is a leap year. We had February 29th, which was a Thursday. So February 28th, um, they're all summoned into court at 9 a.m., 9 o'clock in the morning. Court is at 1 or 1.30, okay? 9 o'clock in the morning, Chad, the, uh, the defense, excuse me, the, well, the respondent's team, Jeremy's team, reaches out to the court. Because we, we went over this on my channel. If you don't know what I'm talking about, read the description. All the links are in there or go to the playlists. They're all in there. They still did not have an answer. Is the judge recusing or disqualifying himself or not? So they poked the bear. They poked the court clerk and were like, hey, um, we have a hearing in three hours. We just want to know, like, uh, what's up? Like, is he stay? Should I stay or should I go? Like, what's going on here? And so they poke the bear within a few minutes. This is how dirty and sleazy and slimy and scumbaggy this judge is. He already had the canned order that I am I am denying the disqualification. Two pages. It was two pages. Again, we went over it. Check out the playlist. Two pages. I'm not disqualifying myself. Already in his back pocket. It may have been written the weekend before they've been written the prior week, but he sat on it intentionally. This is why I'm calling him all these names because he intentionally sat on it because the minute they poked the bear, boom, they were like, nope, not recusing myself. Here's the order. But because they knew of the judge's, um, shall we say, propensity for dishonesty. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy, uh, well, Jeremy's lawyers, Randy and uh, Doreen, already had a canned uh, motion to stay proceedings 
uh, pending the uh, the ru the ruling from the Supremes on their writ of prohibition, which has yet to have been drafted at the time. And so <clears throat> they ask the, the the minute. I mean, they're literally eight minutes apart. Judge did not like that. Judge did not like that one bit. And I believe we're about to hear what's going to happen. So I don't I don't want to spoil it because you're about to hear how angry he is at the fact that he got called out on his shit. And he's like, well, my shit doesn't stink. Yes, it does. And when you get called out on it, yes, it makes you uncomfortable. And he doesn't know how to handle it because <laughs> so they poke the bear. He's like, OK, here you go. I'm not recusing myself. Let's go you know, see you at one. And then they're like, oh, okay, well, motion to stay proceedings. Boom. Eight minutes later, literally, it was like 927 to like 935 was when Randy uh, uh, files Doreen's motion. It is just the sexiest thing I've ever seen. And, uh, and let's see how the judge reacts. 55 AM. If I can, I'm going to just start on the right here. If you guys can just all identify yourselves for the record by stating your full name. Doreen Nicolese, the shock at law. Oh, and Jeremy. one one last piece. Why is Doreen in there, right? Doreen has never come to a hearing. I'm surprised they didn't call Mark Feather into the courtroom. You know, because he said all all attorneys must be present. And I swear to you, uh, a source of mine sent me a photo. I, w I wonder if I can find it. No, I, he actually did call for Mark Feather to be there, by the way. He did? Yeah. Oh, my God, this guy. This yeah. This fucking yeah. guy. He... he specifically asked for Mark Feather to be there, which is crazy because Mark isn't on the case anymore. He isn't co-counsel. He isn't, he isn't anything. There, can you all see this? Mm, what is it? I can't determine what it is. It's a toothbrush. Oh, it's a toothbrush. <laughs> One of the lawyers was bringing a toothbrush with them to court because they thought they were going to go to jail today. They thought they were going to be held in contempt because this thing, remember. Oh, that's this thing, funny. This thing, I mean, it's funny to us now in hindsight. Can you imagine what the lawyers were going through in their minds? Because I had Jeremy on, on the 22nd. I got the threatening uh, voicemail that I'm going to get a bar complaint on the 24th. Here we are four days later. This is the first hearing post social media explosion of this stuff. And, you know, the judge, I don't know, they were afraid that, like, uh, <laughs> the, the judge might, uh, you know, lock their asses up in jail. That's why they, they were bringing their toothbrushes. I, I know, you know, I, I can I can show you and verify that this is legit, that this is actually from their attorneys. I'm not going That's to. It's funny. I, 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 don't, I don't have to prove anything, but I swear to you, this is straight from, from their attorneys. I'm like, that is so cool. That is so fucking funny. And again, in hindsight, it, it's hilarious. But I can imagine I, I've I've okay full disclosure we we fight judges all the time you know this Megan and uh, in my practice and one time I remember uh, on more than one occasion uh, my former associates Chris and Evan would be like hey Larry um, I'm gonna need Evan to come with me to such to such and such county and I'd be like why what's up well uh, because Evan needs to bring his checkbook. <laughs> Bringing your checkbook is key word for I might need bail money after the, I yell at the judge for Shoot. things that he's supposed to do that he didn't do. And he may hold me in contempt and, and lock my ass up. And I, I may need bond money. Oh, man. That's real. It's absolutely real. Me hails. <laughs> may it please the court. Randy Shockett, Shockett Law Group, Trenton, Florida, on behalf of Mr. Hales. Joshua Silverman, on behalf of the petitioner, Lynette Preston. Lynette Preston. All right, thank you. Give me just a second. All right, it would seem um, prudent for the court to address the issue with regards to the motion for stay. The court has received and reviewed the motion. Um, as I understand the motion, there is an intent to consider or to file a petition for writ of prohibition. The court docket, which I, before coming in here just a little while ago, um, confirmed that there are no other pleadings that were filed since. But um, <coughs> I just want the record to be clear. Is there a writ of prohibition that's been filed? 
No, Your Honor, it's, it's being prepared. A petition for writ of prohibition. A petition for writ of, pro a pro writ of prohibition is being prepared. It's not quite ready yet. And uh, the rules allow this, the case allows us to advise the court ahead of time when there's such imminence coming with the first. So that's why we do that in the exercise of caution. Mr. Silverman has agreed to, to it as well with the continuing, uh, continuing the TRO. Well, there may, there may be consensus, um, but uh, I want to hear from both counsel as to why the court should exercise discretion because it's styled as a motion to stay, which is a, which is a proper nomenclature to use, but effectively it's also a motion to continue um, and delay the proceedings. Uh, and the totality of the circumstances would include uh, at a minimum that the respondent has been represented by counsel for three and a half months. Um, for more than two and a half of those months, he's been, re he's been represented by three separate uh, attorneys, two within the same law group, one from a separate law group. Nobody and cares. Has asked Standard for stuff. continuance and has been granted a continuance on November 29, December 1st, December 5th, January 4th, and now we're here again on a fifth motion to continue on behalf of the respondent, while at the same time the pleadings include and the history includes complaints about delay in the proceedings, among other things, and it's kind of inconsistent with asking, in effect, for another continuance. Um, and Your Honor, so maybe heard on that. Maybe heard on that point. Yeah, I, I want. That's what I'm saying. I want yeah, to okay. hear from you on support for your motion to stay, Absolutely. which effectively continues the matter. Okay. Thank you. And I, I, we do disagree with the court on the characterization of how many continuances we've asked for. Whoa! Did Did you notice that change in tone, Megan? Randy is already yeah. like, I I've never seen him disagree like right out of the gate like that. Yeah, he definitely stands up for himself way more in this hearing, which is which is good. But I think he's just really used to treating this judge in a certain way because he's like walking on eggshells around. You have to. You have to like play up to his his ego. And, you know, you can only push somebody so far, though, before they're like enough, you know. the record and you've got a pellet review right. if the court's wrong about that well but you've the record reflects that on the 29th of november this case started at well, maybe two or three hours into it the petitioner was in the middle of her case the, there had to be a continuance there had well, to be a continuance but your co-counsel represented to the court that he needed minutes to complete the entire case without additional minutes. discovery without additional grounds for continuance and then there were and now five continuances despite those representations. And I know you take issue with the court bringing that up again, but that's the inception of the case which would have been done by the court saying November 30, the next day at 9 a.m. will reconvene so that your client wouldn't have a temporary injunction necessarily hanging over his head. In fact, your co-counsel said he was so sure that with just a few minutes of time, the court would be dismissing this. And then the other side of you guys' mouth is saying, we need another fifth continuance. Honor, so I don't understand how it could have been done in minutes. <laughs> what? But no. now, three and a half months later. And by the way, that is an incorrect statement of the facts. It is. It is. It is. Because there, there was a bomb threat, one of them. There was another one that he did not have time. Uh, there was another one that I believe Lynette. So like there were only like two, maybe three actual requests for continuance. So she didn't the fact show up for her deposition. So they couldn't be ready for hearing because she didn't show. She canceled. She walked out on the second time. She walked out and didn't finish. And then he didn't make her finish. There, there's it's it's all it's not. And Randy's going to say it. I don't know if he's or if I missed it, but he's going to say it was all them. It wasn't us. So quit saying that like we caused all of these, you know. And, and you know, for a judge who's like, I like all my dates and I like all my times. And at 5.47, 32 seconds and 51 milliseconds <laughs> on Tuesday, <laughs> you know, March 1st, when it was very cold outside, I remember, because I went out for a walk. It reminds me of a story, Mr. Shockett. <laughs> I went out on this dog, for, you know, walk for a while, and I remember this tree, and I looked at this tree, and the tree looked fascinating because there was a finch in it. And like, what are we talking about? Oh, we have a, a hearing. Never mind that. Let me tell my story. Like, <laughs> Oh, God. Stand still. 
or if going I could, backwards. If I could continue without interruption, Judge, I, I really want to oh. get there. Oh. I, I want to just tell you what, what there's two different views here. The case had to be continued. I haven't seen an official transcript, but my impression of what I saw was, and, and I could be corrected, but I'm pretty sure Mr. Feather had witnesses here, and he said he would like them to go out of turn because she was in the middle of her case, and it may take 15 minutes. I didn't hear him say, I need 15 minutes for my entire case. I thought he wanted to just have him go out of turn. But then there was this issue, was, and, and I, it's regretful to watch the, this, what's going on here, December it's 1st. It's regretful December to 6th, watch what's going on here. I don't know what happened there, but it clearly got set, but it had to be continued until the 6th. So there was no request I granted, for continuance. I found good cause for the continuance, so I'm not, right, I'm but not we, we didn't reconsidering ask. that. It was good cause at each of those. Again, Judge, I just I really would like to finish because this is really important. Oh, man. No other continuance in this case. We're here almost March 1st. No other continuance of this case. And please let me finish, Judge. Nothing has been caused by us. Every single continuance in this case after December 6th has been responsibility over there. She missed her deposition on December yeah. 21st. He, she didn't show up for, for the 21st. There it is. Your Honor made a written ruling, required Mr. Hales to explain why he couldn't be there the next day. Orally, you did the same thing for her as to why we had a continuance on January 4th. There's been no inquiry. <laughs> no, nothing's been shown. Why Cook's deposition was missed, why hers was missed, although you verbally asked her to do it. So we got to the 4th, and it was not because there was a bomb scare. part of the, to address the, the motions that are on yeah. the court docket today. Well, you're still interrupting for after being asked so not to interrupt. That. We're the ones asking for all these Larry, have you ever had to beg a judge to let you finish? Please, Judge, let me finish. Please, please, Judge, let me finish. Not like that, but the, the one that was turned into a short, it, 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 was, it was a very heated back and forth because, again, the judge was interrupting me. I was also, in a way, I guess, interrupting the judge because we're just, we're interrupting each other because I was trying to say my piece and she was trying to say her piece and neither of us wanted to relent. And of course, in the middle of the of my my speaking, uh, the judge goes, "What I'd like you to do, Mr. Foreman, is I would like for you to stop interrupting me." And oh. I was like, and when she said that, I was like, "Okay, this is this is gonna be like this, huh?" I was not scared at all. I was like, "Really, Judge, you're gonna pull this card? Oh, just you just turned yourself into content. Thank you so much, you know." And I I sat down and I said, "Your Honor, may I have a moment?" And as I like open up my At all. And, and she's like, Your Honor, may I have a moment? You know, excuse me. You know, I take the fall. Always take the fall. People don't know how to handle kindness and humility because they're like, oh, I got the upper hand. I'm winning. What they don't realize is that I'm judoing their asses in, 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 their, <laughs> in my own head. I am I am flipping the script because when you when you start to be kind in a heated situation, that people don't know what to do with themselves. They're like, I won. Victory. And then they're like, wait a minute. Did I win? You know, and that's when that when that switch flips. That's when. So I, I'm sitting there and I, I literally go, Your Honor, may I have a moment? And I'm opening up my water bottle and I go, uh, your emotions are high. May I have a moment? And she looks at me and she goes, <gasps> I suggest you do, Mr. Foreman. <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, it, it's quiet in the room. I, I achieved what I wanted. I wanted silence. I wanted, <laughs> it, it worked, right? That's all I wanted. I wanted silence in the room and I wanted the floor. And I got it by, by just by being kind. And people are saying that was a good short. Yeah, because it's 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 also turned into a short, and I'm I'm opening and I'm sitting there and I sip my water bottle, and I sit there and I'm like, "May I speak?" Oh. <laughs> and she's like, "Go ahead." And I very quietly, very somberly say, "Your Honor, <laughs> this court is completely stripped." I love that word, of jurisdiction. According to such and such law, you do not have jurisdiction over this case. You do not have jurisdiction over my client. So please stop it and let's like <laughs> basically come back. Da, da, da. She would not relent. She just kept hammering. Now, oh. you said, Mr. Foreman, when you left the courtroom, and she's right. She said, is your client going to be here? And I was like, uh, yeah, whatever. You know, I, I did say that. She's not, I, 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 she's not lying. I did mislead her in a way. But she's trying to mislead me procedurally. I just misled her with a couple of words. Mm. So I'm sitting there by myself. And she's like, you said your client's going to be here. Where is he? And I'm like, he's nearby. But he's not in the courtroom. You said he's going to be here. And this is where I unleashed. I said, your honor, 
There are no motions pending before the court. This case is not scheduled for trial. You do not have jurisdiction. And I couldn't finish my sentence. She just interrupts me. And she goes, all right, we are rolling this, which is key term for you win. I'm going to pick a new date. Hmm. The thing is, I've watched a lot of, I've watched a lot of trials. I have rarely, if ever, seen a judge interrupt one lawyer like this over and over. Now, I've, I've seen a judge I've interrupt. Seen I've seen a judge interrupt lawyers on both sides, you know, if they're going over and he wants to sit. Well, you know, hold on a minute. But I have never seen a judge target one lawyer in the case like this. Like we had a counter uh, at one point in one of these hearings of how many times that he was interrupting Mark Feather. I think it was in the first hearing. And, and it was insane. Remember, we were hitting the beep button every time he interrupted. And we never hit it when he was talking to Silverman. Not once. I've never seen that before. This is like the first time I've ever seen it. So I don't think it's actually very common. I think it's kind of rare. Extremely it's rare. Yeah, mm -hmm. my situation was one of a kind for me. I, I'm trying to think as, as deep as I can in my head. Usually judges are very, very respectful for some reason at the time, not anymore, but at the time, because she's still on the bench, at the time, she just had it out for me for whatever reason. I still, to this day, I have no idea what her beef was with me because it all goes back to, this is now at the time, February, 2020, right before the pandemic. We're literally two weeks away from the world shutting down. We just didn't know it yet. And um, two weeks before that, like around Valentine's Day, beginning of February, my associates came to court. And because I was the one who was going to do the jury trial, my um, my associates came in and they're like, yes, your honor, we have to file a motion. Da, da, da. And she just out of the blue goes, where is Mr. Foreman? Why is he not here? And my, I think I had one or two associates in the room and they're like kind of look at each other or, you know, look down and they're, they're probably like uh i'm here on behalf of foreman and associates we have a rule by the way let me show you the rule kentucky revised statute um associates may appear i think it's like 20 rule 29 i forget it's hard to find because it's not one of those one of those very common rules but um associates may appear on behalf of firm I forget what it is because we looked it up. It's like chapter 29 or something. Maybe, or wait, no, I don't know. Maybe chat can help me out because I, I don't have time to do legal research in the middle of a live, but maybe while I'm doing the hearing, uh, we're watching the hearing. I mean, um, there is, there's a rule that allows associates to appear on behalf of the firm. You don't have to have the named partner show right. up every court appearance. I mean, that would be right. ludicrous. Imagine if you had a firm of 250 lawyers and, and 5,000 cases and you have like a thousand cases a week. Oh, but if you did that in front of this judge, he'd lose his damn mind. I wanted Mark Feather here. Mm -hmm. Why isn't Mark Feather here? Mm -hmm. Exactly. It, it's, it was kind of like that. Why is Mr. Foreman not in the courtroom? And that's where it all spir spiraled out of control because I did show up uh, at the next court appearance because I'm like, what the heck does she want from me? Is she trying to scare me? Like, I've never had this before. And so <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool, fine, you know, whatever. And you know, I was like, all right, so is, um, you know, Isn't what's, that what's the whole beef? point of having a team, like the whole point of having a team of lawyers is so that you can manage your schedule well and not miss hearings and have to reschedule things. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think, uh, legal vices wants wants to join, doesn't he? Let me send him the link real quick. He, yeah. He can't, I mean, he can, he's free. So if, uh, he yeah, told me he was willing if we wanted to have him in here. And of course, I always love to see the law racks. Hell yeah. No, I sent him an invite. Yeah, I sent him the link. So legal vices, if you're hearing this, come join us. Um, so yeah, no, I, I'm anyway, let's keep watching. I, I'll try and pull, find the law if I can. Because of the behavior over there since December 6th. No other reason. Every continuance has been forced on us. So we're not here asking for another continuance. The reason why we're asking for this today is because it would all have to be redone if the, if the first DCA issues a writ. Why waste everyone's time? Why do it? Why not just wait? We're willing to have the injunction remain in place until the date of the final hearing. So that's to prevent work that doesn't need to be done without objection, in fact, agreeing we should wait. That's the basis of the request. Anything further? Wow, he's just like, is that all you got? You can do no. It's 
Mr. Silverman. Your Honor, uh, to be clear, my client does not agree to uh, the granting of a motion to stay these proceedings. Uh, what I have clarified for Mr. Shockett and for the court, I did reply. I know it's unusual, but given that the motion was filed this morning, um, I felt that best to offer a reply to the court. I did send an email to Ms. Hagan, copy to counsel. I don't know if that's been provided to the court, but what I can tell the court. It is not. What I can tell the court, my understanding is in federal court, which I don't practice and they do a lot of advising the court by letter or email. I, I know it's not done in state court, but because of the late notice, that's the way I did it this morning. What, what I put set forth in that email is that my client would not consent to a stay, but my client would consent to a continuance of all pending matters in this case, including the hearings that are set for today and the final hearing on March 1st with some caveats. And I will outline those, Your Honor. The first would be that the temporary injunction must be extended during any period of continuance and until the new final hearing date in this case. My understanding is that Mr. Shockett, on behalf of his client, agrees to that proposition. The second yes. would be that if the First District Court of Appeal, or I guess presumably the Supreme Court if it got that far, were to grant the petition for writ of prohibition, my understanding of the law is that a successor judge has the ability to revisit any rulings this court may have made. However, as part of her agreement uh, to a continuance of the pending matters, my client would insist, and again, I believe there's agreement from that side of the aisle, that there would be a stipulation that the issuance of the temporary injunction will not, under any circumstances, be one of those rulings that is subject to review by a successor judge, if there is a successor judge, if a writ of prohibition were to be issued by the appellate court. Generally speaking, a party in litigation can waive any, any right, whether it's contractual, statutory, constitutional. There's a case directly on point. Uh, it's called Kilpatrick v. McCluth. And so essentially, Mr. Uh, Hales would have to be waiving his right to have any successor judge revisit the issuance of a temporary injunction. The third would be that there would be no stay issued by this court. Oh, so he's taking notes. I just procedure. realized something. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this might be the first time I've ever seen him take notes while uh, Jeremy's counsel is speaking. He has actually been, do you think he's been, oh, wait, I'm sorry. Wait, Silverman no, that's not Jeremy, speaking. that's Silverman, no. Holy shit, never mind. I was just going to give Almost, him, Megan, almost I was going to give him it. some credit for being, for taking it seriously, but it's Silverman. You, but Look accidentally just called this. him out again. Look at how he does this. Has he taken notes yet once while Randy was speaking? Not once that I have seen, unless chat can correct us, I have not seen him take one note one time. He always holds his pen ready to write, but he never writes. But he never writes. But look at how he's writing now. I, if, yep. I thought Randy was talking, but no, it's Silverman again. Is this man just taking his direction from Silverman? Is that why he's scri furiously scribbling whenever he speaks? I think I think they're in bed together. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a, it's, a, it's a figure of speech, fam. <laughs> <laughs> like not not like that you know what i mean but not seriously actually in bed together well i hear that uh de thomas's though is an old school hippie so it, that's also a possibility i mean you never know D don't hate bro <laughs> <laughs> love all around except in my courtroom he's a very big uh grateful dead fan did you know that i did not know that how'd you figure that out yeah, I have sources, Larry. I have sources oh, 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 everywhere. Fair. I okay. have sources everywhere. <laughs> I was just curious if maybe you saw him in a Grateful Dead t-shirt and like... No, actually, this came from his conversation with Ron DeSantis when he was appointed. Mm. So he uh, allegedly, reportedly used his love of uh, the Grateful Dead and Ron DeSantis's love of the Grateful Dead because apparently Ron DeSantis is a huge Dead fan. Mm. Um, and that's how he ingratiated himself with the governor, even though he's very far opposite politically as the governor of Florida. I don't think Ron DeSantis, after this case, I'm starting to think that DeSantis is not as smart as we would like him to be. Um, <laughs> you just figuring that out now? <laughs> yeah. And he has bad taste in the people he appoints. And this guy he knew that Ron DeSantis was a Grateful Dead fan. Can you imagine appointing a judge because he liked the same band you like? Oh, man. I don't even want to think about it, Megan. <laughs> I can't imagine doing that. I mean, no. yeah, deadhead judge. <laughs> He's a deadhead judge. That's no. funny, chat. It's Here's just weird to me. Like, why wouldn't you talk about more substantive things? 
like no because your your political affiliation doesn't matter your how you rule doesn't matter your character and fitness doesn't matter the fact that you support sex offenders doesn't matter would you like great the grateful dead hell yeah bro you can be judge <laughs> right what is that what is why are we run by morons why is everyone in power an idiot if i were appointing a judge i would want to see hours of his cases i would want to watch him on the bench. So I would, I would ask for that. I would ask for videos. I would ask for hearings just like this. So I could uh, assess what this judge is actually like. I would like to read his decisions. I'd like to read his orders. I'd like to see a sampling. I'd like to hear from people who like him and people who hate him mm -hmm. before I ever appointed a judge. That's what I would be doing. I wouldn't be asking him about some concert he went to in 1969. Who cares? The summer of 69 brings back memories. <laughs> maybe that's why he's, he keeps going off on mark feather maybe he's having flashbacks and, and that feather triggers them <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> oh i okay i'm gonna create the the, uh, the thomas's origin story are you ready <laughs> it's the summer of 69 the thomas's is 19 years old he's going to uh what, what was the festival wood uh woodstock woodstock thank you uh, he, he's going to Woodstock with all his buddies. You know, he's he's in college. He's getting ready to go to law school in a few years. And uh, he's there with all his homies. And he's got his girl under his arm. At least he thinks it's his girl. He, she actually is just using him for the free weed she's, all, she's about to get from him. <laughs> and the Thomasis is there. And, you know, they're listening to the music. And, you know, everybody is like passing, you know, passing joints, maybe having a little mushroom experience. You know, this this was... This was like, you know, but the Thomas, this is not, you know, he likes the natural stuff. He's like, no, no acid for me. I'm just going to stick to the natural <laughs> stuff. Right. Because they're like, hey, man, you should you should do a hit of this. This acid. This is good shit. And he's like, no, no, no. I will. I will. I'll just take um, I will take, um, uh, you know, I, I'll take a dab of mushroom, but I'm not going to do a dab of, of acid or whatever. And, um, you know, he's just sitting there, they're listening to music, they're jamming, they're just, bum, 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 everybody's having a good time. And then this, this girl passes by and he's like, wow, man, I, I would like to get my feet wet with her. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. little does he know in, in you know, 40 years, uh, she's going to be in his courtroom and that's Lynette Preston walking past him. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you know, he's back and, you know, he's just like, he's jamming, he's having a good time. And then he, uh, it's nightfall, so everybody's going to sleep. So he goes to bed and he's, he's asleep. He's sound asleep. And all of a sudden he feels, he feels a tickle on his, on his foot, a, a very unpleasant tickle. Somebody he's using a feather <laughs> to tickle his foot, <laughs> to tickle him awake. And he jars awake. <laughs> What is this? No, don't like it. This is 19 year old the Thomasus, mind you. So he's had it out for feathers for like the next 45 years. <laughs> and then one day, Mark Feather walks into his courtroom. So that's why he's having flashbacks to that flashbacks. tent at Woodstock, Woodstock in the tent. Yes, <laughs> that's the origin story of Mark, Mark, uh, Mark, I mean, Craig the Thomasus. <laughs> The chat's making fun of you for saying a tab of mushrooms. <laughs> tab of mushrooms. It's a tab of acid, Larry. Get it together. No, a tab of, but he's like, I'm not doing a tab of acid. I'm doing mushrooms. Is, did I say tab <laughs> oh, of mushrooms? Oh, he said tab of mushrooms. Tab of mu I'll, have a <laughs> I'll have a tab of marijuana, please. <laughs> He'd be like my dad. He would say, are you doing the weed? Are you, you doing, doing the weed? weed? I'm like, dad, you don't do weed. You oh. smoke weed. He goes, no, oh. you're, are you doing the dope? Like no, you smoke dope, Dad. You do. <laughs> can I can I get a shot in the arm of some marijuana? <laughs> <laughs> oh, My dad used to say really hilarious things. He'd be like, "Let me see between your toes." I'm like, "Why would you want to check between my toes?" He goes, "Cause that's where they shoot up." And I'm like, "Shoot up what, Dad?" He's like, "You know." The heroin or whatnot. Let me see your toes. Speaking of heroin, hey, Vices. <laughs> I would just like the record to reflect that at 59 minutes and 21.5 seconds into this broadcast, I joined the stream.
<laughs> Self announcement. I love it. I love it. Fifty nine. We made forty four seconds. Judge the Thomases may have met his match of narcissistic <laughs> egotism. <laughs> Yeah. And if, if it if it had been for that delay on November 30th, I wouldn't have to be here right now. Dude, I love the hat, bro. Where did you get that hat? Uh, from Miller. I get all my all, all my cowboy hats from Miller Hats in Texas. Miller, Miller Hats, hats in Texas. And they ship it to Korea? Dude, that is a yeah. dope hat. I need to get one of those. Yeah. That is a great. cool hat. And that's one I have. I don't Houston. think I've seen before. I don't think I've Is this a newer one? Uh, last August, I got it when I was at uh, Anime Matsuri there in Houston. I, I went to the mothership. I, I went. I visited the mothership, and I was like, I came all the way from Korea to visit the the hat company. I've been buying hats from you guys for twenty years. He's like, Oh, that's pretty cool. And he's on the phone. Like, oh, 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 Stevie Nicks will be here tomorrow night. For, oh, yeah, all right. I'm like, All right. He doesn't give a crap if I came from Korea. He's got Stevie <laughs> Nicks coming to his shop tomorrow. So, yeah. <laughs> I was humbled. <laughs> I thought, okay, I'm not gonna. If he's got Stevie Nicks coming, I'm not getting an endorsement deal out of this. So. <laughs> That's funny. Glad to see legal vices in the house. All right, let's get back to the video. Jeff, have you seen I this? Oh, sorry. Have you seen, seen this one yet? yet? I haven't seen oh. five yet. I'm just well, assuming that an hour in and I haven't missed a thing. You haven't that. missed anything. No, you haven't. We just keep going. <laughs> Because I keep doing a dab of, yeah. of mushrooms here in the back <laughs> yeah. when nobody's looking. You you, you <laughs> think yeah. you think this is green tea. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, hey it's Mo, Mo, uh, Mo in the deep end raid. Hey Mo, hey, thanks Mo. for the raid. Hey Mo, thanks for the raid. What's up, Mo? I don't Just know in time I, to I watch Judge Gallagher like breaking walnuts and cherries with his gavel up there. You don't know Mo. Mo is great. Mo in the deep end is oh. unbelievably great. I she is criminally undersubscribed. This yeah. woman. She is what? so funny. Wait, wait, she wait, has wait. a Lynette Preston wig, <clears throat> and a Lynette Preston. Uh, she does a Lynette Preston impression that is absolutely hysterical. Uh, I love the, her. What's her channel name? Mo in the deep end. Mo in the deep end youtube yeah she's she's seriously oh she's people. she's I'm hilarious do, oh we gotta we gotta no we gotta feed this woman some subscribers here stop screen present here we go this is her mo Crimin in the deep end criminally 1.5 no guys come on let's criminally. get it to at least two thousand. like right now we have she is we have so three thousand people in here go subscribe she what kind of content does she do she will make you pee your pants laughing. She's that funny. So she does newsy <laughs> news. She does crazy news stories. She covers oh, there she court, is. She covers court cases. There's her, there's her Lynette there's her wig. Thing. See her Lynette wig? Is that? Oh, my God. I want to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. It's muted. Hold on. Let me zoom up a little quick. Mo in the deep end. What the hell is working on the voices, but lie, lie better net wig was a success. All of the mean stuff going around the internet. John, get away from the window. <laughs> is really really mean i am here for the turtles and everyone is being so mean to me you are not a nice person you are not a nice people i just i am here for the turtles i am you guys try to make fun of me you are just killing another turtle <laughs> oh i'm sorry my kid just fell i have to go <laughs> All of the mean stuff going around the internet. John, get away from the window. Oh, that, that's it. It's repeating. Oh, oh my God. God. Are you? That was amazing. amazing. I love Is her. she new? Is, she's got to no, be new. No, no, no. She's, she's been, um, you know, she's been, you know, killing it for a long time, but she's just criminally undersubscribed. No, she needs, she needs more. She's not a lawyer. Too. She's a lay person. I met her during the Kowalski trial because mm -hmm. she actually has CRPS. This is someone who has uh, this, um, terrible pain syndrome and so she had a really good insight into that case that's how i met her through nicholas starro and oh she just became one of my favorite people on youtube she's very funny so she's covering the yeah. delphi trial she's mm -hmm. covering she covered donna she does a hilarious donna Adel adelson impression <laughs> too she has a donna adelson wig that mm. is oh my god it's funny she does jail studio. calls she she does jail uh, a, donna calls from jail streams <laughs> it's uh, she's so funny. Oh, she she's such a good person. Yeah, I I I love her studio. It's just so artistic. You see that over there? I can't even hover my mouse over because it'll like start playing the video. But 
Um, it that is 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 that her drawings or did she purchase those? Because they look really cool. I'm not sure. We should ask her. They look like posters. There they are. But she is she is hilarious, and she get she is so criminally undersubscribed. You guys go subscribe to Mo in the Deep End. She will make you laugh. <laughs> you can't un f a cluster f. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that, 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 that that's Mug. Nick Staros. Uh, that that's Nick Staros' motto. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, so yeah, she knows yeah. Nick. Trial. Yeah, that's how I met her through <laughs> Nicholas. And um, I mean, she she is so funny. That's I, awesome. I love her so much, you guys. If you don't know, but she covers all the things yeah, we yeah. watch. Yeah, yeah, definitely go subscribe to her. Let's see what is she at now. She's already at one point seven three. We're we're working oh, on it. She already got like three hundred subscribers. Helicourt yay. issues an order to show cause direct to my client to respond to the petition for writ of prohibition. That would be for a rule of appellate procedure nine point one zero zero H. And then the last thing I indicated was a caveat on my client's agreement to continue these proceedings is that by agreeing to a continuance my client is not, I repeat, is not waiving in any way, shape or form any arguments she may have either in this court or in the appellate court that the petitioners uh, or rather the respondents um, petition for a writ of prohibition is untimely or has been waived implicitly or otherwise uh, given the lapse of time since the court first entered an order denying you lying fucking snake silverman we just you guys don't know this we just caught him in a flat out betrayal of uh randy and doreen those of you who don't know my inside sources tell me that randy and doreen had an agreement with silverman that he's going to basically not object to this continuance and just kind of say look do what you got to do i understand your situation blah 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 he is now literally telling the court that he's not essentially not okay with what is happening here whereas he previously said oh i'm gonna i'm not gonna object everything's gonna be fine that is so slimy. Mm. Motion to disqualify the first time and the second time. So she's not waiving any of those arguments. My understanding is that Mr. Shock and his client are in agreement with those provisions. And if that is the case, then for a variety of reasons, my client would be agreeable to continue today's hearings, to continue the March 1st hearing, except for Friday, and to allow a reasonable period of time for Mr. Shock and his client to file the petition. Okay, so now he agrees. He backtracked. I, I agree. I concur with everything that was said. He can make any motions he wants up at the first. That's true. He's not waiving anything. What about the issue of the temporary injunction not, be re not being reviewable if it's remanded back? We'll stipulate. No, the temporary injunction will remain in place until the date of the final hearing unless the, this court does otherwise. Yeah, he doesn't have a choice. We're not going to challenge it. We agree that it will, it will be in place until the date of the final hearing, whenever that is. And, and yeah, whenever that two is. Two things on that, Your Honor. One is, I'm okay. It could okay be nine months that. from now. Um, that's a slight tweak to what I had set forth. The caveat I placed on my client's agreement was that any successor judge could not revisit your decision to issue the temporary. The temporary would remain in effect through the final hearing. If the first DCA, for whatever reason, uh, denies the petition of yeah, He may very well die of old so age before he becomes remains permanent. on this case. I don't think that that provision needs to remain necessarily in effect. If they file appropriate pleading and ask you, to re ask you Judge Thomas, to reconsider the temporary, I think that you should be able to do that. What I am trying to avoid, however, is a new judge coming in and vacating the temporary and potentially prejudicing my client. She's not going to agree to continuance under those no. circumstances. But, but, but we, last we will night, Larry, the second thing. you read that that temporary injunction was supposed to be for a period of 15 days. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Did you see the live last night? Yeah. yeah 15 <laughs> yeah. days. I was yeah, blown away standard. by that. And then he is, he's allowed to, you know, continue it, but he has to find good cause. I have not seen one good cause in any of this to continue this injunction because she never gave him any evidence. So what is his good cause? And he's continued it now how many times? He's extended it, I mean, how many times? Great question. I, I agree with the argument that it should have been thrown out the day she ghosted the deposition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, what about how, when did this start? When was the, when did the injunction get uh, put on him? December 4th. Okay. So- from December 4th, it is now, what day is today? March 15th? 15th. Oh the Ides God. of March, Megan. This is the day. Today's the day today's that Caesar was day. assassinated. Today's the day. Um, so that is 
at least 30, so that's two extensions in December you would have to have had, two extensions in January, two extensions in February, and he, it's coming up to the next extension in March. Yeah. How like many seven, was that? Two, seven four, extensions. six, seven, seven extensions. Yep. Where's the, has he found good cause? Was there a, a good cause argument made? I've never heard of one. Nope. He never asked for one because he's just unilaterally sua sponte without ex parte, you name it, just making these. And you All can, the again, th the rule that we read last night, The let me pull it up again real quick. Um, it was uh, 742, I think. I forget. Hold on. Let me go through. I have to go through my history. Uh, but anyway, uh, it, it, the rule said, I remember the rule said, uh, Ex parte, you can you can do it. This is what confused me. I thought at first it was like if if the other party is not in the room, because that's usually what ex parte means. But in this case, it meant like the judge ex parte, meaning without any of the parties present can do it, hmm. which is, again, it's sua sponte, which is Latin for yeah. of the court's own accord without anybody asking I'm going to do it. It would make more sense if they use that language. But anyway, so the court sua sponte, ex parte, whatever you want to call it, can just create a temporary injunction if they believe that there is enough in the record to show that stalking has been commenced. And he, the, the problem is it's so subjective. There's nothing there, in the record. There's no objective standard. Well, Megan, he's basing it off of the 383 pages that- Yeah, but there's nothing in there that suggests stalking or cyber stalking or any of the sort. It's yes. all protected speech. It's all protected activity. Well, and uh, anyone, any judge- He's a damn moron that he hasn't seen it. Yep. Yep. And he's using the law in his, like in his mind, basically, to to create this whole uh, this whole debacle. Let me find this. Well, that's what I've been saying from the beginning is that he's he's not judging. He's he's still a law professor. He's he's teaching. He's giving a lecture. He's not adjudicating anything. This is, this exactly. is just like listening to this is like listening to your evidence professor or your criminal law professor giving a lecture. That's all this is. Yeah, and he got upset. Here's his evidence for stalking, by the way. Here's what Judge De Thomas has used in order to put the injunction in. It was the day he got angry because he realized that Jeremy makes his money on YouTube. That was yep. what makes him angry. <laughs> He's like, Jeremy has the nerve <laughs> to make money on Excuse YouTube. Me. And that is something. And, and because he's making some money, making fun of Lynette and mocking her ridiculous behavior, her ridiculous public behavior, her forward facing ridiculous behavior that she posts online, he makes fun of it. And the judge doesn't like it. Well, the judge has his own failed YouTube account. So he's just bitter and nasty about it. How many subscribers is he up to now? 15 and a thousand people. <laughs> he was like a 12 people. He might be at 15 people now. <laughs> he's, he's as bad as Lynette. That's why him and Lynette see eye to eye yeah. because yeah. they both have two to 12 followers. They believe that they should be successful on YouTube without having the skills necessary or the, mm. or the, character in necessary the work. to do it or putting in the work necessary to do it and they, they they're upset with someone who does here's the statute that we read last night uh the, the video is on my channel for the folks who want to see the full reading y you might want to skip to like minute 25 because it took me a minute to get it started as uh we were just catching up on stuff but uh you're welcome to listen to all that as well but if you want to get to the meat that's minute it was 20. a good stream and and it was good to look at the actual statute and this, you would think, I would like to know, I, I think a, gra a great research project would be to look up other judges who have extended uh, injunctions like this and see what, the, what their cause was. Oh. I've never heard, I've never heard of anything extended like this in my life, though. Yeah, yeah me either. A 15 day temporary order extended for months and I've never heard of it. I mean, Larry does more, far more courtroom than I do. But, and I, I, have you heard of anything like this? I've never witnessed never. anything like this in my life. Never. Oh, and guess what, Larry? I didn't tell you this, but I just, I didn't tell you this either, Jeff. I just ordered uh, a hearing from the Eighth Circuit with all the players involved from 2021. We've got Mark Feather, we've got Judge DeThomasis and Silverman all arguing the opposite side of an injunction like this. So it's there, it's the opposite. And requesting guess what? an injunction. Requesting so so it's Mark Feather's client who wants the injunction and Silverman's client who doesn't. 
And according to what I think happened, I, I'm not deep into it yet, but it looks like the petitioner, she had filed for a, an injunction against stalking in Puerto Rico and didn't get it. And Judge de Thomasis decided immediately that he wouldn't give it to her either because Puerto Rico denied it. And he said he had no choice. So interesting because Ohio gave Jeremy a stalking order, right? But mm -hmm. the judge said he couldn't do anything about it. Ohio has nothing to do with him. That he's not, He can't just take Ohio's word for it, right? He has to take Lynette's word for it. Isn't that interesting? Very very. So I'm going to, I'll have that hearing whenever they send it to me. And we're going to watch that on my channel when I get it. And I also have the uh, documents from that case, which I'm going to go over, but I mean, it'll be interesting to see how he behaves in another case. That's similar. There is, um, I think I know the case you're talking about. Is that like from September 10th, 2021? It went to court on December 1st or 2nd, I think of that year. I think we'll talk behind the scenes because this is this is very sensitive and classified information that I, I, needs a lot of redactions and I can't even share it on screen right now because it's it, it, I, I found uh, and it has been shared with me some things about about this judge. It, we may be talking about the same thing. We may be talking about different things, but um, I'll put the name in the private chat so you know the case. OK. Uh, so, yeah, here it is. Uh, 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 Florida statute 784.0485 on your screen. This is five, section 5C of the statute. Any such ex parte temporary injunction is effective for a fixed period, not to exceed 15 days. There it is. It's in the statute. Now, there is exceptions. You know, full hearing shall be said, which has happened when the temporary injunction ceases to be effective. Uh, the court may grant a continuance. So the court may grant a continuance uh, if there's good cause shown by any party, which shall include a continuance to obtain service mm -hmm. of process so that Jeremy is served, etc. cetera. Um, an injunction shall be extended. So it must be extended if it is necessary to remain in full force and effect during any period of continuance. And the judge has not put anything on the record justifying how, is, like, it just... how exactly. is it necessary how yeah, exactly right. exactly there was never any any explanation no justification nothing 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 has happened to this woman nothing jeremy's done nothing to her if so anything she's done everything why, to him why is it necessary to keep this temporary injunction which is so restrictive against his uh, constitutional rights for so many days now, seven extensions. We're talking about seven, ext six to seven extensions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's get back to the video. Ask is that um, I'll be right back. I would ask if okay. the court is inclined to uh, go along with the party's agreement to continue matters that Mr. Hales be placed under oath and that the court conduct a colloquy with him so that his agreement to these provisions is placed on the record under oath. That's fine. So, Mr. Shockey, do you wish to be heard on the issue that, in effect, Mr. Silverman is characterizing that I should... And by the way, just for the record, Vices, yeah. I don't know if you, you may have missed it or just to, to tell the chat, what the judge just heard is that Randy and Silverman finally, finally, like 10 seconds ago, they both agree we have no objection mm -hmm. to continue the March 1st hearing. Just continue it. Give us yep. time to file the writ of prohibition. Please give us time. That's they're both the both lawyers are in agreement. There is no objection from either side. Okay. Effectively view the motion to stay as a motion to continue rather than a motion to stay and in effect deny it as a motion to stay the proceedings but to continue the evidentiary hearing scheduled for today and the final hearing scheduled for Friday. That's not what I heard him say. <laughs> no, that's, that's, what I heard. that's not anything I, like I'm what he was saying. Since nope. again, my client will not agree to a stay. I think that has certainly... Boom! Betrayal number what? two. What? My client will not agree to a stay. He just he said just, he will, and now he's backtracking again. He just Fucking did. slime bag, man. Sorry. Three minutes ago, he just did. Let's listen to it again. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I just oh can't believe God. what I'm hearing. 
Let's go back. We got to hear this thing straight through. Let's just pay attention. This is fucking insane. I'll try to keep my cool. I'm sorry. It's fine. So, Mr. Shockey, do you wish to be heard on the issue that, in effect, Mr. Silverman is characterizing that I should effectively view the motion to stay as a motion to continue rather than a motion to stay and, in effect, deny it as a motion to stay the proceedings, but to continue the evidentiary hearing scheduled for today and the final hearing scheduled for Friday. That's not what I heard that, him say. No, that's, that's what I heard. I, I'm asking, since, again, my client will not agree to a stay, I think that has certain legal implications. My it, client will agree to continue everything. Everything. The only stay would occur if the appellate court issues an order to show cause or otherwise issues an order directing this court to stay the proceedings is, is the way I interpret the rules of appellate procedure. So I have no objection to the court uh, accepting and treating the motion for a stay as a motion for a continuance. If they want to or tennis mm -hmm. amend that motion to be a motion for continuance, I would have no objection to that. But again, for the record, my client objects to a stay, but not a continuance. And he agreed to a stay behind closed doors. He agreed. My sources tell me he agreed, and I believe them. That's the problem. He agreed to a stay, and now he's like, well, no, 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 we can just style mm -hmm. it as a motion for continuance. But that's not what the lawyers want. That's not what Randy and Doreen want. They want a stay so they can file the writ, yeah. give, give us a week. That's all they're asking. They're asking for seven days. The, vices, when, when was the last time you asked the judge for, like, listen, judge, I, I can't get it done today. Can I have seven days? What does the judge normally tell you if you've been to court? I don't know if you go to okay. court a lot. Yeah. Okay. Just, judges will look at me and say, yeah. I'll give you three weeks. Yeah. Like, I ask for a week, they always give me three. That's standard. I mean, especially if the other count, if, if other counsel doesn't put up a fuss about it. And what's the difference, Volpe Fox? A very good question. So mm -hmm. a, a stay of proceedings means like everything is frozen and nothing is happening. There are no new court dates uh, until a party files a motion. A continuance means there it's not frozen. There is a new court date. They're essentially, in this case, they're kind of synonymous. There's no real legal ramification. Mm -hmm. But Silverman is trying to look like big, all high and mighty in front of his client, I guess, because he just agreed behind closed doors maybe a couple hours prior to this hearing that he's not going to object. And now he's like, well, I'm objecting to you calling it this versus calling it that. Whereas before there was zero conversation. And again, my sources tell me this is his MO. This is typical. That's just silver. That's just exactly. Scummy and it's dirty just not, and it's not how you do look like we're all a community, man. Like we're not here to fight. We're here to make peace. Well, Even see, when you're on the other someday. side of the day. Yeah, someday Silverman is going to be asking the other side for a, exactly, for a and they're going to go mm. shout it from the rooftops, vices. That's exactly what's going to happen. I mean, especially in the big cities, you may you may never see your opponent ever again in twenty or thirty years of practice. But if you're in a tiny little county like this, you'd have to work with these guys on literally every other case. And you're a dick once, and they're, it's going to come back and bite you right in the ass. Yep. Exactly. And and it, this will be remembered not just by Doreen and Randy. This Every lawyer in town is going to be yeah. like, do not trust this man. And next time he moves, well, sorry, buddy. You had your shot and you shot it. That, that's why I'm raising the issue. And I initially couched the stay as effectively a continuance. <clears throat> Mr. Silverman is saying it ought to be amended and be handled as a motion to continue and not a stay. The stay implicates issues of jurisdiction, and I can't confer jurisdiction or provide jurisdiction as the case may be. It's it's set out. What does by it mean, rule. provide but jurisdiction? You, you have jurisdiction during a, yeah. during a pending petition. Of course, he has jurisdiction. jurisdiction. That's in the motion. You have jurisdiction, even if the first DCA is is considering. Now they could issue a, uh, uh, an order to show cause. That's true, but we're, what we're saying is, and it's it's really substance over form. It doesn't matter what you call it. We're asking that no further proceedings, absent emergency, unforeseen things, all pending matters that are pending now, be continued until the First District Court of Appeals rules on the petition. Obviously, you have jurisdiction to hear, you know, God forbid something happens. Um, you, you still have jurisdiction during that, during a, during a pending petition. The court loses jurisdiction during a pending appeals. That's true. Even non-final orders, if they accept jurisdiction, but this is not jurisdictional. A petition for a writ of prohibition is an original proceeding in the appellate courts. It's not what we, what we think of as an appeal. 
So this is necessary to some extent. Um, but you have jurisdiction, concurrent. So here, here, here are the, the totality of the circumstances that are of concern to the court. And, you know, proceeding under 9310, the <laughs> subsection A, the decision to stay is discretionary to begin with. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just realized. Hold on. <laughs> Megan, are you simul streaming this shit? What? Who me? What? I don't know what you're talking about. What's that? What's simul streaming? You know I don't know how to push the buttons. You're medium smart. Apparently today you're um <laughs> Wow. The the, the coin the coin has dropped so quickly. <laughs> How the hell did you sneak this past me? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I didn't do it. It's probably my producer, right? Uh, it's the uh -huh, producer. Uh -huh. Pass the buck on to. Okay, okay. Uh, it's Department IT of Goatee Transportation, Brad. Megan Fox. Did it goatee Brad fuck around with the settings? What are, What are you doing, Brad? What, Damn Brad? it, Brad! Damn no, it, Brad! No, you can't. You can't pass the buck on this one. Uh uh. I just somebody's what. <laughs> I, oh. I dropped a hint with the, what is it? Yeah. Can you? <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> what goes around comes around. <laughs> I will take it. That is hilarious. <laughs> hey, at least, hey, at least I'm here contributing yeah. to your stream. <laughs> <laughs> And, and at least I'm not getting yelled at for some reason. <laughs> Megan, can you forward this to Larry, please? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Megan, if you don't mind, at the end of the stream, share your uh, account and routing number. I promise I will only extract the sufficient money required yeah. to compensate me for the super chats that I have lost that I haven't even read yet. Did you? Did you? And, and now, and have fun trying to weed through which ones are yours and which ones are mine. <laughs> Because I had to read all your super chats. You didn't so have to. You just right did. I didn't know. I didn't oh. know. Did you see my thumbnail? Did you see my thumbnail, Larry? <laughs> your thumbnail where? You didn't. You didn't see my thumbnail. Here, look. <laughs> For an hour and a half. Why does that language sound so familiar? Like I've heard it on another channel recently. <laughs> <laughs> She's so proud of herself. Like, you, oh, no. you are not a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> are you talking about yourself, Megan? Is that yeah. did you just <laughs> well, well, it's sort gosh. of my fault she found out about that. I mean, I, I, I sent a super chat on your channel and she's like. What are you doing out there in Larry's channel? I mean, I'm just hanging out with 3,000 other people. Like, what? <laughs> He's been gone for an hour and a half. For an hour and a half. It's like, okay, I guess now we're even. Now we're even. I want my 200 bucks back, Megan. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and thus, the totality of the circumstances leading to the court's oh, determination are so relevant good. for any reviewing court to consider. Uh, and that would include that counsel <laughs> has been representing the respondent uh, since November 13th. Larry's oh, here it goes. Here it goes. Continuously for nearly three and a half months. Yeah, I'm red. The respondent had counsel in place within 12 days of being served. So, Megan, you said, what, 16 minutes? He's, he, we're at minute 17, and he's going through the record again. So oh, gonna... no. I should have stuck with 45. <laughs> Regardless of whether you are reluctant to call the motions to continue or why they were con why there were motions to continue, nonetheless, the court found good cause on prior occasions, including November 29, December 1, December 5. Wait, sorry, there's a poll? Oh, my he God. He can't see Fucking my poll. <laughs> are you serious? It's no. on my stream. <laughs> Oops. Wait, I'm trying to zoom in. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> How long? What? 
How long will it take Larry to notice I'm streaming? <laughs> 15 minutes! <laughs> minutes. <laughs> An hour when the super chats aren't his. <laughs> Where's the hour and a half? You should have all oh, you should have put an hour and a half. You should have said an hour and a half. I I I I I I dropped oh, the ball. On that that would have that's okay, but that would have been glorious because mm. whoever got that right would have been like that's the lottery for the day. <laughs> There's a poll. There's a poll. But and I mean, there was a thumbnail which I posted to Twitter, by the way. So you just didn't see any of no, this. No, I was I'm streaming. Who like just randomly scours through Twitter? Let's see what the news are while I'm streaming. Like what? I know I did wait till after the stream has started before I did tweet that out. Smart, so. smart. Yeah. So whoever voted an hour, I guess you guys win the fifteen percent. Fifteen percent. It's, you can't make this shit up. The universe has its own little jokes. Oh, to um, end the poll. What's what's fifty percent <laughs> of six thirty? I'm curious now. There we go. Uh, ninety five of you, ninety five of you just won the lottery for the day. As far as I'm concerned, <laughs> this is incredible. This is Very unbelievable. Stuff. <laughs> and now here we are again. Yeah, here we are again. <laughs> again and again. As the court found good cause on prior occasions, including November 29, December 1, December 5, January 4. Did you just hear it like Randy just sighed deeply? On respondents' <laughs> motions to continue. Here we go. There was a hearing on November 29, at which time the respondents' <gasps> counsel said the, ca the case could be concluded in minutes. Oh my the court offered the following day to get a final resolution. <laughs> that was denied. Counsel for the respondent represented he would be in court the following Wednesday to conclude the proceedings. He failed to appear and instead successor counsel came in and I started that proceeding by saying, Mr. Shockett, I'm going to give you the continuance if you needed to get prepared, number one, because I want you to be prepared. Yeah, you railed on him for an hour and counsel of his choosing and to be prepared. And number two, because there was a change in circumstance in that a temporary injunction, which had previously been denied by this court, had been entered. Then we came back by agreement January 4, at which time, among other things, there was a bomb threat. <laughs> he so just admitted that it was say, continuance due to no fault of Randy and, and Doreen. Thwarted the proceedings from continuing any further down the path. On that same day, we agreed I to come back to on January 26th <laughs> for final hearing, um, in part due to the bomb threat intervening before the January 26th was the petitioners fairly new at that time, counsel's motion to continue, which was then granted, which brought us to today's date scheduled February 28. There have been complaints and pleadings filed with the court about the length of time it's taken, and now we're asking for another continuance. And I got a, I got a, I got a question, what really is the design and the desire um, when it would be inconsistent to complain about the length of time and at the same time ask for a fifth continuance. Additionally, there's been criticism and complaint and in pleadings before this court about the injunctive relief that as a matter of law, if a continuance is granted under the subsection statutory um, He's pounding section, the table now. It, it must be. 784-0485, subsection 5A, 5B, 5C. Making noises. Good cause, the extension of the injunction that might Judge be placed. Judge Angry, no also. like it. <laughs> this court entered an addendum that the respondent accepted. I read what I proposed as the addendum <laughs> on December 6th. It's true. Counsel for the respondent said no objection. Oh, seriously, send two thirds said, of your bill to this minutes. guy. I'm going to go and reduce it to writing. I'm going to hand it to you in writing. Please review it. Have your client review it. Both respondent and counsel said no objection, which is an agreement, a stipulation to those conditions. Yet it keeps coming up in subsequent pleadings as a complaint. And I understand that because he is restrained. I then, because of the ruling on December 29th, the first appellate court ruling since the October 2021 statutory change in the language, adding six words. And if you read footnote number one of the previous DCA, second DCA opinion, it is of substance and 
Did you catch how excited he got when he's like, oh, another lawyer, I mean, another judge in another yeah. courtroom dinged you. Now I have the power to remind you of that. He got like, yeah, he sped really up in his speech low. even. That's really low to so, bring that up. Because it's not even related to this case, right? Not anymore, no. Right. Feather is gone. It's just so pedantic. Like it's, it's it's your law professor lecturing. Just just make the damn ruling and put all of this in your in your decision. Just do that. Give all your reasons in your written decision. This is exactly. Absolutely I think he believes that he d he has to repeat the record every time he's in about everything. Like I don't think he knows he can just say the record already reflects all of this. So let's move on because mm -hmm. it's in the record. He thinks he has to read it into the record. Every hearing, I think he just likes the, the sound of his own voice. He does. The, what, the, the third time he's brought it up in this hearing, and it's only what eighteen minutes in. Yep, it twenty minutes. Yep. <laughs> twenty minutes. Welcome to the shit show, vices. Uh, have you have you streamed or seen his previous hearings? Yeah, oh, we're, yeah, we're up to hearing four now. Oh, nice. Okay, so you're almost caught up. Yeah, so you know, you know. <laughs> Cranky Granny goes. Now you're even. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hour hour and a half for an hour and a half. I, I believe it was Hammurabi who said that five thousand years ago. He said <laughs> hour and a half of super chats for an hour and a half of super chats. That's I think that's a direct quote from Hammurabi. Yeah, it's, 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 it's an eye for eye, tooth for a tooth, hour and a half for an hour and a half. <laughs> oh, is that what he said? Was it eye for an eye? I thought it was hour and a half for an hour and a no, half. That, that, that was like that was like Leviticus, I think, that said that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aristotle. Materiality. This court modified the addendum from this court's perspective, more narrowly placing the restrictions. But nonetheless, there were restrictions without opposition. There was the first motion to disqualify on December 21, order denying 1226, no writ sought. There's a second motion to disqualify, February 11, order denying, February 14th, no writ sought. He's so proud of his denials. Despite the order denying the disqualification and no writ sought, and despite the fact that the writ of prohibition is the recognized proper avenue for immediate review of whether or not disqualification is an appropriate remedy, Additional motions were filed on February 16th, two on February 18th, one on February 27th, all on behalf of the respondent. Additional requests by counsel for the respondent for hearing time. The court scheduling the hearing time for today. Oh my God. From the court's view, contrary to 9.100, which requires a writ to be filed timely to present, excuse me, to prevent further court action. And then one week prior to the hearings being set on the motions that were filed after the second order denying disqualification, counsel for the respondent files a third motion to disqualify. Order issued today's date, February 28th. Now, the motion to stay amounts to saying we plan in the future when we get to it because, and I'm not belittling the intervening yes, other requirements that council has both with court and outside of court, but saying, I'm gonna to get to it, but I need more time to get to it because I got other more important things to do than my client's cause in this case. So let's continue it again. It says that there's already been a ruling creating further grounds for disqualification. So another motion for disqualification is likely to come or and, and by the way, every time he says, so there was another ruling on a motion for disqualification, he's literally saying, I denied you, and then I denied you again, and then I denied you again, and then, oh, yeah, I denied you again, and then, <laughs> and then I'm going to keep denying you everything you give me, I'm going to deny. <laughs> like, that's literally what he's saying in his head. For writ, I don't know which, but you've had time to do each. The rules require it to be timely. The Your court's Honor, investing itself again, and you're 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 asking for a continuance, but you don't want to call it a continuance. You want to call it a stay. Um, and Even the judge the doesn't court care what you still, call it. Yeah, because it's effectively a continuance under two. And again, this this should have been over the minute that, that Silverman said, "Yeah, I don't have a problem with the continuance." Do so.
May I be heard, stay in, in a second. Okay. Yes, you can. Wait, wait, wait. What did the, you say? Sorry. The in call it a continuance. You want to call it a stay. Um, and the court still, because it's effectively a continuance under 2.545E, needs to find good cause. And I'm having a hard time do so. May I be heard, Judge? Oh, yes. he's having a hard time doing so. What? Okay, again, I know, Megan, you've seen a lot of court hearings. Vice says you may have been right. to and or seen court hearings. When both lawyers come in, like in the Johnny Depp trial, for example, has there ever been, let's let's take the most, you know, the trial of the century for just a second. Has there ever been a motion before Judge Askarati where neither Ben Chu nor uh, Rottenborn or whoever was in front of her, and they're like, Your Honor, we have no objection. And this side goes, Your Honor, we have no objection. We're both in agreement. And the judge is like, I don't care. I'm going to do my own thing. No, I've never yeah. seen that. That's what are, you just said. Judges yeah. are normally like, oh, great. Shit I don't have to do. Let's move on. Yep. And, and not only am I going to do my own thing, I'm going to talk about it for an hour and a half. Yeah. It makes no sense. And then he denies it when they're both in agreement that, that, that he should have it. It's just, it's, it's absurd. It's absolutely absurd. I've never seen anything like it ever. I've never seen two lawyers say, judge, we agree that this is what should be done. And the judge is like, well, I don't think not so fast. What? Mm -hmm. well, the the hearing should literally have ended right that second. Isn't so, that right, judge? Okay, boom, here we are. It's continued. Yeah, let's get a new date this, or, and yeah. I'll, I'll stay the proceedings. But he goes on for another at least uh, 25 minutes in this hearing. 15 minutes. <laughs> isn't he? Isn't in he? In the first part. Isn't his job as a judge, though, to yeah. only adjudicate when there are disagreements? Isn't that really what a judge does? A judge makes the mm. call when two sides disagree. A judge is not supposed to make calls contrary to agreement in the courtroom is he it, say, say that again sorry the judge is not supposed to what a judge is not supposed to make adjudications based on agree like contrary to agreements made in the courtroom he is supposed to <sighs> a, adjudicate disagreements right no not necessarily it depends in the the interest of justice may trump i'll give you a prime example we had this uh dui case in front of uh a judge one time and i love this judge she i have not one bad thing to say about her honestly and we've never had an issue in her courtroom uh one day uh we came in this case was like i don't know maybe 18 24 months old it was an old case in, in their defense but the, the client ended up firing their previous lawyer like a year plus later and then hiring us so we were only on the case a few months and um we come in and we're like your honor we're still looking into this you know the, the commonwealth has no objection you know the prosecution has no objection to a continuance we need a continuance can we please get a continuance and the judge was like no and we're like, I'm sorry, did, what? Would you just say no? We're both in agreement. What do you mean no? She's like, no, this case is old. I don't want this clouding my docket in the interest of justice. There's the key word. I am going to, um, I'm going to set a jury trial date. And we're like, but, 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 but we don't want a jury trial date. We don't want to go to trial. We don't, neither of us wants to try this stupid case. We're going to resolve it. She's like, I don't care. Uh, it's going to trial. It's uh, at least, sorry, she didn't say it's going to trial. A jury trial date is set, and that way she's moving the docket forward by, I mean, she gave us like four or five months. This was not like you're going to trial next week or anything crazy. So you could still have time to settle it mm -hmm. before yes, that Yes, but date. she's like, she set a hard and fast, and it's like, if you don't get it resolved by this, then I don't care. You guys are going to yeah, trial. Yeah, I got it. But we well, got that it was like to force it. you, that was to force you to get it done. Because it was which, an old case. I, I understood that makes the sense. judge. I felt it. Yeah. That makes sense. And I guess yeah. technically this is an old case too, but it's old because of it's his fault. Yes. It's his fault. He did not administer justice promptly. And these people were entitled, both of them, the plaintiff and the defendant, were entitled to a uh, hearing on this in good time, not this five months nonsense. So now he's complaining that he got caught being biased and he doesn't want to give them the stay. And it's there's no excuse for it. There's no interest of justice here. None. None whatsoever. This is weird. This is, excuse me, so weird. Oh, by the way, I want to share this. Uh, Mo in the deep end is so close, you all. 
1.95. Let's get it to at oh least 2,000. We just need 50 people. There's like 3,500 here. 50 people. Just hit that subscribe button here. I'm going to do it with you right here. Subscribe. Boom. I can think of one person that could do it. <laughs> <laughs> I know one too. Come on, Vices. No, I'm just kidding. I, oh, I, I oh, subscribed no. ages We're ago. both subscribed oh, ages I didn't know. I, I didn't know about Mo. Oh, you got to meet. You got to have her on in her turtle wig. Um, She is Love funny. It. You will like her a lot. She is very funny. And she is, um, oh, the things that come out of her mouth. I tell you what. She is the one who coined the Tuft of Justice in the Kowalski case. Oh. Judge Tuft. That was all her. Um, That's cool. I know. She's so funny. We were calling it Hair Island. Uh, <laughs> but then Mo uh -huh. came up with the Tuft of Justice, and that really fit, you know, for Judge Carroll. She is super funny. Uh -huh. um, and she has this hilarious dog. A little this puppy fry who does her news with her and so she has a doggo cam too uh which is a fun fun thing so definitely go and there we go the sorry two thousand subscribers ah, nice. we got it we got it <laughs> yeah perfect all right let's keep going the the inconsistencies that have been pled and pleaded by respondents counsel are numerous that's part of the totality of the circumstances whether it's I only need a few minutes but now we've got three and a half months and it's not enough whether it's complaints about additional delays but now we're the party seeking a fifth delay whether it's complaints about the injunctive relief that counsel for the respondent and respondent himself agreed to on December 6th and then again in January when it was amended and more narrowly focused there are six pending allegations for violation of the injunction one implicating this attorney of record for the respondent case 38 Ugh. 2023 mm 497 there have been findings about violations of the florida supreme court order aosc 1122 the eighth circuit administrative order 1.14 v2 rule of procedure 12.310 b4 and basically i'm being asked to delay a case again because we intend in the future to take further action by filing a writ, which we didn't timely do yet, and we say that we're going to. Um, and I'm having a hard time determining that to be good cause for another continuance, a fifth. Okay, may I be, may I be heard? Yes, sir. Okay, so the, the, the timing of a writ of a prohibition is when it's soon as practicable. And Your Honor, we're gonna, we, are, we have a fundamental disagreement here. We feel it's very clear that when an order denying a motion to disqualify a trial court judge in this state, the law is very clear. It shouldn't take issue at all to simply say, and I think it's even in the bench, hand, bench bar handbook or the bar handbook, for the court it says simply say it's denied as legally insufficient. When there's so much more in there, there's case law that says that creates an additional ground. File the writ. We'd well, no, no, here. no, that's not the remedy, Judge, because you have to give the court a, a chance He spoke to, for 23 to seconds before so he was So we are interrupted. filing a writ now based on the first three. The problem here is the Hobson's choice, because he does have a feeling and a belief. He has a right to take it up to the first. He has a right to, to, to file a motion to disqualify. And so his Hobson's choice is basically this. It's not untimely. Even the second one's not untimely. Even the first one's not untimely, given the history of this case. And we are not. This is really the second time we've asked for a continuance. Explain what you mean to be by the first one. Uh, the, the, the first, first motion to By the way, for those of you who don't know, Hobson's choice is is no choice at all. I think the analogy I've been I've been offering may not be like the most accurate now. The more that I think about it, the actual definition of Hobson's choice, if you go to Oxford Dictionary, uh, a choice of taking what is available or nothing at all. I was I was saying it's basically like. Uh, uh, well, I guess, no, the analogy still works. You know, the analogy I've been positing is, imagine before you are two plates of food and they're both poisoned, you know, poisonous. One is going to kill you within 60 seconds. The other is going to kill you within 60 minutes. That's a Hobson's choice. Like you're going to die. Your, your solution is you either take it or nothing at all. I guess it, maybe it doesn't really work. What am I thinking of? There's another um, allegory to this. I, I forget the, the term for it, the philosophical term, when you're offered two choices and, and they're both bad. What am I thinking of, Chad? Chad can probably help us out. It's, I thought it was Hobson's choice, but I guess it was wrong. 
but the definition, the actual definition. So is Sophie's choice. That's right. Is that Sophie's choice? That sounds right. Sophie's choice. That was definition. a movie with Cher. Uh, used in reference to a difficult situation when uh, one must choose between two equally deserving alternatives. Yes, you are right. You're absolutely right. That is Sophie's choice. It's like a rock and a hard place. Like they're both suck. They're both bad, but you have to pick one. Um, and then I guess Hobson's choice is uh, you, you pick, take what's available or nothing at all. So that's what he's talking about. Denying disqualify was, was Chris, around Christmas time. And we thought the case would be over January 4th. Little did we know what when eventually occurred all every time since then. But they keep on causing continuances and we're getting blamed for it somehow. They're the cause ever since December 6th. So now, wait, what's the wait problem? A second, is this, wait a second. I, I want you to explain that. Mr. Shockett, I'm, I'm not cutting you off as much as I'm giving you, I'm, I'm inviting you to explain that position. Okay. I think you're kidding There's an order off. disqualifying. You've got a remedy to seek a petition for writ. <laughs> You don't, but what you're saying, I just want to make sure I'm understanding this, is that <laughs> the case law. No, it's not really. Me Megan made a, a su super chats choice. <laughs> <laughs> you're so sweet. See, I had least... to go a little bit past the hour and a half just to one up you. <laughs> but we... at least but you I'm were. So... At least I you were here. You. At least you were here. <laughs> I, I would have done the same if only I had no. No one believes you, Larry. No know, one children, believes you. The greatest no grift in the history of grift. The greatest <laughs> grift in the, don't ruin the greatest grift in the history okay. of Law Tube. Okay. Let greatest us believe that you Tom Sawyered it because that's what I we believe. want to believe. I, I MacGyvered Megan into <laughs> making, like, Megan was my bitch for an hour and a half reading, <laughs> making me money. Make well, uh, guys remember that's why you have a Lambo and I drive a beat up minivan. You guys remember Chappelle's show? Is Wayne Brady gonna have to choke a bitch? She's like, I'm sorry, Daddy, I don't have the money for you. Is Wayne Brady gonna have to choke a bitch? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm terrible. it's good stuff. It's good stuff. The case oh, I'm not God. taking issue with the law. What you're saying is factually, your determination was. If we can get to January 4, in anticipation of that being the final hearing, let's just have the judge that we move to disqualify stay on the case and hear the case? To, to frankly, Judge, he, he changed his mind based on what happened January 4. We yeah. seem to have a ruling saying, you know what, I required him stringently to provide proof of reason for the continuance. And you orally that day ordered her, no compliance. In fact, I have a pending motion to compel discovery that you still haven't ruled on because she failed to appear in December for the depositions that you told her I might grant fees against you. You told her to provide proof. She's provided nothing. That's still an, uh, a motion that's outstanding. I think for today. No. Nope. No, nope. it was filed. It was not filed for today. It wasn't. It was still hasn't been ruled on because we're still waiting for her to comply with your oral ruling of, to provide proof of why she didn't show up December 21st. Yeah, you haven't We've seen nothing. Made yep. her so do that. The, the, every continuance is because of that. We don't want to pin it. it you, I understand you, but we're given a Hobson's choice, which is basically have this, TR, this temporary injunction continue to exist, continue to exist, or have this trial exist when we have discoveries issues and we have a, a, a court which he feels is not able to be impartial. So this is the Hobson choice. He's accepted the other end of it, which is, okay, we'll have the temporary injunction. Let's see what the first says. We have agreement on both I've sides I've accepted this. that this judge it, is it never going to get rid of the injunction. You want a motion for stay. He wants a motion for it's a, it's a, a, That's a term of art, Judge. That's a term effect. of it's art. Exactly. Remedies. You have jurisdiction. No, nobody here, we want to continue the pending motions, including my motion for fees, which hasn't been noticed. I've asked. We, Again, that's hanging since December. We want to, you have jurisdiction. Everything, any concerns you may have about what happens to her is is still sufficient. The only violence that's happened in this case, Judge, is that the victim's advocate of this court's son attacked him at the uh, mm. Bubba Q's in Chiefland. And there's a police, there's a case on that. That's the only violence that's occurred because of the case to him, not to her. No, but Mr. Hales, I know you're making a face. How do I know that? <gasps> Unless your attorney just told me it what? <laughs> about 14 <laughs> seconds ago. Pause for a second because look, look, Nothing. look at how different this is. How he treats Jeremy. Jeremy hasn't said what? one damn word. He hasn't said one word. He threw up his hand like, yeah, like I'm the one who got what? assaulted. But he didn't say a word. And this judge is now going to berate him while this 
this this woman over here, this oh, harpy, interrupted the judge verbally about a hundred times in the last one. All he did was go, "Get the fuck out of here!" And now it's gonna. Now the judge is gonna start humiliating and berating Jeremy directly. Mr. Hales, I know you're making a face. How do I know that? <laughs> Unless your attorney just told me it about 14 seconds ago. No faces. No faces in court. You're not allowed no, to have faces. Allowed. But I'm just, it's, a, it's it, w how do I know that? Is it pled in this case? No. It's a criminal. Oh Should it God. be? Probably not. No, no wait, There's stop. There's a criminal investigation. Look at, look at the reaction. Back up a little bit and watch how the judge is speaking directly to Jeremy, right? He is asking him a question. And Jeremy's response, you know, he wants to respond. He wants to say something. And Randy stops him like, no, 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 don't, don't talk. Don't talk. But this Let's judge watch. is, this judge is baiting him. Watch. Mm -hmm. So, so let me go back a few more seconds. I'm going to go back like 30 seconds. Have yeah, take that face off. <laughs> take that face off in my courtroom. <laughs> You're not allowed to have a face. I wish I could zoom in on Jeremy's face. Honestly. I know. Everything, any concerns you may have about what happens to her is, is still sufficient. The only violence that's happened in this case, Judge, is that the victim's advocate of this court's son attacked him at the uh, barbecues in Chiefland. And there's a police, there's a case on that. That's the only violence that's occurred because of the case to him, not to her. No, but Mr. Hales, I know you're making a face. How do oh, he's smiling. Okay, so I saw he kind of... He but he also him. went like oh, this. He went like me. this. And he was like, yeah, I was the one attacked. And then he kind of leans back with a smile on his face because he's like, I am the victim here, you fucking dumbass. So you're not allowed Judge to smile to in court. This. You're not allowed to smile in, in Judge to Thomas's court either because now he's going to complain that he's your client is laughing. You know what he, What the judge just showed, by the way? He showed that he is biased towards biased. the petitioner and oh, against yeah. the respondent by saying, like, she's the petitioner. She's the one that has the, 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 the petition for injunction for stalking. And you are the perpetrator. So perpetrators are not allowed to have a voice in my courtroom when he, he hasn't even heard the facts yet from Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Jeremy hasn't had a chance to speak for one second other than like mm -hmm. answering cross-examination questions by the judge. Where were you in Ohio on such and such day right. or whatever? And it's what is this with your property? I can't bother to look it up on Google. I can't bother to look at a map. You just explain to me in court and make me understand where your driveway is. And and meanwhile, she's over there texting on her phone for an hour and a half during yep. a hearing. Yep. She's and getting interrupting up, walking the judge. around and pounding her papers and filing. Leaving her kid in the car for four hours. Oh, God. And telling the judge that. Oh, I know that, unless your attorney just told me it about 14 seconds ago. You don't have to answer that, but I'm just, it's, a, it's, it, w w how do I know that? Is it yeah, pled guess, yeah. in this case? No, no it's a criminal. Should case. it be? Probably not. There's a criminal investigation. How do you know? A separate criminal proceeding yes. for which this court, what has pending, how many thousands of cases yeah, in this jurisdiction? Yeah. Understood. Judge. So, I'm a, all right. So tell me about that. I'm giving you an opportunity. Your client's laughing at it. I'm asking you to explain to the court what the premise is that that should be relevant. Look, Jerry, well, the like, allegations of violations of this court's order. You're saying there's, Judge, there's also something more important. Another, maybe not more important, wasn't your words, but a, a, an act of violence yes. perpetrated upon someone. Yes. But how am I to know about that? I, I don't know. I, I'm telling you now. That's what happened. I didn't know if you knew, but. Uh, I don't okay, it's know. a Miss Martin who works in this building. It's her son that uh, assaulted and battered him. There's a case. He, there, there's an ongoing case that happened 10 days ago or eight days ago. Your Honor, I was looking for an opportunity to jump I didn't want, I need to go I'm into this. I'm not objecting to any discussion. This is being completely irrelevant to this case. I have no idea what that's all about, this allegation with somebody named Martin. Like well, I it's in, I'm taking it in the context of, as time goes on, it's not favoring Mr. Hales by any That's and so, But yet, he's still, willing to, so, but. he's still willing to be enjoined until the final hearing, whatever we call it, and have these other matters not, not be heard. Maybe it will be heard by your honor. That'd be great, but just not now. We, we are going to file this petition as an office of the court. It's almost ready, to be honest with you. We've been working on it. Dorian's and working on it right just, now. We had to come here today. It may Literally be filed in court. tomorrow. Literally. Friday. She has she's to leave been out of town Friday. She so has to be there. That's part, of, that's part of the court's consideration, which yeah. is if it's denied, you're still not denied.
I'm not going to deny Mr. Hale's appellate review or any reviewing court to review anything that's transpired thus far for which they have jurisdiction. A denial of a motion for stay does not deny you from filing a petition for writ. Of course, but we're just asking for, to keep judicial economy. Why would we want to do all this and then have it redone potentially? What, he's willing to accept the, har the, the temporary I, injunction. I've, I've just given a laundry list of reasons. But that, he's not well, objecting. He's, he's oh being hurt. God. He's not objecting. And they don't object. Yep. Yeah, nobody's Nobody objecting. objects. You're the only one objecting is judge. And, again, and judge, are you going to pay the excess legal fees for every time they have to come to get another continuance rather than just put a stay and stop the incurrence of I think all court-related legal fees? The judge has already stepped outside his uh, his purview so much as as uh, as a judge who should be litigating, not litigating. He has been litigating. I, that was a Freudian slip. Yeah. Litigating you know, he has, from the bench. He's been litigating this from the bench and not listening to the case before him on the merits. There may be some, I mean, judges have absolute immunity. We covered that. But again, mm -hmm. if you can find a way where he stepped outside of his role, which I'm still having trouble. We talked to um, John Bryan was here, the civil rights lawyer. Uh, he's a homie. He's a real G. He just he had a I don't know if you guys know, he had a case in um, in West Virginia where a judge executed a search warrant and went to the house to help search the house with police. And the person was there like, uh, no, you're not doing this. And there's a video of everything. And the judge said, if you kick me out of your home, I will have you arrested, you know, Mr. Whatever. And um, months later, they filed a uh, 1983 action because the judge was acting outside the scope of her jurisdiction. She was acting as a law enforcement agent and not a judge. It, she was outside of her judicial capacity. And uh, uh, he got $200,000 for his client. I remember talking to him. He said, the check is literally sitting on my desk two weeks ago, a week and a half ago. True story. I'm trying to play it. It's buffering. Oh, that's weird. Right at this point, there we go. I think that Mr. Hales probably has waived his right to seek review of the first order seeking disqualification <laughs> or de uh, denying disqualification and the second because there have been substantive proceedings in this case since then. That's not even for your honor to consider. It, it, that's again, for the it's first. Not right before the court today. The point I was trying to make, and it's a point that I think is helpful to you and your client's okay. position, so I'd like to make it, is that the court did enter a third order today denying the third motion to disqualify. I don't think there's a reasonable argument that they could have filed a writ of prohibition on that third one between the time you entered that order about 10 o'clock this morning and now. My client's position, we are in agreement as to what we think the court ought to do today, whether we're calling a continuance or a stay. I think I hear them saying stay, or continuance rather. But we're in agreement, and we're probably in agreement for entirely different reasons uh, from each side. From my client's perspective, one of the reasons, and this I think goes to good cause, Your Honor, is that no matter what this court does, no matter what you do, they're going to file motions to disqualify. In our view, on this side of the aisle, there is absolute benefit in having the DCA rule on their arguments that your orders were too detailed or that they're, they were wrongfully uh, denying their motions to disqualify. And perhaps that can put a stop to some of this going forward. My client obviously would receive the protection of the temporary injunction. Yes, Mr. Hales would be subject to the injunction, but one, he's agreeing to it, and two, he is all over YouTube repeatedly saying that he doesn't care about the temporary injunction, it doesn't really affect him. I mean, that's not before the court today, but that is up there on YouTube. And, and again, slime bag strikes again. He's, by the way, I know we're not talking about this, but let me just weave that in there real quick because he, that's a fact that has nothing to do with the argument before the court. That's how you know you're dealing with a very slimy, scummy attorney. I'm sorry. I'm going to call a spade a spade. He just called himself out. He literally just said, I know this is not before the court, but let me just litigate the case real quick, you know, on the merits for a second. Sorry, it's buffering again. It's weird. I, maybe it's my computer. Is, let me shut down. Terry, basis for it, but you're putting it before the court while you're saying it's just, not, just which by, is like a passive Okay, so and even the judge calls him out. It's now before the court, but don't consider it. So It's by way of proffer. Uh, and okay. certainly if the court wanted me to take evidence on that, I could call Mr. Hales as a witness and ask him whether he said that on his YouTube channel. Oh, shut up. Uh, but Nobody again, cares about it's you. It's really a moot point because he's agreeing to the extension of the temporary. Um, right. I, I absolutely understand the court's concern. There is quite a benefit in finality here. Even if this case goes up to the DCA on the writ of prohibition, this court does retain jurisdiction to enforce its own orders. The state attorney and the Levy County Sheriff's Office maintain concurrent jurisdiction to enforce 
uh, this court's orders over in the other courtroom if necessary, um, or maybe this courtroom, I don't know where they do misdemeanors. So for a variety of reasons, but because Did my you just say I don't do misdemeanors? Did anybody else catch that or yeah, am I that's hallucinating? Force, I think that's what uh, he said. This court's orders over in the other courtroom if necessary, um, or maybe this courtroom, I don't know where they do misdemeanors. So I don't know whether for, they do misdemeanors. I don't know where that they do miss. Okay, sorry. For I'm a variety misreading. of reasons, but because my client believes that it would be best for the DCA to weigh in one way or the other at this point, and because there is a third order denying a motion to disqualify that was just entered today, mm -hmm. that arguably they have not had sufficient time to bring a writ of prohibition on or a petition for a prohibition, that's why my client's not opposing the request to continuance. So, so here's the thing. <laughs> what is the thing? Mr. Hales has not been prohibited from doing certain things on YouTube. He has been prohibited from doing other things consistent with the second district court of appeals opinion that oh, was issued. Sorry, pay attention. Uh, I want to call this out because Megan already did and I want to call it out again. All that pounding that you hear, this is not, I mean, we're all mm -hmm. gonna mute our microphones just to prove a point. We're gonna mute our mics that it's not us, it's the judge doing this mm -hmm. on his desk. Okay, you guys ready? Mute your mics. Yep. Mr. Hales has not been prohibited from doing certain things on YouTube. He has been prohibited from doing other things consistent with the second district court of appeals opinion that was issued on December 29th. I literally adopted their reasoning and put it into this court's order because that's, that's the current status of the law because there was no other district court of appeals opinion since October 21's legislative change in the statute. As far as that's as far as that goes. And another phrase that you just used, which is we're in agreement as to the result, but maybe from different perspectives. I don't think the court is that far off from your all's perspective, but the way we get there, I differ from because this court believes, number one, the stay is problematic. A continuance without good cause is improper, yet if the motion that's before this court is denied, Mr. Hale still has the opportunity, and I know it puts you up against a time crunch, but he still has the opportunity before Friday to find Okay, so he at least acknowledges, mm. yes, it puts you up against a time crunch. For the first time, we hear one scintilla, I love that word, scintilla of logic from this man. Yeah, it puts you up against the time crunch, but I don't give a shit. And I'm about to tell you why I don't care. Yep. File a writ, and this court's divested of jurisdiction. He's protected, his interests are protected, and we get the review. I don't believe procedurally that's the way it works, Your Honor. I think they have that's to right. file for the writ, and it's not like an appeal, because this is directed toward the court's jurisdiction. My understanding of the appellate law is that it doesn't divest this court of jurisdiction. To hear a final hearing? That will have to be yes, redone? Yes, that's right, Judge. Under it's an original proceeding. H. It's hang not on, an appeal. I'm going to come to you. Under 9.100H, unless the first DCA issues an order to show cause directed to my client to respond to the petition for order prohibition, there is no stay in this court, automatic or otherwise. The only automatic stay comes if they issue that order to show cause. Today is Wednesday afternoon. If they even were to file the writ today, it's the petition for the writ today, it's doubtful that the appellate court would even be able to look at it before Friday. Well, there's, that, no, let me, let me help you. there's, there's no automatic stay as far as I'm aware. There's aware. no automatic stay when you have an original proceeding in an appellate court in Florida. However, when you go to file it, it does recognize it. If anyone's ever filed one, it asks about, are there any emergent deadlines that, the, that, that this court appeal has to know about? And that's what you put in, well, there's a trial date, things like that on this date, and that gets their attention when you have it one or two days. What we're trying to do is avoid all that and just say, because because there's no, I heard your honor say that if we did file it, you would you would continue the final hearing. Well, it's, it's going because to Because I agree with counsel that I don't want to put either litigant or counsel for that matter through proceedings that could potentially have to be rehashed. Right, that's with our another, position With a too. successor judge. Yeah. There's no sense in anybody going through that process, especially given 
That was their entire argument that he doesn't agree with. Restrictions, and again, it's another balance, but you, on behalf of your client, are saying you're willing to accept what? that. Well, we may get it done by Friday. It depends what's coming at the least well, tomorrow. But it, the point is that it, it's imminent. And so well, it, the, the, court, the court wants to be convinced of that. OK. And so what the court can do. He loves convince, calling himself convince that me, court. Convince me harder. Yeah, continue. Convince me. Subject to you all filing. Yes, daddy. Hashtag convince me harder. <laughs> yeah, what am I That's what he into? wants. The court, <laughs> the, court, the court wants to be convinced. This is, so how this are we supposed the, to do that, your honor? We're trying to the, convince you. This is the DUI daddy stream, the legal vices. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> this is the hashtag DUI daddy. <laughs> See, this judge is like my grandmother who sp always just spoke in third person. The court wants the no, just, just say hey, I, judge. I like it when he says the court, I. Yeah. Yeah. I like how oh, hashtag go. DUI daddy came out right when my girlfriend just got back from her oh, report. No. <laughs> so the first oh, thing she no. hears when she walks through the door is hashtag yes, DUI daddy. Just blame Megan. Tell her <laughs> I blame, I blame Megan. Megan. I blame it's Megan. Megan's fault. It's my Megan's fault. Megan's fault. We have vices in Megan, so. <laughs> So it's always Megan's fault. Hi, Chandler. Hey. Hi, Chandler. What's up? <laughs> Before Friday at 9 a.m. Okay, so here it is. Filing of the petition for writ. This is the, the. This is where he's like, I'm uncomfortable with this. Deny the continuance. Subject to you all filing a petition for writ. Before Friday at 9 a.m. Upon the filing of the petition for writ, the court will grant the motion for continuance and it'll be stopped. Filed as a motion to continue. On these, it'll, it'll be styled as a motion to continue. So he finally agrees. He finally says, "Okay," but with a caveat: you have twenty-four hours. You have you have only to get it Thursday. in Thursday by five a.m. or six a.m. On Friday. On yeah. Friday. Yeah. He's a, he hasn't said that and yet, but yeah, he already knew that Doreen, who is sitting there working furiously on this thing, has a doctor's appointment and an out-of-town engagement before friday it's it's outrageous like he already knows the person writing it may not be able to get it in on time because she has informed him that she's doing these things that randy informed him that she's got all these things going on he doesn't care yep conditions we we, we, we outlined correct to de to delay or it, it's a delay it's a continuance the Potential likelihood, obviously, I don't think it's going to come to fruition, but I, I want to avoid the potential likelihood for the litigants and for counsel if it does come to pass, which is a successor judge having to redo anything. Can I have a word? He keeps pounding. Sorry? Can I have a word, Ms. Inkelis? Yes, if you, need, if you need a minute. God, it must be so infuriating to have to ask this judge for permission to talk to your counsel. Got well, no, 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 Megan. Uh, it, it just it, no. It, this judge in particular. Normal, yeah, I know it's normal, but yeah. I mean, just to to have to ask him. Can you for imagine permission. if he said no? Like, may I, I have, may, may I confer with co-counsel? No, you may no. not. <laughs> no, you may not. I am the law. <laughs> well, the last time when he Wait, did Vices, it, you're, you're muted. You're Vices, muted. you're muted. <laughs> Sorry, the dog is just chewing on a bone here. I didn't want to hear everybody's going <laughs> into the microphone. No, I, I, was, I can't even remember what I was going to say. I was, oh, I was, I was saying it's just you know, we laugh at this. We laugh at the idea of being told no, you can't talk to your co-counsel, but it's not so laughable in this court. Not in this yeah. court. Yeah. Very yes. possible. Agreed. And remember when uh, I think it was Randy. I think I don't think it was Feather. I'm not sure. I don't remember now. But one of them went to ask for permission to talk to his client about the date that the judge proposed he turns his back speaks to his client and the judge says uh adjour courts adjourned while the attorney is speaking to his client doesn't wait for them to say yes that date is okay or no that date is not so in this courtroom in particular when you ask this judge for permission to do something he might just adjourn the courtroom adjourn the whole thing and while you're talking to your co-counsel <laughs> <laughs> that was feather chat is saying that was feather okay yeah. um daddy may i is that what we're playing sarah adams is on the money <laughs> sure sure <It's> the... <laughs> okay. I 
feel so bad for Doreen. She's working so hard on this, <laughs> trying to get it done, trying not to react to what's happening in court, just focused on her writ of prohibition. Hey, hang on, give, give Mr. Shockett a chance to, okay. Yeah, you, you indicated that they filed by Monday morning or Friday morning at 9 o'clock, it was right for 10 years, so we're all going to be here dressed up and ready to party. Monday we're just, we're just here at 6 a.m. <laughs> so, so what I ask Mr. Shockett is, how about a deadline of tomorrow evening by like 6 or 7 o'clock? I'd, I'd rather have 6 a.m. Did you just see Doreen? <laughs> if you weren't watching Doreen, you got to back that up. They say back, 6 a.m. and she up, almost backing up, backing up, back. She up. almost comes out of her dad chair. Taught me good. You guys remember that meme? Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> she's she almost comes out of her chair when she hears 6 a.m. Because she knows that she's not going to sleep for the next day and yeah, a half. This, this is when this is when <sighs> uh, you know, the lawyer goes, "Gee, paralegal sucks to be you tonight, doesn't it?" Uh, <laughs> poor poor people have to do these things. This is just sad. Yeah. Watch Doreen. So what I ask Mr. Shockett is, how about a deadline of tomorrow? <laughs> She's just like, oh God. Oh God. <laughs> She's shaking her head like, like, did I hear that right? Shake it off, Doreen. They're doing the cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Six a.m. Six a.m. She goes six a.m. <laughs> I don't want sleep. Friday, March one. So, here's the other issue, and again, counsel, if you all need to consult, the Ugh. court, in reasonable anticipation that ultimately a continuance is granted, it has to be continued to a certain date, because otherwise, Mr. Hales has a temporary injunction without a without an end date. Which could potentially be the consequence, quite oh frankly, God. if we're calling it a continuance in deference to the first DCA, if they're going to review up until now the proceedings. Um, it's not predictable in terms of the outcome, in terms of time frame. But if the temporary, if it's conditioned upon the temporary remaining through that, so that we could reboot this court or successor court. Um, we've got we've got to have a date. It How about be, a ninety day status conference by Zoom? Because he's going to be out of state by then. The Ohio. problem is service. If he's not oh serve okay here. you're right. Um, okay that's fine. If he if he if he has a date, if you need to talk about if he's got a date that he knows he would otherwise be here and we're if we go here's the thing if we go out ninety and we get a ruling from the DCA and. Oh, 20 or 30 so, yeah. days you move to advance it we come we come back to court we hold a status conference and we, we agree on another date but well, we there's got to be a placeholder otherwise it's really until further order of the court it's and almost and like a shock day would be more preferential sorry, <laughs> if you want to consider that we can do until further order of the court which gets us to the same place which is upon resolution of any matters in the appellate review oh that would be fine that would be better rather than to play with dates if we could and do why that. don't I we want, just I call that i did i just did he, he said he, he could come back if he had to there's no dates that definite that he's going to be back so your honor i think just so everybody is clear that if the dca were to deny the petition for writ of prohibition well either way right whether it's your honor or another judge presiding over this case we would have to have a status for two purposes. One would be to reset all the motions that were going to be heard this afternoon, as we can't advance to a final hearing without rulings on those. Correct. And the second would be to um, reset the final hearing. Correct. Right? Uh, which also raises another issue, which is if they don't file by Friday morning at 6 o'clock and we have a final hearing without the motions that are set for today being resolved, not that I'm trying to throw more of a monkey wrench into it, but. I can tell it's going to be done. It's going to yeah. be done. I can tell you the consequence of that would be that we would start the proceedings on Friday with hearing the motions. I'm okay with that. And um, you won't, won't. I think you all want to avoid that consequence. Um, and so, if in fact, Mr. Hales, my, my my inquiry again is not with intention that you're going to violate the terms, but just that you understand what the terms are. Um, I'm just going to ask you a couple brief questions about moving forward that you've got a full understanding of the consequences. All right, you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony of 
provide to the court will be the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, Mr. Howells, you've, you've, you've been present, I know, for the proceedings. You've been hearing what's going on? Yes. And you understand what's going on? Yes. With regards <laughs> to whether we're calling it a continuance it. or stay, effectively the case is going to be continued. It's premised upon by 6 o'clock Friday, March 1st, that morning, a petition seeking review in the appellate court of prior rulings of this court will be filed upon that filing. The final hearing for Friday that's already scheduled will be continued to a later date, that date to be determined. Do you understand that? Yes. Uh, no, could you repeat that I've again? expressed concern about the continuances, whether it's on you and with good cause or on the petitioner with good cause. The court has found good cause for each of those continuances. Um, I've expressed my reluctance here today. I'm granting it based on the representations to, to, and to not deny you opportunity for review of the appellate court through the petition for writ process. We have to await that outcome. My intention <laughs> would be or my inclination would be to await the outcome. Your attorney or the other attorney could always bring it back because the order of continuance and the condition that the temporary injunction with the conditions that are currently in place will remain until further order of the court. The expectation is once that court rules, we'll have a status conference, we'll get re regroup, we'll agree on a final date. And, and again, I'll hear from you at that time, but I'm inclined at that time to then change the until further order of court to Because it's ultimately date, his decision. He wants date. to make sure so that, that he understands the ramifications of his decision. He needs to get it under oath. I think he also likes talking to him and confusing him as to whether he can talk back or not. <laughs> <laughs> that, that too. It's really clear there's on everybody. That. And, and there's also the, the whole aspect of th these are Jeremy's rights that have been deprived. His right mm -hmm. to free speech, his right to own guns, his right to uh, access and ingress and egress off his property, the right to due process, the right to a speedy trial. So he, that's, I think... It's a devious, devious, devious way of going about things. But he's like, you know, I deprived you of five uh, of the 10 constitutional amendments. And I, I'm trying to get a sixth one. I just can't really fit it right into my schedule right now. <laughs> so I just want to make sure you understand that you, the deprivation of constitutional amendments yeah. are being waived by you. And you agree to this. You agree to my um, draconian ruling. Yes. But of course, he has no choice. <laughs> Exactly, it has to agree. It's a Hobson's because, choice. That's a yeah. Hobson's choice. They're right there. Is uh, take it all or nothing, and there is mm -hmm. no. It, 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 is is a Hobson's choice no choice at all? I forget. There's another. Maybe there's another one. There's a Sophie's choice. There's a Hobson's choice. Which one is the? You, you don't really have a choice. I give that's you the Hobson's choice. It's that's, the Hobson's, that's the Hobson's choice. choice. It, it's okay. the it's the appearance of a of free choice when there really isn't any. When choice. there really isn't. Yeah. When there really isn't any. Like if yep. he, he, you know what else is it should have been, and I don't know if it is in the writ of prohibition, but it might have been. I read it, but I don't remember. One of the worst things this judge said to Jeremy in maybe it was hearing number two. He said, "If you want speedy justice, or something like that." You're not going to get it here. <laughs> like he basically said to him, you are not going to get your day in court quickly in this courtroom. If you want this to be fast, which is which he's entitled to. He's literally entitled to a speedy hearing, speedy justice. Like and the judge is all, you know, you're going to end up in appellate court. You can take it all the way. And so he knew this was coming. Like he predicted that this was going to be a big, huge. He was going to force his attorneys into appellate court. I think that that's a real problem. Yep. Sorry. Part. I messed with your thing. Finality, but there's a little bit of uncertainty in how long the appellate court review process may take. You understand that. Okay, so that's a warning. You understand that my deprivation of your five constitutional rights may take months before they're actually lifted, and they may never be lifted once once I rule against you if I stay on this case. That's like a double warning. Zinni. All right, let's keep going. Yes. You feel like you had an adequate opportunity to discuss with your counsel the decision here today. Yes. And you're willing to accept those conditions. Yes. Your Honor, I would ask the court to inquire specifically about the uh, condition on my client's agreement to a continuance or delay in the proceedings, specifically that if there is a successor judge appointed in this case, if the writ of prohibition were to be issued, that Mr. Hales is waiving his right to have that successor judge 
readdress the issue of the temporary, and the temporary will remain in effect until the final hearing in this case. So in effect, you'd be waiving your ability to seek a modification of that portion of the order, which would be to terminate or to exclude you from being under that temporary injunctive relief. You, do you agree to that? I did not hear you say the words until the final hearing. Uh, until the final hearing. If you would re please repeat that with that phrase. Oh. Okay, hang on. I want to make sure that you understand it. So what, what's being asked is that Sorry, I, I, I had to, my I, cat got a hold of uh, my girlfriend's uh, contact lens case and she knocked oh, it no. off and she's been playing oh, with no. it. So I had to run. Uh, I just want to rewind like 30 seconds if you guys don't mind. Yeah, no, no, no this ahead. is very, this is very good right This here. is like, Jeremy just was like, excuse me, can you repeat that? Because I'm not understanding. That's no, a he's, very smart no, move. He said no, he you actually, didn't say the magic You didn't word. say the magic he, words he, and I will not. He's fire here really. Jeremy's I won't agree until you do. I'm load on him. Let's see this. To terminate or to exclude you from being under that temporary injunctive relief. You, do you agree to that? I did not hear you say the words until the final hearing. Uh, until the final hearing. If you would re please repeat that with that phrase. Oh, okay, hang on. So I want that's, to make sure that's you That's really risky so to just do what, that. What's being asked is that you're waiving your ability. Another judge comes in. Your way or me, I guess if I remain, but either way, you're waiving your ability to seek termination of the temporary injunction pending that final hearing date that's going to be set. Yes. I don't blame him for asking him to repeat it me and neither. to say it with the because no. this judge, do, this judge is not trustworthy. So if he's saying, well, I'm not going to agree to you saying that you're waiving your ability to fight this injunction. If he left off the important phrase until the final hearing, oh, I he don't doesn't want to be on the record saying that. I agree saying, to that. I'm just saying with this judge and his temperament and the way he thinks about him, that was playing with fire. And the, the judge, the judge kind of backed off a bit. I was surprised. He, the judge decided in his mind that this was a teaching moment and he loves to teach people things. Yes. So he, so he decided to become the, the professor and be all, so just so you understand, Jeremy understands everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. No, he's and, he's playing the uh, the judge as a fiddle, and the judge failed to recognize it. And good for him, good mm -hmm. for Jeremy. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that resolves things here for today, um, Madam Clerk. We're just going to do an extended injunction, same conditions. It's just going to change the language from today's date expiration to until further order of the court. And again, Mr. Hales, you could discuss this with your counsel until further order of the court literally means until either side brings it back. If you bring it back, we'll advise them. If they bring it back, we'll advise you. Chances are the condition precedent that's going to bring us all back to court is the district court, if that's your intent. Who says condition precedent? It's condition precedent, you monkey. Who says condition <laughs> precedent? Chat, shout out in, in oh, sorry, vices. Well, we, we also have Vordire out in Utah, so. Vordire? Vordire. Yeah. Vordire. I mean, Vordire. So no, I've heard yeah. both. No, Vordire, Vordire, I really, we use synonymous, but yeah. condition precedent? I mean, precedent is something that, you know, court has precedent. A condition has something preceding it, so condition prece precedent. That's how I always chat. It's, it, it, type a one in the chat if you use condition precedent, or if you're like vices and you use condition <laughs> precedent, you use two. So like one that. or two condition precedent. I don't think I've ever heard that phrase, so I wouldn't have an answer to that. It's a I legal term of art. If I saw it in a in written down, I might say precedent because precedent, but although they do have separate meanings, right? No, it's is the same it, same thing. Condition same. precedent, con condition precedent is just a way to pronounce it. Legally Live says two, so she used condition precedent. Um, Chad is very divided. This, somebody put in zero, 69. Yeah. 69. 15 minutes. 15 <laughs> minutes. I have oh, never heard condition precedent in my life. Yeah, it, from the word Proceed like it. I, want, I, want I, I understand thing. that. Yeah, I, I don't know. Regional yeah. thing. MG Law. Wow. I guess I'm in yeah. a minority of lawyers at least because already vices, MG Law, and Legally Live are all in the opposite camp, which is fascinating. 
Chris Rollins just got all the bases covered. <laughs> yeah. One, two. So one, I have used condition precedent. <laughs> two, I use condition precedent. 42, which is the answer to the universe. 69, 69. Giggity, giggity goo. And 420, blaze it up. I love it. I love it. Um, you left off 21, 12. One way or the other. And then if, if, it's, if it's up to me, we would have an expedited status conference. Um, I have no problem having that conference in anticipation that you may not be here of doing it sooner than later and doing it by Zoom video if it needs to be, simply to, to set that next date. And then we can modify the temporary injunction to a final date of that final hearing um, to accommodate what really is intended to avoid what could possibly be, even though the court has a different view, but I understand there's different view from counsel. Um, that there won't be a need to revisit and reconsider any rulings of this court, but to avoid that possibility, it's this court's finding that that would be good and sufficient cause for the remedy that we're, we're imposing here today, which is continuing this matter subject to those conditions. Okay. Thank, you, Joe. Thank you, Your Honor. One is, I, I do want to be clear that my client's agreement to a continuance under the conditions we have discussed should in no way be interpreted by this court that side of the aisle or anybody else, including the DCA, as any kind of concession that my client believes that the motions for disqualification had any merit. Uh, the second thing I would point out is, is that just so we're all on the same page, my understanding is that if there is not a petition for writ filed with the first DCA by 6 a.m. on Friday, March 1st, that we are proceeding to first discovery matters and then an evidentiary hearing in this case on Friday because the court's issuing a new order I don't know whether that technically supersedes the prior notice. I don't want there to be any argument that we are not all required to be here Friday morning at 9 a.m. if that petition for writ is not filed. I want that to be clear on the record. It's very clear, and the petition will be filed by 6 a.m. I can, unless absent the nuclear what happened? argument that we are not all required to be here it's Friday playing, morning at 9 a.m. No video. If that petition for writ is not That's filed. That's weird. I want that to be clear it, on the record. Like the time it, it's very clear, record. and the petition will be filed by 6 a.m. I can. Oh, uh, it must be the court's recording. We are not all required to be here. Yeah. Friday morning so it's, at 9 is it just, okay, wait, is, is it looping? Hmm. No, no, no. I, I went back. I went back oh, because it oh, froze. Okay. I just want to make sure because if it keeps playing, I don't know if it just like it picks up where it suddenly picks up again, or does it actually play that portion of the video? So I yeah. just went back. I want that to be clear on the record. It, it's very clear and the petition will be filed by 6 a.m. I can, unless absent a nuclear war or something, it'll be Poor Dory. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Hales, you understand that ultimately it's, it's another obligation you and your counsel have, everybody does, which is to be here Friday morning, but you'll know from your counsel and um, they can copy you with it's the like, Yeah, can we wrap this up so she can morning, file this motion, please? A petition for writ is filed that will relieve your ability, your responsibility to be in court. Yes. And you, and you can go about your business. Oh, well, thank you, Judge. Right, I think we've got some clarification. Let me um, just review this written okay. order here. Let me take a quick break, Judge, while we're waiting. Yeah, yeah, we'll stand at okay. ease. We're at 2.30. We'll just go off record for a moment. Thank you. All right, now the rest yeah. of it, it's only a two-minute clip after this, so he just basically adjourns everything. There's nothing we're missing in, in the second part. It's only two minutes. Wow. Oh, okay, so this is the entirety of the hearing, basically. Basically, yeah. The, the next one, I mean, I can pull it up if you want, but it's just two minutes of wandering around the courtroom and then mm -hmm. adjourning. Yeah, sure. Pull it up. Let's All let's right. finish it up. <laughs> let's watch them wander around the courtroom. Let's. Watch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, right, we've already see. watched Judge the Thomases wander around the courtroom for fifty minutes. I think two more. <laughs> it's not gonna kill anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Megan finally got it. I was waiting for a reaction. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. So there it is. Let's remove this one. And here's the next one. All right. We're back on record. It's two thirty-four. Let me just bring to your attention. On the addendum section, since the addendum was not part of the form and previously included language that the court um, typed out but then wrote in the date in January. Let me read it to you. Okay. It previously read above conditions to remain through 3 1 in anticipation of Friday being the final hearing. 
I've just delineated in there by handwriting and then signed it, second amended until further order of the court consistent with extension of this order, today's date, 228-24. So the addendum likewise is continued as part, it's part and parcel of what's now entitled the fourth extended injunction. Okay, we gotta get back to the computer, so. <laughs> All right, so um, other than uh, providing uh, each party with the copy, is there anything further on behalf of the respondent? No, Your Honor. On behalf of the petitioner? Uh, I'm gonna just repeat the request I made off the record, uh, on the record, which is I'm gonna ask uh, Bailiff to have a deputy escort my client to her car, watch her get in oh, the vehicle and drive away. Since there have been allegations by both sides of potential violations in and around the courthouse, I just want it to be abundantly clear there's no Nothing unusual going on, so. Oh, nothing unusual going on. The fact that he has to say those okay. words. Yeah. See, nothing um, unusual other than the bailiff escorting someone out to their car. That's, that's the only unusual. Yeah. That's, that's just All right, that's, we'll stand that's another slimy thing to do. If he needs an escort, he can just ask Lynette. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> Bada boom. Psh. I'll be here all night, folks. <laughs> Is that it? So now we're wandering around the courtroom. Yeah, that's it. Adjourned. So the only information we picked up there is that someone's get that Lynette's getting an escort to her car because she's terrified of uh I don't know, lawyers and Jeremy Hales. I Lions and Tigers and Bears. Oh my. Lawyers and tigers and bears. Oh my. I don't know. I mean this 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 is so this is so crazy this case. This is so crazy. And if the judge thinks that he did anything in this in this hearing to alleviate our fears that he's biased, uh yeah, he's wrong. <laughs> didn't help, didn't help at all, sir. Actually made it worse. Yeah. That was that this is this is just I, I have no words. I have no words. And I, I want to show this again to the chat for those of you who may just be joining us. Um Wow. 15, 15 minutes, 15 days. 15 is literally like the theme of this case. It is. Any ex parte temporary injunction shall be fixed for a period no more than 15 days. So by even by asking Jeremy that this temporary injunction, he could have just lifted it. He could have just said, look, I'm going to lift it because this case may take nine months, 10 months, a year for the Court of Appeals to, to rule. But no, no, I am going to violate... Florida statute, there it is, uh, 784.04855C shall not exceed 15 days. It now be maybe 15 months. You know, I don't want to jinx it, but we just went from minutes to days to months. We have no idea how long the appellate court is going to take, and Jeremy had to agree to a lot to keep the injunction until there's some decision there and there's no, there's no telling how long that will take. Here's a tweet for you, uh, Megan, you can steal this 15 minute Mark feather, 15 hours to write a writ of prohibition, 15, 15. days, which is a maximum for an injunction and 15 months for the court of appeals to rule. How's yeah. How about oh, that for a tweet? God, It's terrible. It could be 15 months. It, yep. it honestly could be. You don't know what kind of case review or cases they have to review and what the caseload is like at the appellate level right now. And you think they're going to be all that concerned about this temporary injunction bias judge thing? Like, I, I don't know. I've done appeals. I've done two and now we're actually, no, I shouldn't say that. I've done one more than two. I've done two solo. We've done like one, two, three, four, five, seven as a firm. So about nine appeals that we've done two when I was a solo and I can speak from experience. Um, the Court of Appeals of Kentucky took somewhere between 12 and 15 months to rule on one. The other one took way longer because we first we appealed to the Kentucky Court of Appeals. No, sorry, 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 sorry. No, this was a federal case. The second one was a federal case. So the Kentucky Court of Appeals took somewhere between 12 to 15 months to rule on my first case when I was a solo. And the second one... Uh, it was a federal case filed in federal court. It was a 1983 action. A cop killed my client. And um, the the court of 
the, the lower level, the district court level on the federal level in the uh, Western District of Kentucky, uh, the judge granted a, a motion for summary judgment for the defense, which was the, the police officer of the station and the chief that named parties and a bunch of John Doe's. And we appealed it to the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. Yes, because that is where you go. Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals, which is located in Cincinnati, where actually I, I was for the first time in my life, I was one notch below the United States Supreme Court. That was really kind of cool, um, which, by the way, I'm still trying to get uh, I'm trying to get my licensure to to be a, a, a litigant in the United States Supreme Court. I had an opportunity many years ago, but unfortunately I couldn't take it because uh, you have to be practicing for five years. I'll talk about it in just a second, but let me finish this thought first. So the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals also took like a year and a half. It's very common. This is normal stuff. It's not, and, and of course they denied. And the, the next place we could we should have appealed to would have been the United States Supreme Court, but they rarely, they would have not granted Sergio Herrera. And I told my client that, but we're not even going to mess with it because the United States Supreme Court is one of the only courts in the world that can actually determine, uh, yeah, we don't want to hear this case, so fuck off. And the, they literally, it's called, we do not grant Sergio Herrera. Mm -hmm. That's it's a term of mm -hmm. art. And you're like, you're out of luck, even though you may have a fantastic case, fantastic legal issues, but they're like, take a hike and you're done. Um, but yeah, I, I was, I was in my third or fourth year of practice and I needed to be, have a minimum of five and I had an opportunity. It's very difficult by the way, uh, folks who may not know this, um, including Megan and vices. I don't know if you guys know this to get, uh, cause I've seen the application process cause I was going to try and do it, uh, in order to become a, uh, so like hanging in my office, I have my Kentucky, I have my like uh, college diploma. I have mm -hmm. my, um, I have my, uh, JD, you know, your juris doctor, when you graduate law school vices, I'm sure has the same thing. Yeah. You know, you get your, your certification, uh, once you're admitted to the bar in whatever state you're barred in. So you get that certificate I have my Kentucky bar license. And then when you get admitted to like federal courts, each federal court you get admitted to, it is, it is a bullshit process. You know what it is? You submit a $200 or $300 mm -hmm. or $400 application fee, and they send you a piece of paper saying, congratulations. Yep. Like, that's it. That's literally, once you're at that level, it's they just want money. And so I have my Western District of Kentucky and Eastern District of Kentucky. So I have both because I practice in both. And there is no middle. You know, we're, we're small enough to where we can divide our, our state literally down the middle in half. So you have the Western and Eastern. Uh, Florida, as you may know, we have they have Northern, Middle, and Southern. And I think California has like a, a bunch, but Texas has a bunch. You get it. And then the United States Supreme Court application process. Oh, Sixth Circuit, by the way. Sixth Circuit, same thing. If you want to practice in the Fifth Circuit, the Third Circuit, the Second Circuit, you just send an application fee. Boom. Diploma. Congratulations. You get, you're admitted to practice in the Sixth Circuit. If you want to practice in the United States of America, Supreme Court of the United States, uh, you have to submit an application process that is signed not by one. For most of these, you just need one person who is admitted to the practice in that circuit that will vouch for you. Yes, they're a good person. I am also admitted. I, you can trust them. Bring them in, which is really bizarre. I don't know why they would do that, but whatever. Um, that is part of the process. But for the United States Supreme Court, for SCOTUS, you have to have not one. You have to have two. You have to have two SCOTUS admitted uh, lawyers who are admitted to argue before the United States Supreme Court. And here's the, here's the sticky. This is the funnest part of all. It is a very, very, very exclusive club. We're talking like Ivy Leaguers, you know, Harvard, Yale, uh, Princeton, you know, uh, all these like Ivy League schools, top three, top five schools, law schools in the country. It, it, there's like 15 lawyers, maybe even less. Maybe it's like 12 lawyers. And even if you have a case, you just basically hire one of these lawyers and they argue before the nine justices. It's fascinating. It is a very, it's a good old boys club, like literally. And even if you get like a SCOTUS license, good luck. If they set it for your case for oral argument, good luck getting in front of the judges to, because they're going to be like, no, we, we basically, I don't know. Like, we don't want you. We want somebody else. Or <laughs> We I, don't, I don't know. know you. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know you. We don't like you. So, you know, <laughs> go, go take a hike. Uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know how it works, but I know it's a very exclusive club. Joining it is, is complicated enough. Uh, you have to have two that are already barred by SCOTUS to sign off on you. And you have to go to a special hearing, not special hearing, a special ceremony in D.C. in order to be admitted. 
Are there are there people in black robes and small children crying at these ceremonies? I know people in black black robes. Oh, I don't know about small children. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we'll have lots of blood and semen. Oh, good. Oh, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, there are black robes. <laughs> there are black robes. <laughs> Hi, babe. Is there candlelight and like weird mm. pentagrams on the floor at these things? I don't know. George Bush may make an appearance. You know, senior, <laughs> not junior. Yeah, yeah senior. The, the owl in the ring or whatever the hell. Yeah. What was he part summon of? The, what was... Summon the ghost of Thurgood Marshall. What was George Bush's fraternity again that everyone talks about? The the the, the secret Skull, fraternity? Skull and Bones? Skull and, Skull and Bones. Bones. Is it yes. a Skull and Bones event? I've never been. Uh, I am trying to get um, so the American Association for Justice, which is the national plaintiffs uh, organization, plaintiffs lawyer organization. Uh, like I said, this was oh my god, three years. It was 2016. In 2016 or 2017, right when I was at the three four year mark, which was not enough. You have to have a minimum five. And I tried to like can I squeeze myself in? And they're like, no, you cannot, no exceptions, five years. And I'm like, well, I'm fine. And then I kind of stopped being a member. I stopped going to events as much and I kind of dipped out. So uh, they probably do it every year. I just it best never to got get out before they, mm. best to get out before they invite you to the Bohemian Grove. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I just, oh, Megan, all I want is I want the diploma, the, uh, the, the license to practice yeah. law in the Supreme Court of the United States. I think that is like dope as shit. And I would really love to, to be able to do that. But uh, so far, no dice. And again, it, it's all my fault. I didn't, it's not like I, uh, I've i been denied or anything crazy. I just, I haven't taken proactive steps. I, I did email somebody not that long ago and they probably checked like this, this asshole is not a member. I don't know why he's emailing me. So <laughs> I don't know. So just some fun facts for you all. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, all right. I gotta <laughs> run soon. I gotta. Go. I well, have to it, go. It is one a.m. here, and my blood pressure. I do have to work. Like, I just, I just love like getting my blood pressure up at one o'clock in the morning. I'm just checking to see if I smell because my all my guests are like, well, we're done with the hearing, so well, I'm out. We have to go. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You guys go no, do your it's... thing. I'm gonna read super chats anyway. There's like, oh my god, there's 84. I wonder how oh, many good. of them. Make are sure millions. you read. Make sure you read mine. <laughs> I, I will they have the little the, the little link the little link the, yeah. the gray link on top of it and i will call out every single one this is not my money <laughs> somebody needs to keep oh my god okay chat we're gonna have some fun with especially since megan's not gonna be here and, and i'm gonna her in her absence. <laughs> here's what we're gonna do i want you guys to calculate somebody grab a calculator right now or a piece of paper or a pan and like a notepad whatever you want we're gonna calculate how much money i'm gonna read I'm gonna I'm gonna call them out because I see them. I don't know if you guys because can you can chat see the difference between this and this? No, they can't. <laughs> That's why you didn't figure it out. It's it's That's on my, it's on my screen. It it's on my screen, but it's not on your screen. Mm -hmm. uh, on on mm -hmm. the public screen. I want people to calculate how <laughs> many how much money did I make Megan today? Somebody calculate. I'm gonna try and keep keep tabs in my head, but. <laughs> to be fair, though, I was here the whole time, so I contributed that to that. that in, is true. in the case of, in my case, you weren't even there, Mary. <laughs> Mary, Mary, math is scary. No math allowed. <laughs> uh, well, well, oh. well, we'll let you two kids have your little, have your fun little, your little summer camp fight. Yeah, I got to take my little nap before I do my morning thing here. So. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds like you're Thank doing you. more than a nap, Vice, is an eight hour nap. Yeah, hope, well, hopefully. We'll All right, you guys. Thanks for joining. Good this night, has been a Jeff. lot of fun. Take care, guys. See you, Larry. I got to go, too, because I got to get to my work. Uh, I got I got work to do today. I still have to. I'm going to try and record an episode of my podcast, which I said was a daily podcast, wah. but isn't really. This is me like, this is a tears <laughs> coming out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> But have fun. No, thanks for joining. Honestly, have fun it's been a reading lot of fun. all those super chats. Have fun. I will. I will. And I, I will. I will have a tally, and then I'll like. I'll DM you. Send me like, the bill. This is how much money you have made. I have made you today. <laughs> Send me the bill. I'll make sure I Venmo to it. To Venmo you later. I, I will. I will Venmo you. No, I please don't. Please, for the love of God, don't do it. Please. No, don't. I don't plan. I don't plan on it. You have a Lambo. Okay. I Good. don't plan on it. That's true. I'm about to take her out of the garage. It's going to warm up in a couple of weeks, so it's going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can do without my 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 piddly super chats today. 
<laughs> okay, you guys don't go anywhere. We're gonna be we're gonna be reading super chats and answering all your all's all questions. Right. So bye, See Megan. Ya. Bye bye. All right. Now it's just moi. Just you're stuck with me. Uh, speaking of, by the way, you're not just stuck with me. Where is Mo at? Oh, Mo is at 2.16. Look at that. Two, we just netted her like 600, 700 subscribers live on stream. I love this. I, this is why I love this community. We're all about, you know, we're all about growth. We're all about supporting other content creators. We're all about, at least I am. I don't know if everybody's like me, but I'm all about letting other channels grow and, and be, you know, be noticed and recognized because he, at the end of the day, here's how I look at it. Um, and this is where I think a lot of YouTubers and maybe law tubers get it wrong. And again, just my opinion, feel free to call me out on this chat. Here's how I see it. If, if there was like a, a pool, right? A pool of 100 people and everybody's going, and this is a metaphorical pool. This is a pool of a hundred people. And if you subscribe to this channel, like channel a, we're just going to call them channel a, B, C, D, and E. Okay. There's five channels pool of a hundred people. And they're all divided equally. Channels A through E have uh, uh, 20 subscribers each, right? 20, 20, 20, and 20. Okay, this is a metaphorical, this is a metaphor. This is an analogy. And 20 people here, 20 people here. Now, let's say channel C all of a sudden siphons off. They, they, they break the story of the century. And now they're siphoning off. And now channel A and B and D and E now are down to 15 people. And channel C is now the one growing. They're the ones with like 40, right? They have 40, 15, 15, 40, 15, and 15. That is not how YouTube works. That is not how YouTube works. There's not a finite number of people. You can be subscribed. One person can be su subscribed to 100 channels, to 1,000 channels, to 10,000 channels. So people I like, people I like, people that I am... Um, uh, fond of, I, I share the wealth. We, we, we rated Danny last night. We rated MG law. We've rated Megan before we've rated tug tug rated me last night. I, I, I just, I don't understand why, why the, 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 what is it called? Uh, the greed, this is not money you are lusting after. You are simply lusting after like a pure is to me again, my, my personal opinion, pure stupidity. Because you don't understand how the YouTube, uh, alg not even algorithm. By the way, there is no such thing as a YouTube algorithm. Do you know what? It's like soil and green, right? <laughs> the YouTube algorithm is people. I actually learned that the other day and I was like, huh, what do the people want to see? What do they want to watch? If they're going to go like, you know, they, they watch my channel and then they're like, yeah, this guy's okay. And then I, I send them all off to Tug's channel and they go, yeah, fuck that Larry guy. Tug is way funnier than him. That's fine. I have accomplished my goal. I have found somebody that the viewer enjoys watching. They don't like my content. They like Tug's or they like Megan's better or MG Law or Lively Legally Live. My goal is still accomplished. I have funneled their interest in the direction that they like. How is that a loss? So, okay, I lost one subscriber. But somebody else gained a subscriber, and now this subscriber is, is channeled to content that they enjoy because they're like, fuck the UI guy. I like Tug. My mission is done here. Where's the problem? Why be greedy? Why be greedy and be like, no, no, no. I want all the sub Give me the subscribers. You know, you sound like the Grinch when you do that. I don't understand that. I don't understand why people do that. And again, I, I, I think somebody just said we are in a minority. Um, you're right, Larry. We are a minority because I'm a fan of big community that if they, they learn uh, uh, learn of us would flood the topic because of its nature, but it's not well covered. Hatsune Vimiku is, is now you, you, you're also like one of my faves. Um, you, you, you bring a lot of truth to the table. So I, I am, uh, I'm very interested. I'm very interested to see how, yeah, I'm all about share the love. Like why I don't get why be greedy. If it, even if, um, I think at the end of the day, everybody wins. That's that's the problem where I think most people misunderstand. Everybody wins. Okay. This was this was not a squirrel topic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm gonna copyright strike you for this take. <laughs> that's hilarious. I love that. No, no, this is not a squirrel. This is me getting on my soapbox. This is me getting on my soapbox. Okay. I'll I'll read the super chats in a second. They're not going anywhere. Look at that. Mo at the deep end is already at 2.2 almost. Come on, almost there. 
2.2. Oh, this is fantastic. This is fantastic. Okay. All right. Let's get to some super chats. Tug is that umbrella guy. Yeah, it's a win-win-win. Everybody wins. There is no loser. Like I said, it's not a finite number. I mean, do you know how many people watch YouTube every day? Probably billions of views. Billions with a B across like, you know, millions of channels, multi-millions of channels and millions and millions of people, if not billions of people. So it's infinite. It's infinite. So anyway, all right. Um, Let's see. Nancy McCain says, Gavel says turtle price. Oh, in that little meme that we shared? Okay. Gavel says turtle price. Legit, legit. Um, it's hard to tell because it was kind of like, it was really weird. Um, it was really bizarre. Because AI just butchers everything. Judge drinks turtle juice. Yes, he does. Okay, here we go. So this is Megan's, all right? For those of you keeping track, this is a $3 super chat for Megan Fallen Hero. That's three, okay? Mark, mark it zero <laughs> for DUI guy. Mark it three. That was a big Lebowski reference for those of you who may not know. Uh, mark it three for Megan. So that's three. I will call them out, okay? If, if I don't call it out, don't, don't, don't write anything. So far, we have three. Uh, Pepper NC says, how can one look up court dockets after reading uh, what the Hales community post this morning, wondering if the Ohio court has a date uh, to charge Ms. Nasty and Crook with violating the Ohio protective order, I would wait for the Hales' video. And then at 5.30, I'm sure it will all will be revealed. I know you guys are impatient, but let Jeremy do his thing. I'm sure he's going to. He's not going to hide information from you. It, it. I hope it's not clickbait. I hope it's not pure clickbait, although I, I love Jeremy. I, I clickbait too. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, clickbaiting is fun, especially if you really got something, but it's like not maybe not 100%, 100%, but you want to drive viewership to your channel. Fuck all. Uh, clickbait is 100% fine by me. Like I said, I, I do it from time to time. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay. Uh, Storm and Beer, uh, the Bouviers de Flandre. Thank you very much for the three euros. Uh, here's another Megan super chat. Uh, so that's five. That's at eight. Now, Sarah Joy, I made the judge design you had on there. Oh, you did that, Sarah Joy. No shit. You made this one. Jeremy and George memes. We found the, we found the author, you guys. We found the author of this meme. <laughs> we found the author. Sarah Joy, I made the judge design you had on there. That's the only one I shared today, so I know which one, which one it was. Um, <laughs> lawyer math. Here we go, people. Sarah Joy, shout. Yep, there she is. Yes. Oh, that is awesome. That is so cool. Thank you, Sarah. That is beautiful. This is beautiful. Okay, so that's eight for Megan. Uh, what are 10,000 Korean wakaruskis? <laughs> I, I don't know how to add that. Um, is it not yen? 10,000 Korean won. Won to US dollars. So that's 750. Oh man, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna round up. We're gonna round it up to eight. Okay. Cause I just can't, uh, we're not gonna have sense in here. Or are we? No, no, for the most part, we're not. They're even numbers, right? So let's call it eight. So eight plus eight. Now that's 16. Legal vices. Can you afford this? How did I miss that? That's impressive. That is good. That is, she got me good. Uh, so that's 16 now. This is also Megan's. Uh, Tracy Fagan says, uh, see, I've been saying toothbrush every time we watch this. Yep, exactly. Now we're at 21. So 21. Uh, Sarah Adams, this is also Megan's. 23. Larry, do you hate the West Coast? Hard start at six. Listen, I, I, I have, uh, I had a lunch at noon, I moved it to 2 p.m. because uh, it's noon right now. I don't know if they're gonna be able to make it, uh, but I hope that they will because I want to have the lunch, but I just can't make it at noon because literally my lunch would start in less than 60 seconds because it's noon here on the on the uh, East Coast. So I had to bump it another couple hours. 
So I don't hate it, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, this one was not a super chat, but I, I highlighted it because I wanted to read it from Legally Live. She says, I ran against the judge because she threw a defense attorney in jail for 180 days. I do not like that. Whoa. I do not like that. Not one bit. What? We're going to have to talk about this. Okay, squid pro quo. All right, you, you do the math. I, I'm just my my brain is is very math oriented. So I'm I'm the exception to the lawyer rule. You know, they say like lawyers can't do math. Unfortunately, I'm very good at it. So I love math. I'm a nerd. I'm I'm a I'm a fucking dork, and I I, you know, but 180 days. We're gonna have to talk. I don't think I don't think she's here anymore she probably left i'm sure she's got things i mean it's three it's a three hour stream i i totally get it she's probably got work to do but legally live we're gonna have to talk about this a judge threw an attorney in jail for 180 days that's fucked yeah what did they do i want to know what they did hey baby oh are you finally feeling better <laughs> oh there he is Th there she is sorry She's still here. She's still here. Uh, he only ended up doing 60 or... That's not... That's still two months in jail. What? Oh, my God. We're going to have to talk off stream. This is crazy. This is insane. Uh, judge rules all Fanny to recuse herself from the case. Oh, yes. I saw that tweet. I saw that. Um... I'm going to retweet it real quick just so that I can show you guys on the on my screen. Check this out. Check this shit out. I was going to talk about it, but I didn't want to um, interrupt the the flow. But now that it's just us here, breaking, uh, this was this morning, by the way. This was uh, 9.05, right when we started the stream. Um, et tu, Brute? Not only was Caesar assassinated on the Ides of March, but uh, DA Fannie Willis and her entire staff have been metaphorically assassinated from the Trump case. That how's how about that for a tweet? Not only was Caesar assassinated on uh the Ides of March, March 15th, but DA Fannie Willis and her entire staff have been metaphorically assassinated from the Trump case. Wow. Wow. Absolutely legit. Absolutely legit. Uh I didn't really follow that case that closely, but um I, I think it's probably a good decision. I heard some things about it. I heard some things about it. So uh, what do you all think? Is that a, is that a good decision that uh, that she has to recuse herself? Fanny and her entire staff have to recuse themselves from the case and remove themselves. S type one in the chat if you think it's a good decision. Type two if you think it's a bad decision. Yeah, it's from Benny Johnson. He's the one who wrote that. Read the order? I mean, it's it's like 29 pages, man. You really want me to read it like on stream right now? It's enormous. Maybe I'll have to do a separate stream for that. Um, unless you guys really want me to. People are saying it's, it's a good decision overall. I see a lot of ones, a few twos here and there. Okay, um, how about this? Because we're never going to get through the super chats. Um, let me just check if my lunch has been successfully moved or not. No, we're going to reschedule for another day. Okay, perfect. You know what? You guys, uh fuck it. Let's make this let's make this a full day stream. Why the fuck not? Uh I've been checking messages. Uh, I do have a client who may be under threat of arrest. So, I will have to step away for a little bit if he is like um potentially um going to get arrested. I cannot disclose who that is, 
but uh, obviously attorney-client confidentiality. But if they message me and you see me like BRB, you know what I'm doing. Um, so if you all want, after I'm done reading the super chats, type three in the chat. Type three if you want me to go over the order. Uh, and it's it's long. It's it's like 29 pages. Type three if you want me to go over it. And type four if you're like, now nah, let's do it another, let's do it another day, another stream. So three if you want me to go over the order. Four if you're like, nah, fuck it, let's do it another day. Because this is fresh. This is hot off the press. This is hot off the press. A lot of threes, a few fours. Somebody decided to, to, to type a five. MG Law is still stuck on 69. Uh, <laughs> just because you have to go, that's not a reason. Okay, threes win. All right, we're going to do it. Let me go through these real quick then. Oh, my girlfriend is so good. She's like, well, since you're not going to lunch, um, and my stomach just growled, since you're not going to lunch, she's going to, I hope, I, hold on one second. Okay. All right. We are back. Sorry about that. Just had a, a quick convo with the Bay. Um, and I took my headphones out because we are not co-streaming with anyone. So let's keep going. Uh, I think there's a way, isn't there a way to like cut the recording? I remember what's his name? Uh, Andy. Andy was telling me there's a way to like splice the recording somehow in, in, uh, I don't know how to do that. I think I have to go into my studio. Uh, this because I don't I don't do it on on I use it in Streamyard. I don't think. Oh wait, view live in control room. I have to go to my control room, don't I? And uh, let me speed the chat up real quick. Also, how do I do this? Concurrent viewers, open widget, edit. Delay ads, insert ad, create highlight video, add, add stream marker. Is it add stream marker? I'm in the studio. Yep, I'm in the studio. Channel level settings. Hmm. Add a stream marker. Unable to add. Stream marker added. Markers appear in video editor after your, okay, all right. I think I got it. There you go. Okay, so now we got this. And still 2,000 people who wanna keep watching. Let's fucking go. Let's go, we're gonna, we're gonna power through this. Um, I'm full of energy, I have a lot of green tea. Um, what, uh, what the hell saga with town hall and water meter is just as fun to dive into, but even longer to track than the turtle lady saga. Yeah, no kidding. And by the way, this is also, thanks, babe. Um, thanks. <laughs> uh, this is, um, this is Megan's. So we're 28. This is a five. So 28, she's at 28 buckarooskies. Uh, Wendy Bono, thank you for the two. Uh, Ginger Gravoy, uh, there it is again, totality of circumstances. Yep, he loves that phrase. 
Uh, this is where are we at 28. So now 33. This is Megan's unhung hero. Um, business idea for Turtle Queen, two for one bachelor parties and wedding officiant. I'm sure there are methed out Florida men that take that deal, though. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And actually, I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do all of Megan's real quick. This is gonna make things easier. Also, unhung hero, that's 35, getting edged by the oh my god. Um, th this is Megan's 45 now. Good morning, Larry and Megan. Been there, done that. Uh, 50. She's at around 50. Look at that. Gina Hampton Dukes. Megan, I told Larry last night I was concerned about your lack of good Kentucky bourbon for your desk. You know, maybe I should get her a bottle of something. I need her office address. Uh, puzzled Puzzler, 55. You can testify, but you just can't win because I'm here to tell you you're guilty of sin. Here comes the judge. Here comes the judge. I love that. Um, 57. The power of the gummer compels Judge Grudge, the DCV Titan. Uh, 58, is that 57? 58, super sticker, Ricky Mortana. Thank you very much for your generosity. Uh, 63, have you heard from Cher about last night's stream about her? I bet she's spinning over being called out and I love it. Says Janice Wingfield. Uh, 65, Rosalind Duke says, hi, Larry. <laughs> Uh, 67. Hi, Megan. What the hell is fan now? D Y N U. Great input. 69. Oh, look at that. She's at exactly 69. Maybe we should stop here. Leave her at $69. Even though she made more. No, we got to keep going. There's, th we got to keep going. Kelly B. Okay. Uh, behind Jeremy is Silverman's paralegal. 69. Megan, you're at exactly $69 at the three hour and 10 minute mark. That's hilarious. Uh, 71. Has he uh, even read the package of evidence? Says Terry Strauss. Stratus, excuse me. Exactly. Exactly. So that's 71. 73. Monique, DUI guy, can you explain how the order is over 15 days? I can't. He's violating the law. He's just violating the law. He keeps extending it. Wait, what was I at? Uh-oh. 73? Is this 73, chat? And that would be 75. Sarah Adams, for the love of God, can we just order a psych exam? I think this is now 75. Yep, Squid Pro Quo is following along. Thank you so much. So this is 75. This is Sarah Adams puts us at 75, or puts, excuse me, puts Megan Fox at 75. Um, I feel so broke right now. I'm just kidding. No, I'm, I'm totally fucking with you. Uh, 75. 77. Cranky Granny says Slimy Silverman. Uh-huh. Uh, for Megan's ultimate regrift, 77, 82, Karma, 84, says Cranky Granny, 89, Salty Revenge, kudos to Megan for getting one uh, over one of the sharpest lawyers I've seen. Yeah, for real. Was that 89? So now 91, Megan plead the fifth for two. 91, 96, today on Megan Fox Investigations. Law tubers are being scammed and it's easier than you ever think. Special guest legal vices. 96, 98, you have the right to remain silent. Do you have the ability? Says Danny. And, oh, we just got her over 100 bucks. Uh, 101, maybe 102-ish. Uh, since it's a pound, this guy gives me a huge headache. I agree, Dean Bounds. So Megan is just over. And I think that's it. This is where she terminated the stream. We have read $101, $102, give or take. So just over 100 buckarooskies for Megan. This is the art of the grift, says Squid Pro Quo. That is incredible. I'm so happy that I was able to be a part of it. Also, uh, YouTube. What is the cut for YouTube now? Somebody told me they increased. They, it used to be 30%. It used to be 30% of Super Chats. What? Uh, how much does YouTube take from Super Chats March 2024? Somebody said they're now taking like 40 or 45 or something. I haven't seen anything on that. So... Technically, she only made, you know, 70, 70 or so dollars out of the 100 that you donate. And Google made $30 uh, of that 100. But um, 
No, it still says 30% unless it's been updated. Unless it's been updated. I don't know if anybody has. Um, I'm sorry, I just got here. What happened to Megan? Um, because she uh, grifted off of me, I kicked her out. Mary D., I, I kicked her out. I was very, very angry and upset. You missed it. You should go back and watch the whole thing and find the spot where I got super angry and deleted Megan from existence. Well, at least on my channel. And uh, yeah, that's that's what happened. That's what happened. I was I was super pissed. You should have seen it. You missed it. Oh, it was so much drama. Oh my God. It's, people are going to clip it for ages. It's going to be like the most clipped video of all time as I'm yelling relentlessly at Megan, like Judge the Thomasis. And and just 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 ripping her apart. Like, how dare you steal my super chats? How dare you use my own grift against me? Oh, it was epic, Mary D. You missed all of it. You must you missed all of it. Megan needs to buckle up. It's the law. I'm coming after her. I'm actually gonna file a lawsuit in small claims for $101 or maybe $102.50 to recoup my expenses. Uh <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face for too long. It's just, it's too funny. Uh, let me speed the chat up a little bit since you guys, um, uh, we've, we've thinned out the herd a little bit. Now now we've got, uh, here, let's do this. How about how about this? We're gonna slice it in half. We're gonna do 20, 20 seconds. Here we go. Uh, I, was, I was shouting at her for 15 minutes. Grr! Forget 15 minutes, Mark Feathers. It's 15 minutes, Megan Fox. Grr! 15 minutes, Megan Fox. She got her 15 minutes of fame. She got her 15 minutes of fame. Um, when we sent people into the courtroom. Legally Live, you did not have a channel when that happened, did you? You did not have a channel yet when that happened, but you were watching, weren't you? Oh, so how do you know about this? Okay, don't 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 say it. Don't say it in the chat. I'm curious. Message me. Wait. Oh, nope, I did not have a channel. Yes, I was watching. Got it. 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 If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. Squid pro quo. She she threw a teaser. Um, it, it, if you know, you know. We're moving along. Uh, Fraud at Wrangler says the judge reminds me of those who can't do teach exactly. Uh, is this his best hashtag totality of the circumstances? Says David Jones. Agreed. Uh, kindness wins. It's true. Thank you for that, Wendy Bono. Thank you for your super sticker. Uh, Pepper and C DJ needs to get on the deadhead judge episode for sure. Pepper and C Lori Netzel, Illinois says, or Israel. I, I don't know if I L is Israel or Illinois. The biases interrupt this probably Israel. Uh, thank you for that. Shane cook. Think the judge has a feather fetish. Uh, high legal vices. Well, sorry. He he'll, he'll see it later if he reviews it. Hey Joe, thank you for becoming a YouTube member. Claire Kershaw says the judge has his loaded brownies in his desk. Uh, Ricky Mor Martorana. Ricky Martorana, thank you very much for the super chat. Heidi Martin says a judge went from Woodstock to Laughingstock Woodstock to Laughingstock. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Crazy Grandma says he just state he doesn't participate in federal. Silverman or the Thomases? Because not me, because I do federal cases. Uh, Jermaine Down, have you seen the DC arrow from yesterday yeeting one of Jeremy's apprentices? Huh? No. No, I have not. What is this about? The DCA order from yesterday yeeting one of Jeremy's apprentices? What? Does anybody know anything about this, Jermaine Down? Statement. Oh, Silverman said he doesn't handle handle federal case. Okay, so it was Silverman. Thank you. I knew I knew it was either the Thomases or Silverman because nobody else would have had the opportunity to say something like that. Um. Oh. <laughs> Not apprentices, you dumb wit. 
Larry. Appendices, plural for appendix. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Um, let's check Pacer. Let's investigate Pacer, Florida, Northern District, log in. I understand, continue, present, share screen, Pacer. All right, Northern District of Florida. Let's go to the queries. It's already saved because I haven't looked up any other cases since. Docket report, run report. I don't see any updates. I don't see any updates. What did I miss? It was a formatting error. Okay, so I'm not worried about that. But thank you for letting me know, Jermaine. That's really good stuff. Uh, Wagstall, will 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 the 007 will the Silver Shadow want to continue with the case if his mate is no longer the judge? It's a good question. We'll find out in due course. Uh, Storm and Beer, the Bouvier's de Flandre, says injunction was given to Jeremy by Jeremy's first lawyer, Lynette, accused the lawyer of bribery. Yep. D and, and I think he just tried to settle the case in a way. It was like, what do you want? And it was probably the wrong approach if that's what Feather did. I don't know. I wasn't there, so I can't speak. But if I'm assuming correctly, she probably misconstrued uh, Feather's approach and turn it into he's trying to bribe me, which is not what happened. But Feather was like in the to protect my law license, I'm just going to step away from the case. And Randy and Doreen took over. So again, I'm not a if I'm a betting man, that's where my money would go. Uh, Dean Bounds, hashtag buckle up. What the hell storm is coming? Hashtag buckle up. Hashtag it's the law. That's our new that's our new motto. That's it. This uh, hashtag buckle up. Hashtag it's the law for the next I don't know, maybe 50, 60, 70, 80 years, whatever I have left on this planet. Um, that's going to be my motto. That's it. We've, we created it live on stream. Thank you again, Jim. You are a God send. You're just an angel who has descended from heaven in the form of a, of a $2 super chat. And you're going to create a $20 billion industry for this, this, uh, little schmuck from Kentucky. Uh, Claire Kershaw uh, says, thought I would send this question your way. Uh, with Lynette's stepdaughter, Ashley, as a witness for Jeremy, should Lynette be contacting her? Probably not a good idea. Uh, Iorna Wood, how can they dictate what potential judge can do in regards to the two? How can they dictate what a potential judge can do? I mean, they're just speculating. They were just hypothesizing and speculating, um, you know. Yeah, Trinity Meadows is like, was she was here or he? Um, oh, look at that. RJ Medic, welcome back to the channel. Gifted five subs, uh, memberships. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Wah ha 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 ha, says Rosalind Duke. I think that's when when I was, uh, when it was discovered that uh, I discovered that Megan was uh, co streaming this whole thing this whole time. Uh, nine divided by three equals three. Just please continue. Okay, Irina Berzina. Thank you very much. Math is hard. Mary, Mary, math is scary. Did you see my thumbnail? Hashtag priceless. Yeah, I was. Uh, RJ Medic. MS Crim Ms. Krim says, is this trial still trial day two? My head hurts. This is February 28th, 2024. So this was two weeks ago, what we just watched. Uh, Franny says, I believe Silverman and Judge talked about it together. GR Holland. Uh, Dennis Copart says to get you removed the tortoise. That's why. Uh, 69 for 69. Kumarabi. <laughs> That's clever. The DCV Titan. I love that. I love puns. Susan Scataregia. Welcome back. He's arguing her, his own defense. Thank you so much. Uh, the DCV Titan. Again, judge is a firm believer in cucks. Uh, Shane Cook. I hope these court videos get used in law school and how not to be a judge. Oh, my God, Shane. That is brilliant. Yes, 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 and hashtag yes, daddy, some more because this needs to be aired. This needs to be aired. Um, this needs to be aired to the public. This is literally like how to not be a judge. Absolutely agree. Um, 
Subi Sue, welcome back. Oh, it's 15 months. I feel like just yesterday you were 14 months. How is that? That's crazy. Claire Kershaw, oh, one gifted. Thank you so much. And Shane Cook, also one gifted. Shout out in the chat, by the way, if uh, below, or I guess it would be right here, if you got a gifted membership from one of these lovely, lovely folks. Uh, Carla uh, Piala, welcome to the channel as well. And uh, you missed mine, plus $2, Vince Clortho. If I missed it, I'm sorry. And thank you for making it even, I suppose. Thanks again. I, I, I may have. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to. Thanks, thanks, Hendry. Uh, I will look at that. And I already did, actually, I think. Yep. Uh, American Dreamer for Larry. Love chat. Thank you so much, American Dreamer. Uh, Susan Scataregia says, understanding the teller circumstances, you suck, grudge judge. Exactly. Uh, Chance NP, why doesn't Shocket ask Silverman Paralegal to move? I don't know. I don't know. Zach, this judge is absolutely baiting Jeremy, but he is a master baiter. He is a master baiter. He is excellent at baiting uh, people into his corner. He is a master of that. Absolutely. I forgot to get popcorn. <laughs> Ms. Krim says, uh, why does the judge not move Silverman Sparalegal from being sitting behind Jeremy and his team? I don't know. I have no answer. I have no answer. Maybe because he's judged the biases. I don't know. That would be my answer. Lady in the second row has her phone up recording. I don't know. Did, did we see that, Vicky? That's interesting. Very good observation. Uh, Waxstall 007, judge sounded like he was going to cry as he didn't avoid them saying Rit will be ready on time. <laughs> That's funny. Dan Chicoin, judge detarred and feathered. Buckle up, it's the law. Hashtag buckle up, hashtag it's the law. DJ Radis says, Larry, check your email. I sent you a Megan meme. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Larry making money from Megan. There is no sound. Oh my God. Seriously. <laughs> this is so stupid, but I'll share it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not calling it stupid. It's just, it's just silly. It's just goofy. Larry, the DUI guy, making money from Megan. Hey, now it's even. Now we're even. And he said there's no sound. <laughs> Is DUI guy going to have to choke a bitch? Where's my money? And, you know, like Kermit the Frog voice. Remember that meme? When he just, like, comes up to Miss Piggy. Where's my money? I think it was... Um, Pablo Francisco, Pablo Francisco made that meme of Kermit the Frog coming to like Miss Piggy and, and going, where's my money? Uh, I believe that's where that happened. <laughs> Thank you for that, DJ Radis. That was silly. Uh, Kelly B. Um, sorry, just had to check something. Okay, we're good. Um Kelly B says, and now he's on the correct side after everything. Who is? Who is on the correct side of what after everything? I'm lost a little bit. Sorry. Uh, Jodel Muzolf. Silverman's paralegal is sitting behind Jeremy. Also, he was uh, at the hearing of Feathers about the de deposition video. Yeah, that's that's upsetting. I did not know that. Uh, Pepper and see what happens if Lynette Preston is in jail in Ohio or found guilty in the federal case. Prizes. Well, again, you're not found guilty in a civil case. You'll be found liable and you have to pay monies prior to the decision he uh, of the writ. Uh, nothing. She'll be serving jail time. Period. The end. Nicolette Sparkov. Thank you for the two. If, if she does, I mean, of course. Margaret uh, Tier. We all hope so. Uh, a man can dream. Yeah. 
Afternoon, Larry. I'll give you one out of 100 for Irish pronunciation last night. LOL, but good. I'll take it. I'll take a one out of 100. At least it wasn't a zero. Gina Hampton Dukes. I always look at the cup half full. You know what I'm saying? You could have given me a negative 10, but you gave me a one out of 100. I'll take it. I have ADHD like Megan. I have to watch all of you while building Lego shit. That's funny, Gina. Uh, Cause now Megan is your Tom Sawyer. She's gone now. Shaney Graham, your luck still. Yep, absolutely. It's exactly what happened. Chance NP, recuse yourself before you lose. Wait, recuse yourself yourself before you screws yourself. I think there's an extra yourself in there, but you better recuse yourself before you lose yourself and screw yourself. That's something like that. I get it. Robert Daly, a true justice would be the replacement judge dismisses in 15 minutes. Oh, that would be fucking hilarious. Talk about justice served. One can dream. Leo Ford says, uh, just woke up. It's 5, 10 a.m. in New Zealand. What I miss? Uh, you missed everything. You have to go back and uh, after this live is over and go back and watch because the hearing was fire. He literally, the judge, Judge DeBiasis literally attacked Jeremy in open court. I've never seen a judge do that in front of their lawyer, in front of their fucking lawyer. Wow. Bunny mom, what is the best way to contact you? Not court related, just something interesting. Do you have an email address? Yes, I do. Do we, if we have any mods in the chat, I mean, it is on my channel. All you have to do is, uh, 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 um, you know, go on my channel and it's, you know, hit the, I'm not a robot. And we're about to start the, um, the Donald Trump motion to disqualify order, order on the motion to disqualify the entire prosecution team. Very exciting stuff. Um, bunny mom so that's how you contact me uh vince clortho thank you very much for the gifted uh shout out if you got uh a gifted sub beat thanks to vince crypt dragon thank you for joining on as a member as well thank you laurie monroe for the two and bunny mom i thought i heard the judge say he told the attorneys to see if they could solve it before the next hearing i think it was the first hearing yeah maybe uh we're, we're so far removed from that it's like yeah So, yep, this is where we're at. Let's do this. Let's do it. Order on a motion to disqualify. Here we go. So this was uh, this was made public just three hours ago. So this is completely fresh. State of Georgia versus Donald Trump, Giuliani, Meadows, Clark, Chile, Roman, Schaefer, Floyd, and Latham. This is big news. This is huge. The judge rules. I'm going to, this is a spoiler, but you already know. The judge rules at the end of this that the Fulton County DA, Fannie Willis, and her entire staff must step aside from the case. Completely step aside. No exceptions. Uh, politically motivated. Eric, oh, Eric found a four-leaf clover? Hell yeah, Eric. Congratulations. Welcome to the live. And congrats on your four-leaf clover. That is awesome. I love that. You're going to have luck for days, homie. You're going to have luck for days. All right. Oops. Huge. It's huge, I tell you. Very bigly. Very, very bigly. Okay, can I make this bigger? Remove full screen layout? No, that's not what I want. Okay, fine. This is good. Let's do this. So order on defendant's motion to dismiss and disqualify the Fulton County District Attorney. So Trump's lawyers on January 8th, it's a little blurry, and that's not you. That's actually my screen too. On January 8th, 2024, Defendant Roman filed a motion to dismiss the indictment and disqualify the entirety of the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. Eight co-defendants later joined and supplemented the motion, raising additional grounds for disqualification. Trump on January 25th, Giuliani on February 9th, Meadows on uh, February 5th, Clark on February 5th, Chile on... Uh, Ch Chile on January 26th, Schaefer on February 5th, Floyd on February 6th, and Latham on February 5th. 
Among other allegations of disqualifying conduct, the defendants contend that the district attorney obtained a personal stake. Ooh, personal stake. And we're not talking about the juicy ones. We're not talking about the juicy ones. We're, this is this is saying that they would personally be profiting in some way by financially benefiting from her romantic relationship with Special Assistant District Attorney Nathan Wade, S-A-D-A, -A, call him Sada for sadist, <laughs> sadism, Sada, sadist, sadism. Oh, man. Seda Wade. Seda Wade. That that would be like a good name for uh for like a cleaning product. Yo, man, you got you got some Seda Wade. You got some Seda Wade. Beware the Ides of March for real. Lauren Yeats. That's exactly what I was talking about. Seda Wade. Seda Wade. Um, no, I'm pro Trump. I, I already outed myself. There, there's no more, there's no more questions in the chat. If you, by the way, if you are going to be like, I don't like this YouTuber anymore because he holds an opinion I disagree with. That's pathetic and petty. So you're welcome to stay. You're welcome to leave. You're welcome to hate me. You're welcome to love me. It's just an opinion. It's just a min It's just my opinion. I support Trump. End of story. He's probably going to be the, the Republican running candidate, and I support him. End of story. Okay? So if anybody has any further questions, feel free. Um, Special Assistant District Attorney Seda Wade, whom she personally hired to lead the state's prosecution team, had she had a romantic relationship. So I guess it, it was Fanny herself. Um, does chat know... If it was Fanny herself, I guess we're about to find out more specifically defendant Roman alleges that the district attorney and Seda Wade traveled together on multiple vacations with Wade covering many of the associated expenses. Defendant Roman later supplemented his motion with receipts from some of these travels. The state responded with an affidavit arguing that the district attorney had not received any financial benefit through her relationship with Wade and that their personal travel expenses were roughly divided equally. Yep, that's and that's basically my my stance. I'm going to leave it on screen in case anybody has any questions. You can just look at the, the pinned comment. Um, thank you, Stacy Schmidt. Um as alleged, the claims presented a possible financial conflict of interest for the district attorney. More importantly, the defense motion and the state's response created a conflict in the evidence that could only be resolved through an evidentiary hearing, and one that could not simply be ignored without endangering a criminally accused constitutional right to procedural due process. Um, after receiving two and a half days of testimony during which the defendants were provided an opportunity to subpoena and introduce whatever relevant and material evidence they could muster, the court finds that the defendants failed to meet their burden of proving that the district attorney acquired an actual conflict of interest in the case through her personal relationship and uh, recurring travels with her lead prosecutor. The other alleged grounds for disqualification, including forensic misconduct, are also denied. However, says the judge, the established record now highlights a significant appearance of impropriety. Now, that's huge. A significant appearance of impropriety that infects the current structure of the prosecution team, an appearance that must be removed through the state's selection of one of two options. The defendant's motion are therefore granted in part. Wow. Wow. Good for Trump. Remove sleazy, slimy, scummy prosecutors that are that are politically motivated and politically charged because the, the courtroom is no place for politics. The courtroom has zero place for politics. Criminal prosecutions, you cannot be politically charged. You must remain neutral and a neutral, non-politically motivated prosecutor has to um, be 
or at least not. I mean, they can be they can be a liberal. I'm not saying they can't be a liberal, but they can't be charged by their liberalism as they prosecute a Republican. That's not fair. That takes away the it brings the political it it, it tarnishes the the judicial process. It tarnishes the the judicial process. It tarnishes our our judicial system. And you can't you can't have a prosecutor going, you know, fuck that guy because he's Republican and I'm going to prosecute him to the full extent of the law because he's Republican. You can't do that. You just can't do it. You can't do it in any courtroom. Why should it happen in this courtroom? Period. End of discussion. The end. OK. So Trump is winning on this on this issue. Uh, the prosecutor are all all going bye bye. Bye bye, prosecutors. And good for him. Good for them. Honestly, this, no matter who it was, even if it wasn't Trump, if it would have been somebody else, I would have said the exact same thing. I would have said absolutely the exact same fucking thing. Uh, the absolutely, uh, nobody should be prosecuted by a prosecutor that is politically charged with a political motivation, with political agenda. Period. The end. Moving on. The actual conflict of interest. Our higher courts, our highest courts consistently remind us that prosecutors are held to a unique and exacting professional standard in light of their public responsibility and their power. Every newly minted prosecutor should be instilled with the notion that she seeks justice over convictions that she may strike hard blows but never foul ones. See Burger v. United States. Um, most importantly, prosecutors are expected to assume a role beyond a mere advocate for one side and must make decisions in the public's interest. There it is. Not their own personal or political interest. Boom. Boom shakalaka. State v. Wooten, Hicks v. Branley. He is a public duty. He represents the entire public, not just the liberal public or just the Democrat. I mean, just the Republican uh, 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 public. Okay? The public period. The end. Recognizing these are not empty slogans nor toothless admonitions without practical effect, Georgia courts have not hesitated to step in and use their inherent authority to disqualify a state prosecutor when required. So this has happened before, especially when a prosecutor labors under an actual conflict of interest. See Georgia Constitutional uh, Article uh, 6, Section 1, Paragraph 4. Each court may exercise such powers as necessary to protect or effectuate its judgments. Every court has power to control in the further furtherance of justice, the conduct of its officers, and all other persons connected with judicial proceeding before it in every matter pertaining thereto. Let me read that again. Every court has power to control in the furtherance of justice, to control the conduct of its officers and all other persons connected with the judicial proceeding before it in a matter pertaining hereto. Okay? Everybody gets a fair fight. Doesn't matter who you are. Everybody gets a fair fight. And Regist versus State also said, courts have an independent interest in ensuring that criminal trials are conducted within the ethical standards of the profession uh -huh, and that legal proceedings appear fair to all who observe them. Disqualification of a prosecutor due to a conflict of interest is thus not a creature of statute so much as it is judicial remedy recognized by our appellate courts since their formation, generally on grounds of public policy. The... Administration of the law should be free from all temptation and suspicion. Yes, so far as human agency is capable of accomplishing that object. Uh, Golden v. State, disqualifying solicitor general on the grounds of public policy. Um, Conley v. Arnold, uh, against public policy for solicitor, solicitor general to represent clients, though uh, allegation was untimely. Baker v. State, holding propriety demands that the Solicitor General cannot personally prosecute a case in which he has a personal concern. Uh, finding public policy, good morals, and justice prevents side-switching. Uh, Nichols v. State says physical precedent only uh, the administration of the law, and especially that of the criminal law, should, like Caesar's wife, be above suspicion and should be free from all temptation. This was intentional. They published this decision on the, the anniversary of Caesar's assassination. Oh my God. <laughs> that is hilarious.
I have to, this is, this is crazy. This is so funny. They actually, they quoted this. This is wild. I'm telling you. Hashtag buckle up. Hashtag it's the law. Hashtag truth wins. Much like Caesar's assassination on March 15th, many moons ago, the prosecutors in Georgia who were prosecuting Trump were all metaphorically assassinated today on March 15th, 2024. That's just beautiful. I mean, and they even quote, just like Caesar's wife, this is fucking phenomenal. This is phenomenal stuff. Um, the Georgia Supreme Court has recently... Oops, I, I didn't mean to add that emoji, <laughs> babe. Oops, <laughs> I was trying to spell ramen. We are we are doing yes. Um, The Georgia Supreme Court has most recently denoted conflicts of interest and forensic misconduct as the two generally recognized grounds for disqualification. That comes out of Reed v. State. And there's a footnote. While McGlynn indicated without citation or further explanation that disqualification allegations require a high standard of proof, neither the Court of Appeals nor any other appellate opinion has provided enlightenment on where exactly this relative high standard falls on the evidentiary spectrum. The court believes McGlynn offers little, if any, guidance to the analysis at hand. So that case, uh, the court is distinguishing that case and saying, no, we're not really, we don't believe that case applies here for whatever reason. Uh, a conflict of interest includes acquiring a, quote, personal interest or stake in the defendant's conviction. So imagine if the Georgia prosecutors got like a conviction and then they would be like, hell yeah, victory for liberals and, and Democrats everywhere or leftists, whatever you want to call it. That would be bullshit. That's not justice. That's a politically charged, politically motivated political statement. And it does not belong in an American courtroom or any courtroom anywhere in the world, period, the end, full sentence, full stop. So I agree. I agree with the judge. Fanny and her team go bye-bye. A real or seemingly incom incompatibility between one's private interests and one's public or fiduciary duties is defined as a conflict of interest. In such circumstances, no showing of prejudice by a defendant is required. You don't even have to show prejudice, according to Amusement Sales Incorporated, which makes sense. It's 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 on its face prejudicial, you know. If I'm using that as a political motivator, absolutely. This is so because the prosecutor's duty to the public creates an additional public interest that must remain unconflicted in every criminal case. A determination of whether a prosecutor is laboring under a conflict of interest is a fact-driven one. See uh, Battle v. State. What a name, Battle. Finding insufficient evidence of a conflict of interest after establishing through testimony the attenuated nature of the connection between the lead prosecutor and the victim's mother who worked as an employee at the same office. That's not enough. But in this case, Seda Wade, man, Seda Wade's manner of payment is not actionable on its own. Whenever a private attorney like Wade is paid by the billable hour, a motive exists to extend or prolong the assignment. This, however, is a tension that the legal profession has long accepted. It is also the type of speculative status violation that our courts have regularly denied as insufficient grounds for disqualification absent solid proof of some other conduct. See Blumenfeld versus Borenstein. Uh, finding wrongdoing cannot be imputed to an attorney based on marital status alone just because they're married. I mean, we have we have two prosecutors. I can literally tell you, I can attest to this. Oldham County. Uh, oh my God, what's his name? So to the B. Oh, for the love of God, I can't remember his name. Hold on. Him and his wife are both prosecutors. One is on the district level and the other is on the circuit court level. What's the problem? I'm sure they have fun stories that they talk about every night. But um, 
there's no, they, I've never seen them being accused of impropriety in any way, shape or form. I love them. They're good people. There's just marital status alone is not going to be enough to disqualify. Like then you would have to disqualify them from every single case ever. You know what I mean? It makes zero sense. Why would you do that? Marital status just by itself is insufficient. Okay. Mar marital status just by itself is insufficient. Um, why can't I remember his name? This is really frustrating me. Anyway, maybe I'll find it in a minute. But mar marital status alone is not enough. Uh, that's a fact. Um, if there's more, then we can ask the question. If there is more, then we can ask the question. But if you are simply married, that's not enough. That's, again, that's a fact. Uh, Baxter. There we go. Barry Baxter. And his wife, I believe, is like Nicole. Nicole? I forget. He's the county attorney. She's the Commonwealth attorney in, in Oldham County, Kentucky. And they're really good people. They're really good people. I have not, not one bad word to say about them. They do excellent work. They do absolutely phenomenal work. So I agree with this decision so far. Thus, as SEDA's oath of office in combination with the supervision theoretically provided. I love how it sounds like sadist. Like SEDA's oath. The sadist's oath of office. I shall inflict pain only on the willing. Like, is that is that the sadist oath? I don't know. A SEDA's oath of office in combination with the supervision theoretically provided by a neutral and detached district attorney should generally be sufficient to dispel the appearance of that improper incentive. Nor would a romantic relationship between prosecutors standing alone, just like the Baxters, typically implicate disqualification. Agree. Assuming neither prosecutor had the ability to pay the other as long as the relationship persisted. Agree. But in combination, as is alleged here by the defendants, a prima facie, meaning on its face, argument arises of financial enrichment and improper motivations, which inevitably and unsurprisingly invites a motion such as this. As to the financial allegations, the court makes the following actual findings. On November 1st, 2021, the district attorney hired Nathan Wade to serve as SEDA and lead the investigation that produced the indictment in this case. That was in November 2021 which led to the indictment. The district attorney considered at least one other option before hiring Wade, extending an offer to former Governor Roy Barnes, who declined, said no. The, con uh, the contract allowed a $250 uh, hourly rate, a relatively low amount by Metro Atlanta standards for an attorney with Wade's years of experience, and contained a ceiling on the maximum number of hours permitted. Under the terms of the first contract, Wade was not to perform more than 60 hours of work per month without written permission. No evidence introduced indicates that Wade ever received permission to exceed these monthly hourly caps. His contract was renewed on November 15, 2022, and again on June 12, 2023. Between October 22 and May 23, the district attorney and Wade traveled together on four occasions that resulted in documentable expenses. The first included an extended trip in October 22 to Miami and Aruba in a cruise. Wade initially covered expenses for the October 22 trip, totaling approximately $5,223. In December of 2022, the two flew to Miami for another cruise for which the district attorney paid $1,394 for plane tickets, while Wade purchased passage for the cruise along with other vacation-related expenses, totaling approximately $3,684. So grand total, about five grand, give or take a few dollars uh, on that one. So we're like 10,000 to 300 at this point. Uh, in March 2023, the two traveled to Belize where uh, Wade covered resort and restaurant expenses in the amount of approximately 3,000. Okay, we're 13,200, give or take. And uh, in May, they traveled to Napa Valley where Wade covered airfare, lodging, and Uber rides in the amount of 2,800. So where are we at now? Um, uh, 10, 13. So about 16,000. 16,000 total. I told you I'm pretty decent at math. Check my math. It's give or take 16,000. Check my math chat. Um, in addition, the two the total for all trips, $16,000. In addition, the two des uh, described taking a number of day-long trip ro road trips to Tennessee, Alabama, South Carolina, North Carolina, and other parts of Georgia. They also admitted to dining out on multiple occasions and taking turns covering the bill, but seemingly full access to Wade's primary credit card statements. The defendants did not produce evidence 
of any further documentable expenses or gifts, nor were any revealed through the testimony. In total, defendants point to an aggregate documented benefit of at most approximately twelve to 15000 in the district attorney's favor. Okay. So those are the numbers. Um, the district attorney and Wade testified that these expenditures were not meant as gifts and not designed to benefit the district attorney. They're simply in a romantic relationship. Duh. Both testified that the district attorney regularly reimbursed Wade in cash. And if not reimbursed, the district attorney covered a comparable related expense. For example, the district attorney testified that she reimbursed Wade in cash for the Aruba trip, which she estimated cost around $2,000, and that she, quote unquote, gave him money for both cruises. She further claimed that she reimbursed Wade for the entirety of the Belize trip and that she paid for the Napa Valley excursions. Finally, while Wade could have bought meals in 2020, which totaled more than $100, she would also regularly pay for his meals. Such reimbursement practice may be unusual and the lack of any documentary corroboration understandably concerning. However, the testimony withstood direct contradiction was uh, corroborated by other evidence. For example, her payment of airfare for two on the, the 2022 Miami trip, and it was not so incredible as to be inherently unbelievable. However, as the district attorney herself acknowledged, no ledger exists other than the best guesstimate. There's no way to be certain that expenses were split completely evenly, and the district attorney may well have received a net benefit of several hundred dollars. Despite this, after considering all the surrounding circumstances, the court finds that this particular evidence did not establish the district's uh, receipt of material financial benefit as a result of her decision to hire and engage in a romantic relationship with Seda Wade. Uh, simply put, the defendants have not presented sufficient evidence in this regard, indicating that the expenses were not roughly divided evenly or that the district attorney was or currently remains greatly and pecuniarily interested in this prosecution. And I agree. I agree with the judge. It seems a little far-fetched. Romantic relationships are very rarely going to be like an actual uh, a problem, unless it's like obvious, unless it's like absolutely obvious. You know, and in this case, it's definitely not. It's def it may be maybe somewhat questionable if I were to give it any credence at all, but I honestly I wouldn't even go so far. I don't think I don't I, I agree with the judge. The judge listened to the testimony. I trust her um, determination, and I believe that uh, the decision is correct as far as I can see uh, up until now. Okay. All right, let's keep going. In addition, and much more important, the court finds, based largely on the district attorney's testimony, that the evidence demonstrated that the financial gain flowing from her relationship with Seda Wade was not a motivating factor on the part of the district attorney to indicate and prosecute this case. While a general motive for more income can never be disregarded entirely, the district attorney was not financially destitute throughout this time or in any great need, as she testified her salary far exceeded $200,000 per annum without any justification or without any indication of excessive expenses or debts. Similarly, the court further finds that the defendants have failed to demonstrate that the district attorney's conduct has impacted or influenced the case to the defendant's detriment. While prejudice is not a required element for disqualification, it is relevant to considerations of due process and the defendant's requested remedy of complete dismissal. Defendants argue that the financial arrangements created an incentive to prolong the case, but in fact, there is no indication the district attorney is interested in delaying anything. Indeed, the record is quite to the contrary. Before the relationship came to light, the state requested the trial begin less than six months after the indictment. That was uh, on August 16, 2023, last year. Soon thereafter, the state opposed severance of the objecting defendants who did not demand their statutory right to a speedy trial. They came in September uh, the following month last year. The state argued that it only wanted to try the case once, assuming that such a trial would have been affirmed after any necessary post-conviction appeals. The state amended its proposed timeline in November 2023 to request that the trial commence less than one year after the return of the indictment. And even before the indictment, the district attorney approved the grand jury presentment that included fewer defendants than the special purpose grand jury recommended. See it, order entering special purpose grand jury, final report, and court record, such and such. In sum, the district attorney has not in any way acted in conformance with the theory that she arranged a financial scheme to enrich herself or endear herself to Wade, giggity, by extending the duration of this prosecution or engaging in excessive litigation. 
without sufficient evidence that the district attorney acquired a personal stake in the prosecution or that her financial arrangements had any impact on the case, the defendant's claim of an actual conflict must be denied. The, this finding is by no means an indication that the court condones this tremendous lapse in judgment or the professional manner of the district attorney's testimony during the evidentiary hearing. Rather, it is the undersigned's opinion that Georgia law does not permit the finding of an actual conflict for simply making bad choices. So you, you don't you get a pass for being an idiot, even repeatedly. And it is the trial court's duty to confine itself to the relevant issues in applicable law properly be uh, brought before it. Other forms or sources of authority, such as the General Assembly, the Georgia State Ethics Commission, the State Bar of Georgia, the Fulton County Board of Commissioners, and the voters of Fulton County may offer feedback on any unanswered questions that linger. But those are not the issues that are determinative to the defendant's motion alleging an actual conflict. This is judge way of saying, oh, honey, I am not done. I am not finished yet. Yeah, or what is the uh, what is the phrase, the turn of phrase? But wait, there's more. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Next chapter, the appearance of impropriety. We're about halfway through. Finding insufficient evidence of an actual conflict of interest does not end the inquiry. But wait, there's more. Our appellate courts have endorsed the application of an appearance of impropriety standard to state prosecutors, even without any explicit finding of an actual interest. For example, in battle, certainly a conflict of interest or the appearance of impropriety from a close personal relationship with the victim may be grounds for disqualification of a prosecutor. Emphasis has been added by the court. Um, Greater Georgia Amusements LLC v. State said physical for physical precedent only, quote, a district attorney may not be compensated by means of a fee arrangement which guarantee at least the appearance of a conflict of interest. It was later deemed persuasive in another case, Head v. State. A prosecutor's close personal relationship with the victim in a case may create at least the appearance of a prosecution unfairly based on private interests rather than one properly based on vindication of public interest. In that case, the individual prosecutor who has the conflict may be disqualified. Look at Davenport, granting a new trial after concluding that under such circumstances, there is at least the appearance of impropriety and that is enough in the interest of justice, basically. Uh, and Whitworth, for purposes of uh, precedent only, physical precedent, labeling appearance-related argument irrelevant due to a lack of an actual conflict. And there's a footnote. The appearance verbiage likely owes its linea lineage to Canon 9 of the Code of Professional Responsibility, which says a lawyer should avoid even the appearance, not just actual, but the appearance of professional impropriety, which previously applied to all aspects of an attorney's professional life. What you see is what you get, applying the appearance of a propriety standard to prosecutors. Criticized for its own vague and varying application, the American Bar Association dropped the appearance standard in its 1983 model rules of professional conduct. There's a little fun fact for you. Georgia eventually followed suit, supplementing its professional code in 2001. Eventually, yeah, it took you 20 years, but okay. With the adoption of the Georgia rules of professional conduct. Herman versus Guttergaard said, labeling the appearance of impropriety standard as outdated. Yet despite its removal as an explicit professional requirement, Georgia appellate courts continue to apply an appearance standard in both criminal, as previously cited, and civil contexts. See a bunch of these cases that are on your screen. Now, the cases cited here that resulted in disqualification did not hold that an actual conflict is necessary is a necessary prerequisite. The state nevertheless argues that the facts presented suggested as much, and while that may be so in some instances, the opinion the opinions do not make that finding. And this court cannot ignore the explicit language of the Georgia Supreme Court and multiple opinions from Georgia Court of Appeals. Further, while Davenport, in its first instance, this court can find where the exact phrase the reference to Caesar's wife in Nichols v. State and the admonition against all temptations and suspicion. That's how you know Caesar's wife, March 15th, come on. It doesn't get much better than this, folks. The assassination, the metaphorical assassination of all the prosecutors on, uh, on this case is just glorious. The metaphorical assassination of all prosecutors on the uh, Trump's indictment is just so glorious. The fact that we get to have it literally on Judah's day. No, it's not Judah. Sorry, that's that's Jesus. 
Get with the program, Larry. Brutus, et tu, Brute? Et tu, Fanny? At two Fanny and, and you too, Fanny, you know, uh, or no, who's the judge? Sorry. Who's the judge? We're on page 11. Who's the judge here? Uh, judge Scott McAfee at two Scott McAfee <laughs> at two Scott McAfee. It says Fanny at, at two Scott McAfee. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm tweeting that. I just need the spelling. Um, that is so hilarious. You you can't make this stuff up. This is this is like it writes itself. They did this intentionally, obviously. Obviously. This is just it writes itself. <laughs> it's too Megan. Oh I've been stabbed by a grift. A counter grift to my grift. So the reference to Caesar's wife and the admonition against all temptations and suspicion demonstrate the principle has long been endorsed in Georgia law. While formally undefined in Georgia precedent, an appearance of impropriety is generally considered conduct or status that would lead a reasonable person to think that the actor is behaving or will be inclined to behave inappropriately or wrongfully. That's Black's Law Dictionary. That is a legal dictionary. Uh, and there's a footnote uh, an appearance standard has been defined and regularly applied to judges as part of the Code of Judicial Conduct. See in re inquiry concerning a judge. Uh, in that case, the test for the appearance of impropriety is whether the situation would create in reasonable minds a perception that the judge's ability to carry out judicial responsibilities with integrity, impartiality, and competence is impaired. Notably, this applies to both uh, a judge's professional and personal neutrality required of a judge is necessarily of a higher degree than that required of a prosecutor, naturally. In contrast, only an attorney's professional behavior is subject to scrutiny through a disqualification motion, nor is a private attorney held to the strict nonpartisan standards of a judge. So to say that an appearance standard inappropriately holds prosecutors to the same ethical standards as judges is inaccurate, although the distinction is less apparent here as the conduct at issue involves a an intermingling of the professional and personal life of the district attorney. Ooh, we're getting to the crux here, folks. We're getting to the good stuff. Check this out. Borrowing from federal judicial recusal standards, a reasonable person is not an uninformed member of the public with only a passing knowledge of the effects at hand. See Cheney versus United States. This must, be this must be the standard, as otherwise, in the case of a casual, uninformed, or misinformed observer might believe the district attorney must recuse herself merely because her father shares a last name with a co-defendant. Exactly. Nor is a reasonable person someone who is, quote, hypersensitive or unduly suspicious. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. You say it, chat. I'm not going to say it. Hypersensitive or unduly suspicious. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. I'm offended. Okay, I said it. Without an understanding of the relevant legal standard and judicial practice. The appearance standard recognizes that even though when no actual conflict exists, a perceived conflict in the reasonable eyes of the public threatens confidence in the legal system itself. When the danger goes uncorrected, it undermines the legitimacy and moral force of our already weakest branch of government. The judiciary's judgment will be obeyed only so long as the public respects it, citing the Federalist. Exactly. Hamilton. Ham they're quoting fucking Hamilton. Jesus, this is incredible. They're quoting 250 years worth of precedent. Wow. 
I love this. They were literally going back to our roots. That's called, that's justice, folks. This, this is justice. This is justice deserved, justice served. This is because sometimes an attorney, guiltless in any actual sense, nevertheless is required to stand aside for the sake of public confidence in the probity of the administration of justice. Um, citing State v. Rizzo to disqualify criminal defense attorney. The court finds that it can and indeed must consider the appearance of impropriety as a basis for a state prosecutor's disqualification, especially in recognition of the critical role that the prosecutor plays in the criminal justice system. One final observation can be gleaned from a careful study of our appellate decisions applying this standard. The remedy can vary. Unlike an actual conflict, the finding of an appearance of impropriety does not automatically demand disqualification. Our Supreme Court has previously analyzed disqualification under an appearance standard in a civil case using a continuum, recognizing that disqualification is not always the appropriate outcome. At one end of the scale, this is from Bloomfeld versus Borenstein, a 1981 Georgia Supreme Court case. At the end of the scale, where disqualification is always justified and indeed mandated, even when balanced against a client's right to an attorney of choice, is the appearance of impropriety coupled with a conflict of interest or jeopardy to a client's confidences. In these instances, it is clear that the disqualification is necessary for the protection of the client. Somewhere in the middle of the continuum is the appearance of impropriety based on conduct on the part of the attorney. As discussed above, this generally has been found insufficient to outweigh the client's interest in counsel of choice. Sorry, uh, I need to check something. Yeah, okay, I got it. Um, this is probably so because absent danger to the client, the nebulous interest of the public at large in the propriety of the bar is not weighty enough to justify disqualification. Finally, at the opposite end of the continuum is the appearance of impropriety based not on conduct, but also on status alone. This is insufficient grounds for disqualification. And Stinton applied it to a criminal defense lawyer. The Georgia Supreme Court further noted that disqualification due to an appearance of impropriety should rarely occur where there is no danger that the actual trial of the case will be tainted. This is Bloomfeld again citing, uh, oh no, sorry, see also Board of Education versus Nyquist, 1979 Second Circuit case. Uh, when there is no claim that the trial will be tainted, appearance of impropriety is simply too slender a read on which to rest a disqualification order except in the rarest cases. Similarly, in Billings, although the Court of Appeals found the existence of an appearance of impropriety, it noted that the appearance could be cured through screening the affected prosecutor from participation or discussion of the affected case. Uh, see also a case by the name of Head that has been uh, previously mentioned. Uh, moreover, to ensure that no conflict of interest or the appearance of one might develop, the district attorney took the prudent step of ordering the investigator to take no part in the investigation or prosecution of the case. These cases indicate that a trial court can consider alternative solutions to cure the appearance of impropriety. Nor would the finding of an appearance of impropriety um, on the part of the district attorney herself in contrast to an actual conflict, necessarily result in the disqualification of the entire Fulton County District Attorney's office. The district attorney in McLaughlin was absolutely disqualified, quote unquote, due to a personal interest in the prosecution. McLaughlin, this is from McLaughlin. As a result, assistant district attorneys appointed by the district attorney lacked any authority to proceed. McLaughlin did not address an appearance standard and made a point to limit the total disqualification to instances of absolute disqualification, quote unquote. When the appearance of a conflict exists, only the affected prosecutor, be they elected or appointed, is affected. Again, going back to head, the individual prosecutor who has the conflict based on at least the appearance of impropriety may be disqualified from participation in the case, but not all the prosecutors who work with him. So it's not necessarily always a one size fits all. Some, sometimes it's just the one prosecutor. This is just the one prosecutor. It's not always the whole office. We're about to get to why um, Cranky Granny says Biden 2024 Trump's a criminal. Thank you for your input. 
Cranky Granny also says if Biden was guilty of anything, he would be charged. Um, World Explorer says if he find guns in storage, does he get arrested? World, uh, you're talking about Jeremy. We moved on from that topic, so I'll just answer it real quick. Uh, uh, probably not because it would he wouldn't have possessed them lawfully. He would just move them to the side. Uh, Vince Clortha says, I'm learning stuff. Pretty cool. You need to start a deal with law of self-defense, dude, Branca. Uh, but for idiots who drink and drive, <laughs> maybe that'll be fun. Now with this prince, these principles in mind, so see judge is doing a slow boil of these prosecutors and I'm here for it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I absolutely love this. Uh, with these principles in mind, the court finds that the record made at the evidentiary hearing established that the district attorney's prosecution is encumbered by an appearance of impropriety. This appearance is not created by mere status alone, but comes because of specific conduct and impacts more than a mere nebulous interest because it concerns a public prosecutor. That's Bloomfeld. Obviously. Easy. Even if the romantic relationship began after Seda, Wade initial, uh, Seda Wade's initial contact in November 2021, the district attorney chose to continue supervising and paying Wade while maintaining such a relationship. She further allowed the regular and loose exchange of money between them without any exact or verifiable measure of reconciliation. This lack of a confirmed financial split, split creates the possibility and appearance that the district attorney benefited, albeit non-materially, from a contract whose award lay solely within her purview in policing. Now, more importantly, says the judge, uh, were the case allowed to proceed unchanged, on its face, it concerns raise, uh, the concerns raised by the defendants would persist. As the district attorney testified, her relationship with Wade has only cemented after these motions and is stronger than ever. So he ain't going nowhere, eh? Fair enough. I mean, I, I, I'm not here to diss on it. Good for them. Let them do their thing. I don't give a shit. Um, Seda Wade's patently unpersuasive explanation for the inaccurate interrogatories he submitted in his pending divorce indicates a willingness on his part to wrongly conceal his relationship with the district attorney. Hmm. That's a little slimy, but okay. As the case moves forward, reasonable members of the public could easily be left to wonder whether the financial exchanges have continued resulting in some form of benefit to the district attorney, or even whether the romantic relationship has resumed. Put differently, an outsider could reasonably think that the district attorney is um, not exercising her independent professional judgment, totally free of any compromising influences. As long as Wade remains on the case, this unnecessary perception will persist. The testimony introduced included that of the district attorney and Wade did not put these concerns to rest. During argument, the defendant's focus largely pivoted from the financial concerns to disproving the testimony of the district attorney, namely that her romantic relationship actually predated the November 2021 hiring of Wade. On that front, the, court's, the court makes a few observations. First, the court finds itself unable to place any stock on the testimony of Terrence Bradley. He has inconsistencies and in his demeanor and generally non-responsive answers left far too brittle a foundation upon which to build any conclusions. While prior inconsistent statements can be considered as substantive evidence under Georgia law, Bradley's impeachment by text message did not establish the basis for which he claimed such sweeping knowledge of Wade's personal affairs. So there's a footnote. For that reason, the court finds it unnecessary to reopen the evidence to consider the testimony of Cindy Yeager or Manny Aurora as proffered by the defendants Schaefer and Latham, respectively, on March 4th. In addition, while the testimony of Robin Yeardy raised doubts about the state's assertions, it ultimately lacked context and detail. Even after considering the proffered cell phone testimony from defendant Trump, along with the entirety of the other evidence, neither side was able to conclusively establish by preponderance of the evidence when the relationship evolved into a romantic one. However, notice it took 16 pages 16, almost, we're on page 17. However, an odor of mendacity remains. What is mendacity? Untruthfulness. I had to look it up myself. I couldn't remember it. I mean, obviously, we, we can kind of guess as to what it may mean, but...
mendacity, lies, untruthfulness. An odor of mendacity remains. It's so eloquent. I love this. The court is not under an obligation to ferret out every instance of potential dishonesty from each witness or defendant ever presented in open court. Such an explanation would mean an end to the efficient disposition of criminal and civil proceedings. Yet reasonable questions about whether the district attorney and her hand-selected lead, Seda, testified untruthfully about the timing of their relationship further underpin the finding of an appearance of impropriety and the need to make proportional efforts to cure it. Ultimately, the dismissal of the indictment is not the appropriate remedy to adequately dissipate a financial cloud of impropriety and potential untruthfulness found here. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Time will tell. Dismissal of an indictment is an extreme sanction, sanction used only sparingly as a remedy for unlawful government conduct. Quoting State v. Lample, that's from Olson. There has not been a showing that the defendant's due process rights have been violated in any way or that the issues involved prejudiced the defendants in any way, nor is disqualification of a constitutional officer necessary when a less drastic and sufficiently remedial option is available. The court therefore concludes that the prosecution of this case cannot proceed until the state selects one of two options. Pick and choose. One, the district attorney may choose to step aside along with her whole office and refer the prosecution to the prosecuting attorney's counsel for reassignment. Or two, alternatively, Seda Wade can withdraw, allowing the district attorney, the defendants, and the public to move forward without his presence or remunerations distracting from and potentially compromising the merits of this case. Interesting. Yep. Judge rules Fulton County. This is what Benny Johnson wrote. Judge rules Fulton County uh, DA Fannie Willis and entire staff must step aside or a special prosecutor, Nathan Wade, must withdraw from Trump's case. That's exactly what this paragraph says right here. Word for word. Word for word. So there you have it, folks. There's the smoking gun in the order. Forensic misconduct. The Georgia Supreme Court also recognized forensic misconduct or improper comment by the state as grounds for disqualification. One example of such forensic misconduct is expression by the prosecuting attorney of his personal belief of the defendant's guilt. That comes from Williams. I don't know why the font suddenly changed. The font literally just became gloriously clear out of nowhere. I don't know why. It's like, I see the light. I see the truth. I don't know. Whatever. Finding, uh, in one case, Williams, a finding pretrial public comment that a conviction would be the right result, quote unquote, constituted an impermissible but not disqualifying expression of the prosecutor's opinion concerning the merits of the case, overruled on other grounds and citing State v. Hallman. As guidance, Williams instruct us that the trial court should take into consideration whether such remarks were part of a calculated plan evincing a design to prejudice the defendant in the minds of the jurors and whether such remarks were inadvertent utterances. Williams also notes that while a prosecutor's comment may be considered improper, they must be egregiously so to justify disqualification. The court has not located nor has been provided with a single additional case exploring the relevant standard for forensic misconduct or an opinion that actually resulted in disqualification under Georgia law. Now, left unexplored, therefore, is how other examples of forensic misconduct can manifest, such as whether statements that stop short of commenting on the guilt of a defendant can be disqualifying, nor has it been decided if some showing of prejudice is required, and how a trial court should go about determining whether such prejudice exists, nor is it clear whether the analysis differs depending on the pretrial posture of the case. Unmoored from precedent, the court feels confined to the boundaries of Williams and restricts the application of the facts found here to its limited holding. By the way, somebody in the chat uh, just a few minutes ago asked um, if if they can appeal, or somebody somebody somewhere said, can the, can the defense appeal this? First of all, the defense would not be appealing this. Uh, I mean, they could... Actually, wait a second. I was going to say the prosecution appeal it. The prosecution, if they appeal it, they're going to lose 100%. That's my opinion. It's too simple. There's an appearance of impropriety, period, the end. Um, and I guess it wasn't uh, politically charged. Uh, it's it's the fact that there is a financial whatchamajigger here. Um, now, would the defense appeal it? 
I don't think there's enough, but they could. Should they, though? Will they, though? Probably will. Should they? Probably not. Will they win? Almost certainly no, in my opinion, based on what I'm reading and if these are the facts to go off of. The pro now let's talk about the prosecution. Uh, should the prosecution appeal? Uh, no, will the prosecution appeal? Maybe. I don't think they really care. All they, all they have to do is for Wade to step aside. That's an easy fix. Um, Wade steps aside. They're 100% they're moving forward. Um, should they appeal? I would say no. Will they appeal? Probably not. Those are my answers. Those, that's my opinion, since you've asked. Uh, the defendants have uh, exhaustively documented every public comment made by the district attorney concerning this case through their motions and supplemental filings. Many of these have already been addressed through a pretrial challenge made on similar grounds brought by defendants Trump and Latham. See order on motion to quash, preclude, and recuse such and such. This court incorporates and adopts the sound reasoning of Judge McBurney and finds that any comments made by the district attorney prior to July 31st, 2023 did not amount to disqualifying forensic misconduct. Public comments about the need for and importance of the investigation fall short, fall sh far short of the type of bias, explicit or implicit, that must be found. Similarly, more recent comments describing the charges in the indictment, the procedural posture of the case, the office's conviction rates, and personal behind-the-scenes anecdotes are not disqualifying. This indicates the district attorney's unorthodox decision to make on-the-record comments and authorize members of her staff to do likewise. Two authors intend on publishing a book about special grand juries investigating during the pendency of this case. Such decisions may have ancillary prejudicial effects, meaning parallel to, uh, yet to be realized, but the comments do not rise to the level of disqualification under Williams. The same cannot be easily said of the district attorney's prepared speech delivered before the congregation of a local Atlanta church earlier this year, two months ago on January 14th. In these public and televised comments, the district attorney complained that a Fulton County commissioner and so many others questioned her decision to hire Seda Wade. When referring to her detractors throughout the speech, she frequently used the plural they. The state argues the speech was not aimed at any of the defendants in this case. Maybe so, but maybe not. Therein lies the danger of public comment by a prosecuting attorney on a, on a pending action of a former president, for God's sake. You idiots. You monkeys. Shut your mouth sometimes. Like Not everything has to be political. That, there's the political shit coming out of, of this prosecutor, Fanny. Uh, by including reference to so many others on the heels of defendant Roman's motion, which investigated the entire controversy, uh, the district attorney left that question open for the public to consider. The court finds, after considering the statement as a whole, under all the circumstances surrounding its issuance, that this district attorney's speech did not include defendant Roman and his counsel within its ambit, whether intentional or not. There's a footnote. Worth noting is that there may be an issue of standing for the other five defendants' challenge of this speech, although counsel for defendant Trump expressed in open court the possibility that he would join the motion after conducting his own investigation. Each defendant only formally joined defendant Roman's motion, challenging the hiring of Seda Wade after the speech had been made. More at issue, instead of attributing the criticism to a criminal, criminal accused's general aversion to being convicted and facing a prison sentence, the district attorney ascribed the effort is motivated by playing the race card. What? She went on to frequently refer to Seda Wade as the black man? What the fuck? Why would you do this? As the black man, while her other unchallenged sedas were labeled one white woman, one white man. Why would you why would you bring race into this? You fucking asshole. Wow, that is a low blow. I'm sorry, I was not ready for that.
That is such a low blow to bring the race card into it. The effect of the speech was to cast racial aspersions at an indicted defendant's decision to file this pretrial motion. However, this speech, and I believe they're both African-American, right? Fannie Willis and Seda Wade, they're both African-American. Am I correct on this, folks? Please correct me if I'm wrong. Fannie said on the stand they broke up in August. I thought, I thought they said the, the relationship is stronger than ever. They're both African-American, right? D don't play the race card. Not cool. However, the speech did not specifically mention any defendant by name. Although not improvised, uh, improvised or inadvertent, it also did not address the merits of the indicted offenses in an effort to move the trial itself to the court of public opinion, nor did it disclose sensitive or confidential evidence yet to be revealed or admitted at trial. In addition, the case is too far removed from jury selection to establish a permanent taint of the jury pool. As best it can divide under the sole direction of Williams, the court cannot find that the speech crossed the line to the point where the defendants have been denied the opportunity for a fundamentally fair trial or that it requires the district attorney's disqualification. Yes, they're, they're both uh, African-American. Okay, that got it. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Chad to the rescue. You saved the DUI guy. But it was still legally improper, providing this type of public comment creates dangerous waters for the district attorney to wade further into. Okay, this is one of the most beautiful sentences I have read in a long time. Because we have Seda Wade as as the um <laughs> he's the guy, he's the protagonist, you know, or antagonist, whatever you want to call him. Providing, so for Fanny to provide this type of public comment creates dangerous waters for the district attorney to wade further into. I mean, this is 100% intentional. Judges love the sound of their own voices and they love poetry. There was one judge that actually wrote in like a poet, uh, like a poem. It was his decision. I remember reading it in law school. It was kind of like an example of what not to do as a judge or just funny. Oh my God. This is this is incredible to wade further into hashtag phrasing, bring back phrasing. This is great. This is so good. The time may well have arrived for an order preventing the state from mentioning the case in any. Oh, the time may well have arrived for an order preventing the state from mentioning the case in any public forum to prevent prejudicial pretrial publicity but that is not the motion presently before the court this is a hint that right there is a hint lawyers get to work get the fuck to work i'm sure they're already working on it i'm sure they're already writing it that is not the motion presently before the court says present it i want to see it and i will rule on it if you want me to the defendant's motion demanding disqualification and dismissal based on forensic misconduct are denied other grounds. This is the final piece, I believe, of this uh, order. The defendants invoke a range of other constitutional, statutory, and county provisions in support of disqualification, including the trustee clause, uh, various provisions of the Fulton County Code, including financial disclosure requirements and alleged payment and hiring violations pursuant to uh, the Georgia statute, such and such. As to the latter, the district attorney may appoint private attorneys to assist with criminal cases independent of any specific statutory authorization. The statute does not place limitations on the appointment of a SEDA to work on a specific case as opposed to county approval of a general employee. While SEDA Wade's contract did not limit his work to any particular case, the testimony established as such, as much, and the defendants have not produced any evidence demonstrating that his work ever expanded beyond his prosecution, this prosecution. Further, to the extent that defendants argue the circumstances of Wade's loyalty oath create independent grounds for disqualification, the court incorporates its previous order on the subject and denies the motions. See order on defendant's motion, da-da-da. 
As for the remaining provisions and arguments, the court has not been presented with any authority that such violations, even if proven, amount to an actual conflict of interest, nor that an appearance of impropriety can apply to any instance or in a, of inappropriate or wrongful behavior. In each case, applying the appearance standard, the impropriety was connected in some way to an allegation of potential and previously recognized actual conflict. Fascinating. Interesting. So the judge is just is just going full ham. I love it. I love it. In a separate motion adopting the arguments of her co-defendants, Defendant Latham presents an additional theory. She asserts the right to call district attorney as a witness at trial to examine her biases towards the defendants and demonstrate that she brought a politically motivated prosecution. Boom. I knew that was coming. I was like, come on. Somebody's got to do it. There it is. On page 22 of 23. We're almost done. Accepting the sole citation raised in support, Duncan, Allowing impeachment of the prosecutor for improper motives or bias requires ignorance of the opinions surrounding context. Actually, reading the case and the authority upon which it relies, and not simply quoting a, a head note, reveals that the Court of Appeals antiquated the Court of Appeals' use uh, antiquated use of the word prosecutor referred not to the legal officer handling the criminal case on behalf of the public, but rather the main witness for the state. Ah, sneaky, sneaky defense work. I like it. Very sneaky. Very sneaky. Defendant Latham asserts a claim accurately categorized as one of the selective prosecution as one of selective prosecution, and the United States Supreme Court has recognized that such claims are not a defense on the merits to any criminal charges themselves. Instead, a claim for selective prosecution must be brought in the form of a motion asking the trial court to exercise its judicial power on equally uh, uh, on equal protection grounds. Excuse me. Uh, lacking such a showing here or any foundation in law or the rules. Otherwise, that motion is denied. Denied. Where's that from? Is that Mortal Kombat or is that Unreal Tournament? Where are my nerds in the chat? Denied. Like you try, I think it's Unreal Tournament. Has anybody ever played Unreal Tournament in the chat? We have like 1,300 of you here. One of you must have. Do you remember that? It was like the announcer when you tried to like kill somebody and accidentally killed yourself in, in the game, like with a bazooka or something or a nuclear launch. And it would be like, denied. I remember that voice. I need to have that like as a button or something. I think it came from Unreal Tournament, but I can't remember. Yeah, Unreal. Okay. Porcelain Thunder, thank you for um, for being a, a nerd, a fellow nerd. Um, conclusion, whether this case ends in convictions, acquittals, or something in between, the result should be one that instills confidence in the process. A reasonable observer, unburdened by partisan blinders, should believe the law was impartially applied, that those accused of crime had a fair opportunity to present their defenses, and that any verdict was based on our criminal justice system's best efforts at ascertaining the truth. Bingo. Any distractions that detract from these goals, if remedial under the law, should be proportionally addressed. After consideration of the record established on these motions, the court finds the allegations and evidence legally insufficient to support a finding of an actual conflict of interest. However, the appearance of impropriety remains and must be handled as previously outlined before the prosecution can proceed. The defendant's motion are therefore granted in part and denied in part. So ordered this 15th day of May, 2024, uh, at 2 Brute, Judge Scott McAfee, um, Superior Court of Fulton County, Atlanta Judicial Circuit. The end. All right. There you have it. You asked for it. Ask and thou shalt receive sometimes. Today today is a slow day for some reason, so I have the time for this. And um, here we go. So I hope you all enjoyed that. I hope you all enjoyed the earlier with Megan and Vice's show when we talked about uh, the fifth hearing. We went over the whole thing. If you haven't seen it, absolutely go back and check it out. Um Tomorrow, I'm probably going to be doing the Amber Heard, Surviving Amber Heard documentary. If you guys remember this puppy right here, these guys are cool. They made a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic uh, um, documentary, Surviving Amber Heard. We're going to watch chapter one uh, tomorrow. 
and then chapter two on Sunday, more than likely. And then on Monday, I'm going to have, what's his name? The Random Patriot. So this is Saturday and Sunday. Then on Monday, we're going to have the Random Patriot. Then on Tuesday, I'll talk about how to build a successful business or my first UFC fight with Chandler. She might join me. Hopefully, she's going to be feeling better by then. Um, she said she is going to be joining me, and she is feeling better. So two good bits of news for you all. And then last but not least, on Tuesday... Oh, no, wait a second. Sorry, I said Tuesday. Tuesday or Wednesday. And then Wednesday, we're going to Nolens. We're going to be in Nolens, New Orleans. So uh, that's going to be good. We're going to have some fun. Uh, lots of lots of boobies, lots of beads, lots of um, crawfish and craw daddies and DUI daddies walking around and uh, strip clubs. And, uh, oops, I shouldn't have said that. Um, and, uh, the shrimps and all the other seafood and, and lobster that one man can consume. It's the land. It's the land of the free home of the brave. If that's the United States, then, uh, New Orleans is the land of the food home of the booze land of the food home of the booze. That is a fact folks. That is a fact. So that's going to be on, on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We're going to be there through Sunday. And then I will come back and continue. I mean, I might stream th from there. I don't know yet. It's going to be pretty busy. So don't. if you don't hear from me, if you don't hear from me, don't, um, you know, don't panic. You'll be like, where's DY guy? Uh, DY guy's having a good time. DY guy is having a good time. DY guy is doing some good things. DY guy is learning, getting some CLE credits. Chandler is going to be coming with. Uh, I don't know if she's going to be joining for portions of the CLE portion of it, which is the continued legal education. Obviously, I wouldn't want to force it upon her. If she chooses to, you know, you can learn a few things. She is going to be a future lawyer. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be fun. That's going to be great. Um, before I sign off, I just wanna I wanna speed chat up. I'm gonna turn off slow mode so you guys can talk away. All right, slow mode should be gone. What do you all want me to cover next? I'm curious. What do you all want to see? I know that there the random patriot has sent me that thing about the woman who got her ribs broken, Carly. So she's gonna be on Monday. Then somebody wrote to me about Matthew Reardon, Matthew Reardon, who is uh, an auditor, I guess. I don't know what happened to him. I have not had a chance to review it. I've been busy with other stuff. But um, I, I did not miss any Super Chats. I caught up on all the Super Chats World Explorer. Thank you very much. Uh, the 25 foot law in Indiana. What is that? Oh, I just remembered. Um, some of you sent me to look into the eminent domain case with the pigeons. I'm looking into that. I reached out to them. I reached out to them. I reached out to them. Uh, Bruce Matskin, you reached out to me. We talked. I I don't think it's going to be a good case to cover. There's not enough interest in it. I'm sorry. Um, like I said, if you want me to, to be one of the attorneys on the case and to help represent you, I'm fine with that. You want to pay me by the hour, I'm fine with that. I just, I don't think it's going to be a good, uh, it's, it's not going to be a good case for, 
Um, Mo in the deep end. Okay, I'm going to add that to my list. She seems cool. Uh, not like you're not, Bruce. I'm just saying your your story is not, uh, it's not dog shit by any stretch of the imagination. Don't don't get the wrong idea. Um, but uh, it's just not, I don't think we have an audience for it. If, if I had an audience of nothing but lawyers, maybe. Lawyers and judges. But um, I, I don't think that, uh, so I should have Mo on the deep end. Yeah, pigeons. There's like a pigeon. What is it called? Pigeon. Pigeon something. Uh, they emailed me, I think, this morning. Donde esta? There it is. No, they emailed me last night. It's in Ohio. Oh man, Bruce, people are hating on you in chat. I don't know why. Why are people, wait, hold on. Why is chat turn against Bruce? What has happened? What did I miss while I was reading the, the, the opinion? What's going on? Why is Bruce receiving so much hate chat? What's going on? Has he been in the chat? What did I miss? Bruce has been attacking me? Oh, come on, bro. You don't do that. You don't do that. At least be nice. If you, if, if, if you, pro look, here's what happened. I'll, I'll tell the chat just because you've asked. I'm not throwing you under the bus. This is all fact. You reached out to me. You said, I have a story. Then you emailed my entire staff. And I said, please don't email my staff. Just email me. They're not, they don't do this YouTube channel. It's just me. I said, okay, all right. I'm sorry. Here, you were good about it. You were cool about it. There were no problems. There were no issues. Then I was like, look, let's have you on the channel. I did offer that. That was a fact. I offered, I said, come on my channel this week, like on a Thursday, like yesterday or a Wednesday, two days ago. And then somewhere last weekend, I changed my mind. And I said, you know what? I don't want to feature your story. I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it's going to be, um, uh, fruitful for my audience. Okay. I realized after reading about it a little bit more, it's a good story, but they're not going to enjoy it. Okay. It's too complicated. It's too convoluted. You want me to represent you? That's great. But now you come into my chat and you attack me like, fuck you, Larry type deal. What is wrong with you, man? That is so uncool. Don't, don't like, don't silence him or anything. Please let him speak. Let him, let him dig his, his grave if he wants to. Um, I believe the chat. He, you're saying, no, I wasn't. I believe the chat. You have at least 15 people that I so far have read that are saying that you have been, and I can go and go back and read it. I am not going to do that because I don't care. I already said, I'm not covering your story. And now you've given me an even greater motivation to not do so. You you dug your own grave, bro. Like even further. Um, he was attacking me after I said I supported Trump. Okay, that's fair enough. If if he just doesn't like me for my political views, um, Bruce is a lawyer. Yes, he is. If he was just uh, attacking me for that, then that's fine. But like like I said, I'm not. I wasn't gonna cover his story anyway. It's not interesting for you all. I don't think you're gonna have a good time with it. That's all. Uh, he wants a public platform because I have a reach. I get it. Uh, but. I'm, I don't think it's going to be a good conducive use of your time. My viewers are going to go, what is this? This is not interesting. I'm not interested in this. Bruce is interested in this because he's got a stake in the game. But that's, you know, reach out to your local newspaper. Reach out to reporters. Reach out to the radio. Reach out to television. Reach out to the newspapers. I'm sure you have like 20 newspapers up there in, was it, Connecticut? Um, reach out to them. Don't reach out to me and then bitch about me not hosting you on my own fucking channel. Who does that? Who does that? That's the dumbest thing ever, bro. I'm sorry. That is stupid, regardless of whether it was politically charged or not. Uh, Carolina, you know Larry represents me. Yeah, I represent Hendry, and he's in the chat right now. Um, there it is. There's the proof that uh, you know there's no attorney-client confidentiality breach because he just called it out. You know, Larry represents me. If they want the proof, screenshot this. There you go. Um, 
I have to brag, says Pepper and C. My niece is in a second year of law school student and won her first and only real case yesterday. Fun fact, I won my first case when I was a second year law student too. So good for your niece. Good for her. Mine was a simple one. Uh, my car was towed after an accident that uh, I'm, I'm pretty much, I caused. It was my fault. I was like 23, 24. And uh, my car was towed. But the, the dumbass, when he hooked my car, he didn't hook it in the proper place. He hooked it on my axle. The idiot hooked my my axle and he bent my wheels. My, my wheel axle, instead of being like this, it was like this. Because he, when he was dragging the car on top, he hooked the, the fucking idiot. And I sued his ass for $178 plus the repair cost, which was like a $600 bill, $500, $600 bill. He was a complete and utter monkey. And uh, I sued him. And I came to small claims court. It was in, uh, I think it was Orange County or Harrison County, Indiana. The, the record is still there. You can look it up. I'm sure it's still around. And I won. The judge listened to me and listened to him. And he took my side and it was over. And then uh, the guy ended up paying me like $700 because there was some interest that accrued about uh, 20 months. No, it wasn't that long. No, it was, like, it was like eight months or nine months later. Yeah, he waited a long time to pay me, but eventually the check came in the mail. The check came in the mail. So uh, Lafayette County Audit, Matthew Reardon, Mo in the deep end, we're going to have her. I want to talk about Bud Love, which is the case in uh, Jeremy's case uh, that the judge keeps keeps referencing. Um, so, yeah, should be a good time. It is a good time, yes. Let's see, March 20th. Our, yeah, that's when we're leaving, March 20th. Mm. Yeah, no. Okay. All right, folks. Uh, yeah, 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 that, that's all, folks. Um, what else should I cover? Bud Love says MG Law doesn't help him either. So I'll cover Bud Love. I'll have Mo and at some point Matthew Reardon. That's on my to-do list. So tell, tip him off if you know him. Um, if you know him. And by the way, before I go, I always like to end on a good note, on a fun note. And this happened in... This right here happened in 2018. This happened in 2018. I want to show you guys because I found this absolutely hilarious at the time. And it's even funnier now that I'm, you know, moderately known. I wouldn't call myself famous, but moderately known. What is the max legal interest for money owed in small claims in Kentucky? Really, Mr. Tex, legal advice? Come on, bro. You've been around for like five, six years. You're going to do this to me right now, right here, live on stream? You know the answer to this. It's 5,000. Uh, or actually, no, 2,500 in small claims, 5,000 in district court. And then if it's over 5,000, you go to circuit. Come on, bro. Killing me here. Just killing me. So somebody, I have to preface this before I show it on screen because you're you're about to lose it. Um, on screen, you're about to see, I got this, uh, no, I, I didn't receive this text. Somebody shared it with me because it was circulated in 2018. So I was, I was a lawyer for five years. I was a lawyer for five years. And this is a photo that I took in law school, okay? This was, I was in law school. This was 2011. Um, and what you're about to see is very embarrassing and it's a photo of me. And I, I flipped the script because they thought that they were gonna like mock me and I'm gonna go crying in the corner or whatever. Look, everybody's got a past. Everybody's got a history. 
everybody's got, you know, everybody does things they may not be proud of, or they might be stupid or silly or whatever. This is not, a, you'll, you'll see in a second. You'll see what I mean. Okay. Check this out. This was me, I think either 2010 or 2011, back when I was, I was actually ripped. I was actually fucking ripped. If you could see my back in 2011, 2010, I was rock climbing like a mofo. By 2012, I was a complete monster. Monster. I was completely ripped. And you can't see it. I'm in a suit, but here it is. And I posted it on Facebook because I thought, you know, you're going to call me out like this. I will not hesitate. Back then, I, I don't, I think it was like the eight, it wasn't before the HTC phones. This was like a Palm Pilot. There's like a Palm Pilot that I'm holding. So you know how old this fucking photo is. I'm wearing the douchiest shades. In uh, the second suit that I ever bought in my lifetime as a as a human being, this was the second suit I ever bought. I'm wearing uh, a a uh, uh, a bracelet, like the, the douchiest bracelet. I have I have my phone. I have douche shades on. I'm wearing a suit. You can see the urinal. There's a urinal right in the back. It's, I, I took a, a a bathroom selfie with a fucking urinal. And somebody was like, and somebody added the caption, just remember, like even Larry passed the bar, right? Yes, I'm still alive, Lindsay. I'm still, or Linz. Uh, <laughs> I look like a used car sales. Exactly, right? Exactly. I was young. I was uh, 22 in this photo, 22, 22 or 23, no older than 23. And the caption the caption was, so I got this photo sent to me by a random stranger via text message. They appear to be one of my haters based on the accompanying message, which is not included. They just turned me into a meme. I am now officially a meme, y'all. Ode to the douchey bathroom pic. That's what I wrote. And there's like this... Um, I don't know, false information, whatever. I don't care. You have enemies, good. That means you've stood up for something, uh, stood up for something sometime in your life. So I love that. I love that. But um, I don't think it was Winston Churchill who said that, but Larry, you look like a hitman for the library. <laughs> I thought I thought it was uh it was funny. I thought it was funny that they were like so mad at me. So mad that they, 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 this photo that I posted on Facebook from 2010 resurfaces in like 2018. And I'm just like, really? You And I, I realized I'm a meme, y'all. Now, this was way before the Johnny Depp trial. This was four years before the Johnny Depp trial when I, I, I received this meme. So this was the original meme. Uh, <laughs> I guess I was in the Matrix flux. I don't know. Um, so yeah, even Hendry's getting a kick out of it. This is your lawyer, bro. This is your fucking lawyer. Oh, oh my God. I forgot to mention why I'm wearing this shirt. Do you see, you, you don't see the, the shirt that I'm wearing right now is a Hawaiian shirt. This is a Hawaiian shirt. And I forgot to, to, to tell Megan the reason I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt is because Judge the Thomas is, is about to go on permanent vacation after, after that hearing, you know? I completely forgot. So tell Megan I forgot to say that if you run into her in her chat later on today or whatever. Uh, Judge DeThomas is about to go on permanent vacation. So in honor of his permanent vacation. Uh, oh, it's also, oh, this is the Bahamas shirt. Oh, shit, I forgot. I got this at the Bahamas because um, it says Bahamas on it. And that leads me to the final piece. That leads me to my final piece, and that is uh, we – are going to the Bahamas on uh, sometime in May, at the end of May. Uh, my case manager, uh, her plus one, all of my associates, their plus ones, myself, my girlfriend, and we're going to have a videographer, a videographer with us as well. And I'm very excited. In two months' time, we're going to be on a beach. My entire staff, my entire employees, um, all of them, save for one who just joined us literally Tuesday. So unfortunately, he doesn't get to go uh, pursuant to office policy. But um, it is what it is. 
It is what it is. Uh, we're going to be in Nassau. We're going to be in Nassau, all expenses paid trip by me. You know, the firm is me. So by the firm, me. And um, I'm very excited for them. I'm very excited, which reminds me, I actually need to buy. I need to buy um, the ticket for. Well, actually, I'm probably going to tell him to buy it himself. And then I'll reimburse him. He's the only one that doesn't have a plane ticket yet. He just got his passport, and um, that's awesome. Now we're just waiting on my girlfriend's passport, and I think, I think my case manager's plus one's passport. And we're now we we have six. Uh, no, we have five out of seven passports ready. We just need two more. God damn it, Tex. <laughs> The 2500 limit does not include interest and court costs. For instance, someone owed me $500 for three years to another. How much interest can the plaintiff claim on the $500 owed over three years in small claims? Man, seriously, you can't claim interest pre-judgment. You can ask for it, but if it's 500, 500 is 500 is 500 is 500. And then you just ask for pre-judgment interest and, and post-judgment interest if after they win, after you win, okay? Call me, okay? Don't don't just tell Stephanie I waived your your consultation fee, your the two hundred dollar consultation fee, okay? Don't 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 do this in chat, <laughs> okay? All right, you all. Wow, five hours. We have been live for exactly five hours, and it felt like five minutes. I mean, I guess that's what happens when you ha are having fun. I am starving. Uh, Chandler made ramen, so I'm gonna go eat. I love you all. Thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart. Um, and, um, I really appreciate you. I love you. Thank you all so much. <coughs> Excuse me. I will see you all tomorrow. Unless something happens, I will see you all tomorrow doing the Amber Heard stuff, uh, surviving Amber Heard. And that's going to be really, really fun. More stuff next week. Random Patriot joins me on Monday. And then Tuesday, we're going to continue our good and fun sagas. So thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I hope you learned something. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. It's it's already, I've been live literally from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's fantastic. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you all learned something. And I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye, everybody. Hashtag buckle up because hashtag it is the law. And the law is coming for you, baby. Justice is coming.